that these are chewable. I hope these are chewable. Good morning, Chatty. Nope, nope, nope. There you go. Good morning, Chatty. Yes, I still don't hear myself. That's a you problem. It's not me, it's you. Oh. How about now? I don't know. Do you hear me? Uh, yeah, I hear you. Hang on, let me. Maybe it's just Kenny turn it way down. There we go. Hello, everybody. Oh, those are disgusting. Eh. We're not late today. What's everybody talking about? Maybe you're talking about someone else being late. I think Ramsey got the belt. He did. Ramsey and Katrina. A little controversy, apparently. Oh. What up, Steven? What up, Michigan? What up, Russell? What's going on? What's happening, Wheezy? Don't take out request if you have one. Oh. oh, here we go. What up, Wheezy? What up, gang? Wheezy always makes you, makes me think of the Jeffersons. Makes me think of Lil Wayne. Yeah. Wheezy F baby and the F is her phenomenal. Yeah. What up, Benny? Benny Boombox? Benny Boombox? What's up, Snoop? Sherman Hensley Snoop -snoop. was uh was a answer in trivia okay. last night. Sherman his Hemsley, who was George Jefferson. We've been moving on up. I got about one minute. It's a bunch of Bullshit is what this is. Oh. Yeah, we're not going to... Boy, Charlie, we got to talk, bro. About... Yeah, I'm joking. Nice. What up, Johnny? Um... Hmm. Our show's supposed to start at 10, and we still have... <laughs> this is one of those things that, like, old radio guys care about. I don't. Um, And we're not going to start until almost 10.01. Wow. I'm just here for the ride. 40 oh. seconds, yeah. Just to pass Like, I get, bar. if you, it, legitimate, if you start, if you're starting at like, if we were regularly starting at 10.01, it'd be kind of a problem. Um, Because yeah, you don't want to lose the top of the hour, people. Yeah, right. Correct. Hmm. It'll be fine. We got 20 seconds. What's my karaoke song? Oh, that's a great question. I can tell you my rock band. No, we're opening is. the, we're opening the show with this. Okay. There's a different, my karaoke and my rock band are different. I don't hear that. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Hello. Top of the morning to you. So we're already going to get sidetracked off the rip from the jump. So what I would like to actually talk about, I would like to to talk about the Sacramento Kings, how people are feeling two days after beating Golden State in the number 9-10 play-in matchup. We're still a day out from the Kings matchup with the Pelicans. Our guys, uh, uh, Carlin and Joe, mm -hmm. who are who are on before us here on ESPN thirteen twenty, very upset by the scheduling, the fact that there's no game tonight. Whatever, I don't. I I think it's fine because the teams that play on Tuesday mm -hmm. get one less day. The teams that play on Wednesday get one more day off, yep. or the teams that play Tuesday get one less day off. So now the teams that played Tuesday. Get the extra day off here. Yeah, like it's just it's so very no straightforward. What, yeah, no matter what, there's there's two days off. Yeah, it's just whether you got them bookended together or you had them separated. Right. And and, and, and I was telling you, <laughs> I, don't, it, I I just don't I don't care that much that that there's no basketball today. Yeah, there and there was a reason why it the schedule broke down this way. Mm -hmm. I believe it was supposed to be the nine ten games were supposed to be on Tuesday, and 
then the the eight nine games were I mean seven, the eight. seven eight games were supposed to be on Wednesday, right? But for some reason, like Philly, well, maybe that doesn't make sense. Philly couldn't play on Tuesday because Philly had already had a, a hockey game scheduled for their arena, and there was no way to get around it, and they became the home team. Because the Sixers were not anticipating playing in the play-in tournament. <laughs> of course they weren't. No, no. They thought no. they would be a two-seed. Yeah. Or maybe a one. Maybe a one. Maybe yeah. a one. Yeah. And so they messed everything up uh, because of that, and, and it just like changed the way I, I think the Kings would have loved an extra day beforehand, but then again, you get a travel day. Like the yeah, Kings are practicing they didn't, they didn't today. Need one. Yeah, the Kings <laughs> are practicing today at ten thirty. Like, yeah, and then they're flying out. As you say, they're going to fly today. Yeah. Yeah. They, well, they have to fly today because the game's tomorrow. You're not allowed by NBA rules to fly on game day. No, I know, but I thought they might have gone <clears throat> yesterday. yesterday. Oh no, no, they're in Sacramento still. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, sleep in your own bed. Yeah. Don't don't get in trouble in New Orleans. We'll talk about the play-in tournament, the Bulls and Hawks, and the 76ers and Heat. The Bulls knocked out the Hawks last night, 131-116 in the 9-10 game. Philadelphia just snuck by the Heat. Boy, that was a that was a very, very tight game. I don't know if it was a good game, but it was definitely close. 105-104 was the final there. We'll dive into those uh, a little bit later, but I want to know how, how Kings fans are feeling. Day after, because I think there's two types of fans. I think there's fan that when their team wins a big playoff game, I'm just going to, for the sake of, for the sake of this conversation, I'm going to call it a playoff game, wins a big playoff game. And there's fan that just rides the lightning and they're okay. like, we're never going to lose again. I'm going we to, we're it. never going to die. We made it mom. I, I've, I'm going to feel this way forever. And then there's fan. This is where I land where team wins big playoff game. And there's the elation of like, yes, hell yes. Big time win. I'm going to watch highlights that night. I'm fired up. And then you wake up the next day and you're like, God, there's another one. Oh no. Like, uh, and the stress just, it goes from elate. I have two, I have two modes as a sports fan, elated and stressed to the point that it's like, I need to see a doctor. Okay. Those are my two modes. Okay. So your two modes are that. So how are you feeling after watching the Warriors? Lose. Nah, nah, just, nah, indifference. Okay. Th okay, but that's a separate. But that's a separate thing. I didn't have any expectations for the Warriors. Okay, I had no. no the, last year was it. Last oh, year, I totally was, agree. Last year was hey, they won a title in twenty two, mm -hmm. and maybe they put it together. It was very clear sometime in Game Four of that Lakers series. It's like oh, they just don't have it. Oh, this is just done now. Mm -hmm. So they lose to like, the Lakers in six. That sucked. That was not a fun time. So they lose to the Lakers in six, and then going into this year, they ostensibly ran it back i'm sorry chris paul was not moving the needle for me so no. they effectively ran it back and you're going okay this is just this is what it is yeah they're just they're just not so i don't care I, i'm i'm past that I'll, I'll worry about them later yeah yeah but with with the kings i think you would you would be totally fair to be like dude knocked off golden state i don't even care about the pelicans right now i'm fine i will worry about that at tip off but I also think that given the Kings record against the Pelicans this year and how badly they've struggled against New Orleans this year and how important it is just big pictures that the Kings make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I also think you would be perfectly in, in your, your right as a Kings fan to go like, all right, that was fun. But a, the, there's, there's a bigger hill to climb here. Yeah. I'm not sure how, to, how people should walk into this game on Friday. Like I, Again, I've said this a multitude of times. I have no idea whether they're going to win or lose. I think, you know, on paper, a team that you're 0 5 against in one season that hasn't just beat you, but they've like drubbed you most of the time. Mm -hmm. They lose a couple of players, and okay, maybe, maybe they'll be fine. We, we have no idea what the Pelicans are going to look like tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they, it doesn't seem to have mattered that like they played a game without Zion and beat the Kings by 33. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I look at it, I, this is almost like I don't like using this term because, you know, it's almost like found money, right? Like an extra game is is like, OK, you didn't really expect you had no expectations. I don't want to say you didn't expect, but you shouldn't have had expectations of who the Kings were going to be in the postseason because they haven't been able to give you anything to, to build off something. Right. Do mm -hmm. I think that they're one of the top eight teams in the Western Conference? I absolutely do. 
Do I think they're a better team than the Lakers? I absolutely think mm-hmm. they're a better team than the Lakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, do I think they're they're better than the Warriors? They're better than the Lakers. Mm-hmm. Uh, they might even be better than the Suns. But at the end of the day, um, maybe it's a coin flip. They might even be better than Dallas. I mean, Dallas is playing well right now, but they might be. And, sure. But the fact is that they didn't prove that they could be that consistent team that mm-hmm. showed you that this is their path forward. Mm-hmm. And so I have no idea what to expect on Friday. And I also, I wouldn't be totally surprised if on Sunday afternoon we're watching Kings and Oklahoma City Thunder in the first round of the playoffs. And everybody's like, I can't believe they made it. This is so wild and crazy. And what is mm-hmm. happening? Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm kind of here for it. I'm kind of here for like the, I don't, it's after covering so many years of it's over in like on January, like 20th, mm-hmm. like, and not even worrying about what's going to happen. It, the, the last 30 games is how many games can you lose so you can get yeah. a better draft position to be in this position where all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is weird. Like this team could actually make some noise. And, mm-hmm. and if they get into a first round series with OKC, maybe Malik Monk makes it back for game three or four. Mm-hmm. Maybe they got a shot. I mean, this is a team sure. that they beat two, uh, sure. the first two games of the season, barely lost the third one. Mm-hmm. Like this is a game they match up against. Mm-hmm. So like, who knows? And that's where I think Kings fans should kind of just like have a, an open mind about what can be and, and don't stress about it. If they lose, this is kind of what you expected two weeks ago yeah. or a week ago. Yeah. So 916-909-1320, 916-909-1320. That is the Farmer's Dog Talk line. A healthy life starts with healthy food. Hit us up. Phone line's open. I have them unblocked right now. I learned how to do the unblocking the phones on the board. Oh. So I don't have to run into the other studio to do it now. So the phone lines are open if you want to tap in. Uh, 916-909-1320. Again, the way the phones work on this show is you call and it rings until I answer it. I can't put you on hold. So if it's just ringing and ringing, hang in there and we'll get to you. Uh, we're giving away 500 bucks again today. Ooh. We'll announce a winner from yesterday's Nothing But Net $500 giveaway. We got that coming up. We got Greg Doyle being weird. weird. <laughs> we'll, we'll dive into that. We got NBA play-in stuff to get to. Uh, we've got so much coming up in today's show. But but as far as, as the Kings go coming up, tomorrow in this game against new orleans i think there's going to be two different levels of happiness because i think the happiness of beating the warriors was not this like oh i think the, i think there some people went hey this is just a dragon that just cannot be slayed yep and there's that sting of keegan murray even said after after the game like that sting of game seven is never going to go away i guess it's going to be there but it's like dude for fans you finally got to like double birds, their fans, as they're the ones streaming to the exits down 20 in the That's board. right. And they've been in your building and they've been loud and they've been obnoxious for a decade now. And you got to now, you, now you were on top. The mm-hmm. rabbits got the gun kind of thing, right? And I think that's where a lot of the, the joy came from. And, and of course, winning and moving on for sure. But, but I think that that fan, like, like, oh, yeah. Whereas if they go beat New Orleans, that's what I think you'll see what you were just talking about. That's where I think a, a lot of people, and again, everybody's different. I, I, fans aren't a monolith, but I think that's where you'll see people like, oh, we just beat this team we couldn't beat all year. Mm-hmm. This isn't the team we couldn't beat last year. This is a team we couldn't beat at all this year. We just beat them, and now we're in the playoffs. Now things can get real. Yeah. And that's where, so I'm, I'm man, I need to win on Friday. Kyle, I think there's a, there was a certain amount of joy for Kings fans, like knowing that it was you who put the final nail in the coffin. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. Of a great, exactly. Of a great dynasty. Exactly. It was like, hey, look, we did that. That's over now. Yeah. And, right. and realistically, the Kings, like they did it last year. The seven game series wiped out the the Warriors. Stop. Stop. I, I'm just saying. Stop. Uh, Do not take away. No, because you're trying to take away from something that's this year. Well, yeah. Okay. The Lakers were just better than Golden State last year. Golden State didn't have any answers for Anthony Davis or LeBron James, and then D'Angelo Russell got hot, and then yeah. Lonnie Walker had a huge fourth quarter in one of the games. Yeah, like that. This this was it. Well, yeah, but I, what I'm saying is that the that series was brutal and wiped out the Warriors. I sure. Don't, I don't know that the Warriors had the the legs left after a seven game series that was brutal. Sure, where, where you had guys getting suspended and and like like near fights and sure, yeah. So no, I, I mean like this, this is good. I. But I also would like to see them figure out how to beat the Pelicans because I don't think the Pelicans 
are just way better than them. It's just a weird matchup. And for some reason, they haven't been able to... like. Yeah, they're in the through. same tier as the Pelicans, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it, 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 it reminds me a little bit of the like 49ers and Rams thing, where even in 2020, when the Rams were significantly better than the 49ers, and the 49ers went and beat them twice. It just, it's a, like, there's just something there. But, um, I don't think it's impossible. I don't, I don't look at the Pelicans and go, in the same way I look at Denver. Mm-hmm. I look at Denver and go, yeah, the Kings went three and one against them this year, but I just don't see it in the, in the postseason. I just don't. Over seven games, like, oof. But, I don't see that with New Orleans. And to the point you made earlier, I don't see it with Phoenix. I don't see it with Minnesota. I don't see it with OKC. So, if they get there, it's a big deal. Yeah, for sure. So we'll talk plenty about the Kings Pelicans game tomorrow. Let's take a look at the other play in game. So let's take a look at the East because uh, injuries are continuing to kind of define the play. And we'll talk about that next on ESPN 1320 Sacramento's sports leader. We're the insiders hanging out with you till noon. Oh, yeah. Cool, man. Congrats. <sighs> I thought we were going to talk about our songs. We got sidetracked from our sidetrack. Is this true? <laughs> Wait, John, he is? <laughs> I'm not going to do that again today. It's just, I wanted to do one. Um, we got sidetracked from our sidetrack. We did. <laughs> what? Our, t- our tangent didn't happen. What? I thought our tangent was going to happen, and then it didn't happen, and now I don't know where to go. Yeah. I don't know. Are we get what is, uh, Kyle, what is your, um, your karaoke song? Uh, my karaoke song is uh, mm, that's tough. Um, forgot about Dre by Eminem and Dr. Dre is the one that like once I get a couple of drinks in me, I'm like, let's go, boys. Oh yeah. Um, do you need a like a duet partner for that? No, I do both parts. <laughs> Islands in the stream. That is what we are. No one in. Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? We be wrong. It's all, dude. It's my show, baby. <laughs> when I'm up there in karaoke, it was so funny. We went to we went to when I lived down in Arizona. Is my my buddy's wife's coworker's birthday. Okay. And I just I third wheeled it with my buddy and his wife buddy's a lot. Wife's in co-workers per- yes. Oh wow, that's so that's, we went out, that's running deep there. Yeah, so we went out. It was just like a hey, everybody's going out. Do you want to go? Do you want to go? Kind of thing. He's like, yeah, I'm in there. So we get there and we pull up, and I see this place has karaoke. I was like, I'm putting my name in. Let's go. I love I, I love karaoke by the way. Yeah, karaoke is one of my favorite things. I'm not good at it. Don't get it twisted. Bad bad singer. Can't sing. But have oh, a great really? time with it. Have a great time with it. Okay. Um. So, uh, I go and I put my name in. And I was like the second or third name down. And so I get called up like 10 minutes after we get there. And one of her friends looks down and she goes, how many drinks are you? Did you, how many drinks have you had? Like none. I'm, I'm here for the show, man. Like, I, <laughs> it's a dry I country. I don't need a, I don't need a oh, no. drink to do. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I forgot about Dre by, by Dr. Dre and Eminem is my. Okay. My go-to for sure. It's not a very good karaoke song. I need to reach deeper into the karaoke bag. Like a Virgin by Madonna is another good one. Oh, okay. What's yours? Um, well, I was going to say rock band. Like uh, we used to rock band hard. Okay. Um, that's not karaoke. Well, yeah, but I, it can be. I mean, it's not Guitar Hero. I mean, rock band, you have vocals. Uh, if I'm rock banding, it's... Uh, Man in the Box by Alice in Chains. If it's karaoke, I usually, I, I, like, I'll do Neil Diamond just because, uh, just 
to be ridiculous. Of course. But then I like to I like to hit Bohemian Rhapsody. Mmm, great karaoke song. Yeah. Um Friends in Low Places by See, Garth Brooks. Yeah, I can't do it. And um depending <laughs> depending on what part of the country I'm in. Um mm. uh, you have regional never even songs? called me by my name by David Allen Coe. Oh. Here we go. The Insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen, brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. Someday we'll get it right, James. Someday we'll have a perfect week. Someday we'll have a week where I turn all the right buttons on and I make sure our voices are going to the right place and I make sure that the sound is going to the right place. I always feel this way about Ramsey in the chat. In the chat, too. Like, Why is that? Ramsey last week had, uh, four, I, I think it was four straight. And then Katrina stole the belt on the, the final day of the week on mm. Friday. She destroyed his perfect week. It was spectacular. That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, if you want to participate in the chatty house, youtube.com slash ESPN 1320, twitch.tv slash ESPN 1320. If you want to hop in there and while we're doing housekeeping, let me do, let me do one more thing. I want to remind you that Delo and KC are going to be out at Sky River Casino for a live show on Friday. I'm telling you that a, a the Kings are playing Friday and at Sky River Casino at 32 Brew Street, there's I don't know how many TVs. I don't want to say a number because I don't want to. There are a lot Eight of TVs, million TVs. It is really hard to find a seat in that place where you don't have a great look at a TV. OK, so head down there, catch the live show and then stick around for for the game. Yeah, that way you don't have to go all over the place. You can just sit there. You can enjoy D'Lo and Casey, and then I promise Thirty Two Brewery Street is going to have the game on, so you can hang out there. Uh, I'm going to be out there. D'Lo and Casey, of course, doing their show, will be out there. Um, and if you've not made it out to a live show before, come on out, come hang out, come say what's up. That's what it's there for. It's a lot of fun. If you want to pull up, don't don't be like, oh hey, I don't want to, I don't want to go say hi. Like I'm kind of scared. No, dude, it's a family. We're vibing. Drinks are flowing. Food's going. Talking, talking, ton of Kings basketball. There's not going to be a better. But let me tell you this: there's not going to be a better place to get ready. Maybe you don't want to stick around to watch the game there, but there's not going to be a better place to get ready for the game than noon to four down at Sky River. Mm. So come on, come down and hang out with us. Are you going? I don't think I'm I, d- I don't want to put you on the spot. I know because if you guys are, don't know, James lives in the cuts, even further from Elk Grove. Yeah, it, it's not that. <laughs> It's the um, it's the fact that I've got to like I've got to cover the game like I oh I've shoot do, that's right duh there's a game never yeah, mind I have to never mind. scratch everything like, do six quick thoughts I've got right to, you know right. live tweet and right be a fool sure and, like, no there's there's I, I d- spaced on the fact that <laughs> I was telling everybody issue. there's basketball and you yeah. have that yeah. um well I will be out there James has work I don't. I am not flying to New Orleans. Um, it's just like too last minute. Uh, but I, I'm hoping that if if there is more games, that maybe I will mm. make my way to Oklahoma City at some point. Mm. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, giving away 500 bucks, the nothing but net $500 giveaway also coming up a little bit later on. We will also announce yesterday's winner. You're going to want to head to ESPN1320.com for that. We'll give you a keyword. We'll give you two opportunities to win today. We will give you a keyword and then D'Lo and KC will also give you a keyword. You can enter two times. Give yourself two bites at the Apple to win 500 bucks. We'll be doing that all week, this week, and all week, next week. Okay. Uh, play in tournament. I need to postpone my computer restarting. Uh, play in tournament. I had that same issue. Uh, Philly beat the Heat last night. You know what? Let's talk Bulls-Hawks first. 131-116. Okay. The final score there. Kobe White, phenomenal. Career high, 42 points. Mm. He beat his career high that he put up against the Kings. <laughs> Congrats. Is that what you're saying? The Hawks stink, dude. The, as fun as the play-in tournament is, and as much as I have enjoyed it, and as much as I, I like the fact that yeah, there's more basketball to talk about, you get the intrigue of, oh, man, you want to be the seven so you can face this team. Because it was funny. In the West, everybody wanted to be the eight because you could avoid the Nuggets at the number two. Whereas in the East... Everybody was gunning for the number seven because nobody wanted the eight because the Celtics are number one. Mm, yes. And so there's that intrigue and there's... But then you watch the Hawks last night and it's like, dude, this team had no business playing an 83rd game. They are so bad. They are not good. 
I, I'm just looking. I, I mean, they were down 40 to 22 after the first quarter. Then they rallied and put up a 45 because, point re, second be, quarter. Because Alex Caruso got hurt. Oh, yeah. Alex Caruso, just Andre Drummond just ran into him. Just bulldozed him. His Great own player. Lead, his own guy. Yeah. Bulldozed him. And as you said, Andre Drummond, seven foot. What do you think he's pushing? 350? 350. He's a, he's a big boy. But that's a I, gigantic so he, man. So Alex Crusoe gets run over by him. He leaves the game and immediately the Hawks go 14 nothing run. I think I think 14 nothing was the was the was as high as it got. But yeah, that's that's what allowed the Hawks to even get back into it. And then you see them go lose by 15. And it wasn't even that close. It was 20 plus late. And then the Bulls started running clock and the Hawks had a couple of baskets and and made it look a little bit more respectable. But as much as I like the play in tournament, watching the Hawks last night. <laughs> My uh, a buddy of mine who who covers the NFL, he texts me and he goes, "This is Adam Silver's like trick to get us to watch the Hawks on a Wednesday night." <laughs> it kind of felt like it. You know that game stunk, dude. I I think that the play in tournament looks like if you're in the West, it's incredible. The whole play in tournament's incredible, mm -hmm. right? And the battle to get into the play in, and it's not just a battle for. Like, are you going to make it? Because that was over kind of early. Yeah. It was a battle for seeding yes. within the tournament where yes. it's like, are you going to be the five seed, the six seed, the seven, the eight, the nine, or the 10? And yeah, it was, there were five seeds up for grabs going into the last month. Oh, yeah. Going into the last two weeks. It was so yeah. incredibly compact. And you're like, okay, what's going to happen here? You get to the East and it's like, oh, man. I mean, I the Hawks didn't even like back into the playoffs. It wasn't even like the beep, beep, beep. It was... They're just so bad that, but they're not as bad as the other bad teams. And right. so somebody had to draw the short straw of badness. The Hawks had 36 wins and were comfortably in the play in. That's just wild. The Hawks went, the Hawks went 36 and 46 and were four games up on the Nets. That's why I think the play in, the purpose of the play in realistically was to stop tanking, right? Mm -hmm. to, to limit tanking. And so now what we've done is we've got to the point where we've limited tanking to like three or four teams. Yes. And, and that was the the real message. And I think it's worked. It's yeah. just the Hawks are are caught in that. that you know, the, the Hawks are typically they're a number seven pick in the draft. Uh -huh. They're a team that's not good enough to get a good pick and they're not bad enough to have a bad pick. They're stuck in mediocrity forever. They might they might be East Coast Sacramento for or what Sacramento was the last two decades. Oh, yeah. And what they've done with their front office is some wild, wild stuff. Truly wild. Truly wild. And like, and Kyle and I both have like some insider, like, dude, thoughts on this one. It's, it's a strange one. It's not, unfortunately, we can't talk, but yeah, wild, dude. Wild. Insane. Yeah. Um, no, but to your point, and that's, that's a great one that you make. I was trying to go through the teams that actively tanked this year. Brooklyn did, or no, the, 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 I'm sorry. I don't think Brooklyn actively tanked. I just think Brooklyn wasn't very good. No, Brooklyn got broken. Like yes. when Ben Simmons wasn't available, yes. that was it. After they, for some reason, tried to count on him for a third straight year. Yeah, like they, I think it's like kind of they have to. Like they can't move him, so they're financially just, they're yeah. gonna cross their fingers and and yeah. pray. Uh, but yeah, Mikael Bridges just wasn't. I I think didn't make the leap that they thought he might as a one A type of guy. Yep. Cam Johnson may have hit a ceiling as a player, and they just weren't as good as they thought they would be. Uh, you had the Raptors by the end of the season actively tanking. Yes, but the Raptors made the big rip the band aid off yes. move two yes. moves yes. In, in December and January yes. mm -hmm. to move OG and to move right. uh, Pascal Siakam. Right. So you understand they're they're not a true tank as much as they are. Like, hey, we need to reset and get younger. And they went out and got some of those pieces. Yes. So, right. They are rebuilding. They're not tanking. And we'll get to the difference here in a second. Yeah. Charlotte, again, just bad. Well, that and they lost a uh, ball for like almost the entire season. Right. So, again, the horn difference between a bad team and a tanking team, and we'll get to it. The Wizards, just bad. I think the Wizards expected to be better than they were. Yeah. But, but I didn't. I, I, I was like, what do you think well, you're going to do the Pistons here? Pistons too, dude. Oh. The Pistons gave Mon gave Monty Williams all that money because they thought they had a roster that could realistically compete for the the play in. That's why. And they wound up being the worst team in the league by like by, by a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Detroit, but to Detroit's credit, 
I don't know that they did they you know move their veterans and commit to their young guys like yeah for yeah. sure but it wasn't like they were tanking down the stretch I didn't think I just think they weren't very good no I I think you're probably right there and like for me also like the Charlotte thing I'm so glad that Jordy Fernandez didn't have to go there mm -hmm. because yeah, same like look when your That's best a... when your best player is a serial domestic violence abuser and no one in the league wants him on their team yes. that's your best player correct i i don't know where you go from there and your second best player is lamello ball who for some reason can't stay on the court well i mean yeah he might be their best player when he's possible that the, good. the big ball of brand wasn't a good idea just say oh, maybe just who, saying. who who to who to thunk then there's the jazz yeah who finished 31 and 51 the jazz tanked they, yeah, they shut everyone down. Everyone down Again, the last month of the season. The second year, and remember, Sarah Todd, we had her on before the season opener. Yep. Desert News. And she does a phenomenal job, by the way. But I believe Utah Sports Writer of the Year last year. Oh, I, I think she was. So, uh, does a phenomenal... And we, we asked, like, hey, what's the expectation this year? And she said, well, this team, had they decided not to pull the plug on last season, could have pushed for the play-in. So this year, it'd be a disappointment if they missed the playoffs. And they pulled the plug again. And they finished 31 and 51. So they pulled the plug to not even tank right. It was the moment they realized that John Collins wasn't an answer to any question that was a being asked. A true stunner. Nobody could have seen it coming. They're like, he doesn't answer any question. Like, whatever question we had, it's, it's there. Yeah, we yeah, do have to go. go break. Yeah, we just, we just blew through a break. It's fine. Uh, off to a rocking hot start on a Thursday. We'll continue talking about this uh, when when we come back. And then, is it actually uh, good news that the Kings got the Pelicans? We'll tell you why next on ESPN 1320, Sacramento Sports Center. This is pretty crazy. The, the Hornets Boy, had... My old boss would have a commission. Oh, because you went over? Oh. He would be so disappointed with me. Uh, they had like 12 dudes average double figures. And then... Who's that? The, um, the Hornets. Mm -hmm. And then Seth Curry averaged nine. Davis Bertans uh, in 28 games averaged 8.8. .8. Nick Richards, 9.7. But then it's like Mark Williams at 12.7. They had uh, Vasily Misic average 10.8. Uh, okay. They had PJ Washington at 13.6. They had Grant Williams at 13.9. Like one of those guys left. Trey Mann at 11.9, Gordon Hayward at 14.5, Brandon Miller, Miller at 17.5. 7, Brandon Miller quietly had a very good rookie season. No one even talks about him, but 17.3 with 4.3 rebounds, and he shot 37.6.3% from three. I've learned that if you don't come out the gate scorching hot as a rookie, you have no chance of getting any kind of recognition. Yeah. Well, like I mean, Scoot Henderson was way better at the end of the year and just doesn't get yeah. talked about. Yeah. Brandon Miller, same thing. Yeah, I didn't look at Scoot's final numbers. He was really bad early on, though. I guess that would be the, the response. Well, you can't be horrible coming out of the gate. Wow, he did finish at 14 with 5.4 re, uh, assists, 3.1 rebounds. He only shot 38.5% from the field and 32.5% and from three. You know who he looks like? Unfortunately, who Emmanuel Moutier. Oh man, Emmanuel Moutier. Damn. <laughs> Kings legend. Oh no. <laughs> King signed him to a 10 day contract and then he was great. And then they didn't pick him up again. I was like, huh? Uh, trip was great. What's up, David? I had a really great time. I can't wait to travel all overseas again. Yeah, Jaime Hawkes. Man, the the all in, uh, all rookie team is going to be stacked. Yeah, that's a Brandon Pajemski. I don't think he makes it. I bet he does. Well, he he'll make second team. Yeah, because first team will be Wemby, Holmgren, Miller, Mario Garcia, uh, Hawkes, uh, Kevin as a sixth man if Malik doesn't stay. Um, Maybe, I don't know. You know, like Kevin as a as a two three, maybe.
Thanks, Tyler. Oh, uh, we'll talk about this, Anthony. Good question. Thanks. That's crazy. Is this right? DeMarcus Cousins. What's up? Was the eighth best single season PER in 2016 17, the eighth best single season PER in the last 25 years. Huh. That doesn't surprise, dude. He was. 2016 17, that's the year he gets traded. He was, he was so good. That's a, in, in the last 25 years, that's a, huh. Okay. Advanced. That's great. Is this right? You what? can get into Smoothie King for 15 bucks tomorrow. Oh, we should just hop a plane, Let's Kyle. Go, dude. Let's just Let's go. Do it. Let's take a road trip. If we, dude, if we drive, you have a you drive an electric car, we're good. How many times would we, would we have to oh, stop? Hmm. <laughs> Now, back to the Insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen, brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. Best day of the week. I'm Kyle. That's James. Those are our voices. Say hello, James. Hello, friends. That's James. And thanks, everybody, for tapping in. Uh, whether on YouTube, Twitch, the free Odyssey app, maybe you're listening on 1320 AM, we appreciate all of you for hanging out with us. We're rocking with you until noon. D-Lo and KC will take over at noon and hang out with you until four o'clock. I want to remind everybody we will be giving away 500 bucks as part of the nothing but net $500 giveaway. We'll be doing that uh, in the next hour. So stick around for that keyword, which you'll enter at ESPN 1320.com. Mm. And um, I forgot the other thing I was going to do. Well, we so had we're this, just moving on. We had this interesting thing in the, in the chat. Um, Brian, uh well, well I don't man your name is all over the all over the board but uh that DeMarcus Cousins had the the 20 Ryan. he over the last 25 years DeMarcus Cousins 2016-17 season was eighth best single PR ever his PR with the Kings Oh it's trying my best but changed Oh got it okay okay all right um yeah his PR was 25.8 that season uh, with the Kings, it was twenty six point five, which is really high. But holy smokes! But a couple of years earlier, he had actually a higher PER for total for the season, which was twenty six point one. So I'm not sure about the stats there. Like as a King, yeah, the twenty six point five. But he got traded mid season to the Pelicans and had a twenty three point two. Maybe was, he meant eight best for the Kings. No, I, I mean PER is a funny stat because uh, I'll be honest with you. After Demarcus left. Uh, do you know who the PER leader on the Kings was every year? Wait, after DeMarcus left? Yep. So that was 16-17. Oh, this is a fun question. Yep. Um, 16-17. Bogdan Bogdanovich. Nope. Um, <laughs> De'Aaron Fox? <laughs> nope. No? Not Zebo. Oh, was it? Uh, no, hang on. Don't tell me. Uh, was it somebody like Tyler Honeycutt? No, Ty Tyler Honeycutt's uh, <laughs> RIP. The late yeah. great Tyler yes. Honeycutt. Uh, Honeycutt was way out of the league by two thousand. By that time, uh, he was a two thousand eleven twelve draft. Who? Okay, hang on. I'm thinking of somebody else. Go ahead. Um, who was it? Yeah, you, you probably don't. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course it was. I should. That's bad. That's so bad by me. That's poor. Well, okay. So let me let me make sure I'm correct with that. But I'm almost positive that Willie led them in PER like multiple years. Oh yeah, seventeen point six. There he is. Uh, number two on the team, Costas Costa Kufus mm -hmm. at seventeen point six. Giorgio's Papianis. Yorgos. Yorgos. Oh my God. Yorgos Papianis was. Um, I feel bad for him coming over. He he was just way too young. And like way too 
filled with like young man angst. Sure, no doubt. Like, he was no not doubt. a pleasant dude to be around. Hey, just in general. Speaking of the seventeen eighteen kings, what's Jakar Sampson up to? I don't know. I love Jakar. They could use him right now. He was such a nice guy and like a dog, bro. Yeah, I loved Jakar Sampson. Yeah, him against uh, LeBron James. It's like, hey, you're on a ten day contract. How about you guard LeBron? Tonight? You got this, bro. All right, we're going to start you playing 28 minutes against LeBron. How about that? We were talking about fun nicknames on Basketball Reference. Just while we're here, I'm on Jakar Samson's uh, Basketball Reference page. Oh? Do you know what his nickname is on Basketball Reference? No. SpongeBob Samson. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Why wouldn't it be? We had some good bad? ones yesterday. I, this should be a, a really fun, random game. I agree. Yeah, like we'll give we'll give a nickname and then you try and guess who that nickname applies to. That that fully seems like something we should do. That's a that is a Google sheet I will build and we will play that game this summer for sure. Um, what? I, I thought just, you started talking. Sorry. No, I was going to say Switchblade. Who is Switchblade? Switchblade. Switchblade is is an NBA S- nickname. Switchblade, former Sacramento King, is a nickname that belongs to. Former Los Angeles Laker, former Houston Rocket, former Portland Trailblazer. Trevor Ariza? Trevor Ariza! Come on! Yeah! <laughs> I would have never gotten there. <laughs> I, hey, I had another 15 teams. I could have said former know, New York insane, Knicks, dude. former Orlando Magic, uh, former uh, New Orleans Pelican, uh, former hang Washington on. Wizard. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, hang on. Let's play this game later. It feels like Malik Monk's about to not win six man of the year, huh? If he does, if he loses, uh, it's just such an... Ag- Secure into Bagley in, in the chatty house that Zach Lowe voted Zach Lowe voted for Nas Reed over Malik Monk. Garbage. What are we... You know what, Kyle? I Like, what is the parameter? Like, what is... I don't know. I don't want to... Look, okay, I'm going to save my angst, okay? For when it I'm happens not, or yes, it doesn't? Yes, I'm going to wait. Because I don't want to sit here and spend the next 10 minutes bitching about something that may or may not happen. So I'm going to wait. But a lot of what I've I've seen from either people with votes or people who don't have votes who just write about the awards and mm-hmm. who they would vote for, it feels like Malik Monk has just kind of fallen by the wayside here. I don't get I it. I don't like it one bit. At all. Like you, I don't understand elevating a guy because now we, we get into semantics. If being a great six man means you can step in and start, then that's not being a six man. I guess it, it's being a six man in one sense that you're the next man up, but it's also not like the true understanding of what a six man is. Mm-hmm. And even if Nas Reed, like he steps in and he starts and what he averaged 17 points a game as a starter. Malik Monk averaged fifteen point two off the bench. Like I, I don't get it. Like they're they're st- statistically they're not even close. Like we're talking about a guy who averaged fifteen versus a guy who averaged thirteen. Guy who averaged five assists versus a guy who was a big man who averaged around what five rebounds. Yeah. Like I'm not saying Nas Reed is a bad player. Nas Reed's a very good player. And, and to be honest with you, the Kings should have done everything in their power <laughs> to try to get him on their team this last off season. I'm not sure that there was a scenario where he was leaving Minnesota. There wasn't a scenario. They hit him up before even free agency opened and they signed him to a oh, contract. Look. Right. Yeah. I don't think there was, even if he had hit free agency. Yeah. I don't know if there was anything they were going to do. <laughs> Either way, like uh, his stats are definitely padded by the fact that he started 14 games. And, uh, and Monk just didn't get that opportunity. And I don't think we, like, again, it's not who's the the best six man who can also put a big number, better numbers if he starts. Because Malik Monk could do that too. Mm-hmm. That's just not what they do. That's not what the Kings do. I don't, dude, I don't. Maybe, I don't maybe if this happens, we can find a voter who voted for Nas Reed and get him on and we can talk about the process. And then punch him. <laughs> there it is. You, you, you can do that. <laughs> I've got a fight with John Bull to get to. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I, the, Two things, two things on the play-in tournament. Yep, and then we can get to the get to the the Kings. 
the first thing I I because I in general like to play in a lot, but then you see the Hawks play. Yeah, and it's like maybe this is too many teams. Maybe this is, but what is the problem is game? right. The problem is you go to the West and you have ten teams that legitimately had a claim to the six seed. Mm-hmm. Or uh, not, not ten. You had five teams, or however many that could legitimately say, like, yeah, won enough games to be one of the top six teams. Yeah, in a, in in a in a given year. So that's where it's like, yeah, hey, this is where it's valuable. But then on the other side, the Hawks had no business playing in that game. Mm. I don't think there was a there was a team they were going to play, or a series they were going to play in, or there was just no path forward for them. Their defense was awful. Their offense was a Trey Young, uh, Dejounte, uh, Dejounte Murray. Murray, your turn, my turn, and I don't know what Trey Young was doing last night. By the way, yeah, that was weird. I I want to make a joke about how he had the over on his assists, but I don't want to do that because it's literally just a real thing that that happened with Jonte Porter. Yeah, but it it was it was such a weird, it was such a weird weird game. It was almost like he didn't want to be the reason they lost, where he had like a really bad shooting game. Yeah, and so he just went, "Yeah, hey, Dejounte, you do it." Oh, okay. So here's how I look at this: I'm willing to give away one game of a bad team for the play-in because, like, look, I think that the benefits of this battle that we saw in the West so far outweigh. The one game that we're going to complain that the Hawks had to play, we're yeah, going to forget about fair. that tomorrow. That's By fair. Friday, we'll forget all about the Hawks and that one playing game, and just go, okay, the rest of these guys deserve to be there. Mm-hmm. And this was this was probably the best way to figure out who that last, mm-hmm. because I I think the ultimate goal here, it's not just to get teams to not tank and to push, push, push. It's also when you get to that that 8-1 matchup and that 7-2 matchup, Mm -hmm. those are the best possible matchups that you can have. And I I think that that's what the idea is. It's that if the Kings beat the Pelicans, that is probably the best, the the Kings and Thunder, if that's what happened. The Kings and Thunder is the best possible 1-8 matchup you're going to get. Because what you don't want is a bad first round. Mm -hmm. You know, you you want everyone engaged in the first round so they're really engaged in the second and the third round. Yeah, that makes sense, I suppose. And then there's the other side of the of the coin for the Bulls, where you get a guy like Kobe White on a national stage, where he is the they are the only action on. Mm-hmm. They were the only game happening when the Bulls and Hawks were playing last night. And you have Kobe White, whose development this year has just been phenomenal. One of those stories of the season, and it's not going to get enough attention because the Bulls weren't weren't very good, but. Kobe White was incredible this year, all year. And on the biggest stage, again, like we talked about with Keegan Murray yesterday, on the biggest stage, Kobe White goes out 15 of 21. He scores a career-high 42 points, nine boards, six assists. He goes three of seven from three. It just has this incredible game where now, hey, maybe Kobe White becomes more of a national story. Maybe he gets more recognition that he wouldn't have gotten without the play. Well, I would agree because I also think that the Kings just saw Keegan Murray get that, and they're seeing people talking about Keon Ellis. Keon Ellis as well, yeah. And Point. these are guys that that people are like, wait a sec, we didn't know who these guys were. We didn't know they existed. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't think the guys calling the game knew that Keon Ellis existed up until, like, the third quarter, even though they called, like, a Kings game, like, two mm-hmm. weeks earlier where, where he started. They probably knew Keon Ellis played for the Kings, but they, I, I, I although... Brian Anderson and Stan Van Gundy, I think, do do a pretty good job of, yeah. of being prepared. But to that point, if we had asked them before the game, like, hey, who's who are the three most important players for the Kings? Keon Ellis isn't coming up. Nope. And I think everybody on this show, on D'Lo and Casey, everybody in the chatty house, everybody listening, I think everybody knew that Keon was going to play a huge role in that game. Mm-hmm. But nationally, yeah. But now, going into this Pelicans game, I promise, if you listen to a... NBA podcast or you listen to a show that's not in Sacramento, you're going to hear people talking about Keon Ellis. Oh yeah. And I I already I on on the eastern side, I already said going in to the to the play in, whoever loses the 7-8 is not going to want smoke with the Bulls. The Bulls are a team that I think is just a pain 
they have enough guys who can put the ball in the basket. They got enough guys who try on defense that, man, you might you might win that fight, but you're going to take a couple of punches. And now you get a Miami team that is very likely not going to have Jimmy Butler. Yeah, it looks like Jimmy Butler could Jimmy be Butler out a couple of weeks. Might be out Friday. Yeah. Still, still awaiting official word. But he had, a, I think, an MCL injury is what they classified it as. They're still awaiting it's imaging and testing. Weird, the MCL injuries out of nowhere. Like the multiple MCL. Yeah. Injury. Did you did you see Kevin Durant talk about this a little bit? No. Um, they asked him how he stayed healthy, and he said, "I avoid the floppers. I avoided the floppers." And they're like, "He's like, yeah, like last year it was like a dude rolling up. Mm -hmm. My own teammate rolled me up. Yeah, flopping. I think it was Grayson Allen. Yeah, yeah, well, whoever it was, but he said they were flopping. Oh, no, it was not Grayson Allen because he didn't play for them last year. And then the year before." He said, I, I got hurt with another guy flopping and falling into my knee and spraining my, my MCL. He's like, so yeah, I, I stayed healthy. JaVale, I think. Oh, it. that's possible. I can't imagine JaVale falling. Um, yeah, I, I mean, but that's... I, I don't think there's any question that... Bruce Brown. Oh, okay, that's who fell into him? I don't yeah. think there's any question that like Luka Doncic was flopping when he when he landed on, yeah. on Malik Monk and hurt him. Mm -mm. He didn't intend to hurt Malik, but he was flopping. No, but he is a massive human throwing his body around, Flailing. falling all over the place. Like, yeah, people are going to get hurt. That's why, that's when you talk about NBA players playing, like, pickup. Yeah. They'll go, there's there's a lot of runs at, like, UCLA and stuff during the summer where, where you'll see NBA guys out there. And Austin Rivers talks about it on, on his podcast. Uh -huh. like you, just, you have to be careful because there are guys out there who don't know what they're doing. Those are the Rico runs. Yeah, That's they're not they call them. right. Yeah. They're not. They're not trying to go hurt somebody. They're not trying to be dirty players. But hey, they're gonna die for a loose ball because they're trying so hard. And now they're banging into somebody's knee or rolling up on somebody. So I, I'm. That's a really interesting insight from from Kevin Durant. It, sure. It's it's why I I talked uh, like somewhat tongue in cheek, but not really about Moses Brown. Like Sabonis wanted no smoke in there. Like you don't want to go inside the game 82. You don't want to go inside with again. Moses Brown is a gigantic man who is a tall person who plays basketball, not a basketball player who happens to be tall. Yes. He, he keeps getting contracts because he's a gigantic human being and he's got sharp elbows and like he'll inadvertently accidentally like ax murder you in the key. You're like, Oh, I'm sorry about that. There's blood everywhere. My bad. It's like, is it really? Or is it the team to put you out there? Because it kind of feels like it's a team to put you out there. <laughs> no. So I'm telling you, Moses Brown is JaVale McGee in Andre Drummond's body. Mm. <laughs> he is, dude. Very oh, uncoordinated. Extremely, extremely. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but very uncoordinated. Yeah. You don't watch him and go, man, what a player. Man, he's so close to being. He's he's two years away from two years away. Oh no, you right. don't. He's not the Bruno Colo, uh, Cabocolo of, of of this generation. <laughs> no, no, yeah. No. God, Brazilian Kevin Durant. That's right, <laughs> <laughs> Brazilian Kevin Durant. Uh, yeah, it just, King's legend. It, King's legend. Yeah, of Bruno course. Cabocolo. Yeah, I would never. Cabocolo. Would never do. Kings and Raptors, as far as I know. I'm sure there's other teams in there. He might still be in the league. Uh, if you Houston told me Bruno, if you told me Bruno Cabocolo was on a was on a roster right now, I wouldn't be shocked at all. Uh, he was at the start, I, I think. He's, but it also tells you, because I think he was in Memphis as well at one point, mm -hmm. if he couldn't make it onto the Memphis roster this year, he's probably no longer right. in NBA circles. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's like when when a, when a an NFL player who people have heard of gets cut by like a bad team. Uh -huh. And you see people like, oh, you got to go get that guy. Like, eh, do you? <laughs> do, do you have to go get he him? He just <laughs> got cut. He really help that team and they did not want him yes. at all. Yeah, that's always a problem. Zach Ertz was the player who comes to mind for me. Oh, when the Cardinals cut him this year, there was this like, oh, he's got to go. Billy's going to get him and watch out. Or oh, he signed with Detroit. And then he didn't even play in the NFC title game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, he's just not. It's wild. It's fine. It's not a knock on Zach Ertz, but it's like let's not fall all over ourselves. Um, the other thing about about the play in tournament that I have not liked this year is how it feels like now injuries have kind of defined it where you have the Zion injury and forget what that means for, for Friday. Cause he's out Friday. Forget what that means for Friday. Just if they, if they beat the Kings and go into the playoffs, they're going to go in without Zion Williamson. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Miami heat 
who are going to go into their game on Friday very, very likely. Again, I don't want to say anything official, but it all signs are pointing to Jimmy Butler being out on Friday. And then if they happen to get past the Bulls, they're going to go into their first round series against the Celtics with no Jimmy Butler, and presumably. Mm-hmm. And that, that I don't know if that's coincidence. I don't know. And 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 frankly, Alex Caruso for for Chicago, I haven't seen an update on, on him yet either. I don't know if it's just a coincidence or if it's, um, if it's just, yeah, hey, Zion's kind of been hurt throughout his career and this is the time he happened to get hurt. Or if it's a, a product of the NBA's fight against players resting against load management. Yep. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. But again, I'm not saying let's pull the plug on the play in tournament for this. It just stinks that this year it feels like that's going to be the overarching theme as we move into the playoffs is, well, the Heat didn't have Jimmy Butler. Well, the the Pelicans didn't have Zion Williamson. Oh, the Bulls, they, they didn't have Alex Cruz. I, I think it's interesting, too. We've always been focused on the 65 game mark, right? And mm-hmm. there's also another, like, it's not just 65 games. In order to be eligible, you have to play, I think it's 20 minutes or more yeah. did in you 65 see, games. Did you see Dante DiVincenzo is ineligible for most improved player by because he missed it by nine seconds? Yeah, that's wild. He played in 81 games, and he's not eligible because there were a few games early on where he didn't play 20 minutes. Right. And you so have to he's ineligible. 20 minutes a night. And then I, I also think um, Brandon Pajemski is yes, not same eligible deal. for something. Yes. Except for, um, can you still make all rookie? No, he's his second year, isn't he? Or is he a rookie? He's a rookie. No, I don't think, no. You can't make all rookie. Oh. You're not eligible for any postseason award. Like Jimmy Butler isn't hey, eligible he, for postseason awards. He only played 60 games. Um. Oh, I see. There was a number of games that he didn't play. Twenty minutes. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. <laughs> That's Divincenzo. Divincenzo's last five games of the year: 37, 38, 41, 44, 53. He played fifty-three minutes in a game. Yeah, I think that they're going to have to make some sort of tweak when it comes to like maybe there's a minute cap that you have to play. That's yeah, like a total minute. I think honestly, <laughs> I know they can't do it this way. But it should be a spirit of the rule kind of thing. Okay. The because the goal is you don't want you don't want um Kawhi Leonard or pick pick a player. Yep. But you don't want Kawhi Leonard, let's say, getting to 65 games, but in 15 of those games he was out there for the opening tip and then came out of the game. Like you want him playing functional minutes. But go look at if you play 81 games, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Did Don, did Dante DiVincenzo play all those games and all those minutes in hopes of being the most improved player? Like, no. There were just games where he didn't play that many minutes that night. There has to be a spirit of the rule deal here. I, I but I know they can't, but I know they can't really do that because then it becomes subjective. That's in, it, it's interesting because, you know, I think it has worked to a certain degree. Definitely. So, Kawhi Leonard played more games this season than he had in seven years. Yeah. Same with Zion. Career high in games. 68 games. Yeah. Zion had never played more than 61 games in a season. And part of that is part of that is health, too. Those guys just not dealing with injuries. Like Kawhi Leonard had a torn ACL and Zion's dealt with a bunch of stuff. Yeah. But I I I I kind of promise that if these rules weren't in place, Zion or not Zion, but well, maybe Zion too, but Kawhi Leonard probably plays a few fewer games. Oh, totally. Kevin Durant probably plays a few fewer games. Yeah. Devin Booker, same thing. I, it, Durant, it, it, maybe not, because Durant played 37 minutes a night. Like, he's there everything, and mm-hmm. they're just like, he's going yeah, out there and fair. playing that's every fair. single night. Yeah. Plus, he he avoided getting rolled up on by... Just avoided the floppers. the floppers. Avoid the floppers, baby. That's how Dallas can slow them down if they play them. Just flop and roll up everybody. No, just have Luca guard him because then Kevin Durant is going to avoid him. It's just like I can't. I can't. Like, nope. The, I can't. Nope. The Get him away from flopper. Me. Eh. Guys can hurt me. I'm not going to do this. <laughs> well, check it out. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, we didn't talk about the Kings. That's fine. We'll talk about them next. I think it's good that they got the Pelicans. I'll tell you why next on ESPN 1320 Sacramento Sports Theater. Be right back. Kyle is trying to get us back on track today. What's going on, everybody? 
Oh, no. no. Um, if you don't mind, we'd love it if you would give us a thumbs up. I don't know why my, my computer sometimes will allow the thumbs up to have this weird little bubble pop up with a thumbs up. Um, let's see. So give us a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Oh, we've got Charlie. Good morning. Good morning, Charlie Howells. Charlie's there, guys. Come out to Sky River. We want to see you. There it is. Charlie, are you going to be there? I am. Come on. Eric M., no. Kobe, uh, Colby White's career high does not. It's Kobe White, right? Yeah, it's Kobe. It does not count towards anything. It's not actually a career high. The play-in uh, stats, they do not live anywhere. Oh. Uh, hi, Norm. How are you? There goes Charlie. Yeah, who's coming out to Sky River tomorrow? And now I have to use the restaurant. I'll be right back. Goodbye, everybody. Go, Kyle. Go. Uh, wait, maybe I'm not going to use the restaurant because I don't know what my key is. Right, you can take my wall if you want. All right. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, guy. Yeah. yeah. That's probably another good question. One, two. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Come on now. Let's see. Can we always here since high school? Um, yeah, I, I agree that the play-in should have its own stat section. And it, it's just bizarre. It doesn't count. It's almost like in Major League Baseball, if you hit a home run, but the game doesn't go a full five innings and they have to replay the game, those stats don't count. So like Bobby Bonds would have had the first 40-40 season ever, but he had a, hit a home run and it got taken off the board. And it wasn't until Jose Canseco got had the 40-40 season in whatever year that was. 2000, I mean, uh, 19... 90, 1991. I don't know. What do we got? What do we got? Yeah, Vlade did flop, and Vlade is one of the all-time great floppers in in NBA history. So, like, I guess maybe we should be nicer if we're people here from Sacramento about flopping, but I don't know. Kyle's back. Good timing. Here we go. Hour number two. That's James Ham. I'm Kyle Madsen. We're hanging out with you until noon. Then D Lo and KC will hop in here until four. Remind you to come out to D Lo and KC's live show tomorrow at 32 Brew Street inside Sky River Casino in Elk Grove. Come out, eat, drink, talk sports. Get ready for the Kings game. Maybe you're going to hang out and watch the Kings game there. Maybe you're not, but still, there's not going to be a better place in the greater Sacramento region. Uh, to get ready for tomorrow night's Kings game than at 32 Bruce Street with D'Lo and Casey. Again, they will be out there uh, from noon until 4. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. 
We're also going to give away five hundred dollars this hour. So That's stay right. tapped in. What probably we, next segment. What are yeah, we calling? Probably this? next segment. We're calling this the, the nothing but net five hundred dollar giveaway. Nothing but net five hundred dollar giveaway. I might do it this segment, but probably next segment, but also maybe this segment. Oh, so you're telling people to stay tuned in. Stay tuned. Don't touch that dial. Don't touch that dial. I think it's good news that Kings got the Pelicans. I was thinking about this a lot last night. Okay. Because I didn't. I I I really want to make sure that if I if I say something that goes against what I initially thought, that it makes sense. And it comes down to, for me, it has nothing to do with the fact that Zion Williamson is out on Friday. And it has everything to do with the fact that I think that there's been a mental shift with this Kings team where I think they're going to be dialed in in a way against the Pelicans that makes me... I don't want to say confident they're going to win necessarily because of how how much the Pelicans have dominated that matchup this year. But I think you're going to get another really, really good game from the Kings. I think you're going to get a really, really high quality game. Whereas I know they've matched up better with the Lakers. Again, 0-5 against the Pelicans, 4-0 against the Lakers. I, I, I understand all of that. And I understand if somebody disagrees with this. But I think there was an opportunity for them to go into that Laker game going, nah, don't last ten and zero against Anthony Davis in his career. We we wiped the floor with these guys. The last two years, we're looking ahead to Oklahoma City, and then all of a sudden, you get LeBron James, and he has a 30-20-10 game, and Austin Reeves hits a bunch of threes, and D'Angelo Russell hits a bunch of threes, and oh my God, the Kings are out. I what? think it, Kyle, you bring an interesting point up there because the way I look at this is is that if you were going to play the Lakers, everyone would almost expect you to beat the Lakers. Because you you beat the Lakers like a drum mm -hmm. all year, uh, this year and last year, seven and one against them over the last two years, and then you look at the Pelicans and it's a game that no one thinks the Kings will win because they have just absolutely dragged you all year mm -hmm. long, like five zero and and the point differential in that matchup I don't even know what it is, but it's no bueno. I mean, it's really bad. I'm gonna do some math. It's probably uh, like. Off the top of what my head. What are you head. setting the over under at? Just just pick a number off the top of your head. I'm going to guess 82. 82 in the five games. I actually, I think that's low. I'm going to say 97. So you're going over your own over under that you Yes. Said. Okay. 33, 37. That's 70. Um, New Orleans Pelicans. Oof. All right, here we go. Nope, Sacramento Kings. I'm on the Pelican schedule. We have... A 36. We have a 5. So we got 41. 41. We have a 10. 51. 51. We have a 33. 80, 84. Four. And we have a 12. Well, it's wow. up by 1. 86. Damn. I mean, 96. No, you get a, no, you get a ding and a blast. Man. Really good work by you. Wow. Nice job. Um, yeah, 96. Whew. <laughs> 95. Do we say 95 or 96? It's 96. 96. It's 96. In five games. In five games. <laughs> I mean, that's just so not that's even. 20 points a game. <laughs> yeah, that's not even like remotely close. That's just. And it, the, and, and even if I remember correctly, even the five point game in New Orleans on November 22nd, even that wasn't. I might be misremembering. Yeah, the Kings the Kings needed to win the fourth quarter by nine points to have that be a five point game. Mm. Yeah. I mean, oof. This is a it's just a bad matchup it's for whatever reason. Really it, tough match. And I don't know why, but I might uh, be talking myself out of my own take as we do this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but they look totally different. Like they, they do. do. They do. The Pelicans, that's the thing. The Pelicans, we talked about this so much with the with the Warriors. Like, hey, these teams haven't played since January. Yep. These these are different versions of these teams than the ones that that last saw each other. And I think that's the case, the case for for Sacramento with, with New Orleans too. The last time they played New Orleans was last week. Was April eleventh, right. Yeah, yeah. But that was their what third closest game? They used by twelve. If okay. they had, if they had lost by twelve in all these games, it wouldn't be as daunting. No, but it's the big blowouts. It's the the thirty six back on November twentieth, and it's the thirty three back on January seventh that makes us all go, "Holy crap, dude!" I go, "Oh, 
Oh, like this is tough. But a twelve point loss a week ago does not preclude the the Kings from like literally a week ago does not preclude the Kings from from beating New Orleans. So that's where I I, I don't think like yeah it's a tough matchup, but I think you're going to get another really really good version of the Kings. Because I think they are dialed. And I think that they looked at at the Golden State Warriors and went, hey, this has been a thorn in our side. This is a dragon that we have slayed in the regular season, but now do or die. Now we have to do it again. And we saw a focused, hustling Kings team. At home, by the way, where they have not been great this year. Yep. And they played their best basketball. And so again, whether they win or lose tomorrow, I don't. I, I couldn't tell you. But I think you're going to get another really, really good game from them. And I'm not, I would, I'm more confident in that with New Orleans than I would have been had they played the Lakers. If that makes sense. No, I, I agree. So, okay, so this Maybe game, I think, look, when you take away Zion, it does something like really dramatic. So the Kings have been busted up by guys like, you know, the secondary guys like Herb Jones and like Trey, Trey Murphy. Murphy. Yeah. Right. Trey CJ Murphy McCall. is the guy who becomes. Well, okay, CJ, I'm going to take CJ and I'm going to take Brandon Ingram. I'm going to kind of push Oh, not secondary guys. Got it, got it, got it. Right? I'm going to kind of push those guys to the side. It's the Valanchunas plays where Valanchunas has a big night. It's the Trey Murphy. It's the the Herb Jones minutes. Mm -hmm. And even Alvarado has an opportunity to score like 10 or 12 on you that hurts you, right? When you take Zion off the court and you, you can shift focus more to... Like either you have two choices. You can either distribute it evenly mm-hmm. and stick with guys like Trey Murphy. Mm-hmm. Trey Murphy doesn't bust you up unless you let him loose because you're defending Zion. Mm-hmm. Or Brandon Ingram gets loose and you try to slow Brandon Ingram by sending a second guy. And next thing you know, Trey Murphy's bombing mm-hmm. away. Or or again, Herb Jones is bombing away. Uh the same thing goes with uh with Valanchunas. All the focus goes to Zion. Zion goes left, and then all of a sudden, Valanciunas is wide open for a dunk on the backside or the putback dunk. Mm-hmm. So if you take Zion out, I, again, I think you have you have two ways you can do this. You can try to take away CJ. You can start like sending a trap or a double team at CJ and and Brandon Ingram every time, and dare these other guys to beat you. Mm-hmm. But those guys have beat you, so I wouldn't do that. If I were the Kings, I would try to play it straight up. Because those guys aren't great one-on-one players. They're mm-hmm. great caught in, in action players, right? And so mm-hmm. I think that there's a way that the Kings, if someone can single-handedly slow down C.J. McCollum, whether that's De'Aaron, whether that's Keon, mm-hmm. um, whether, again, you want to stick, if you can shift Keegan Murray out to play him, mm-hmm. like that, I think, is what you have to do in this matchup, just like you did with Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. And then don't let the other guys beat you in this one. Like, so if, if again, CJ McCollum goes for 40, mm-hmm. that's okay. As long as everybody else is around 10, mm-hmm. you know, again, Brandon Ingram, it doesn't look like Brandon Ingram right now. Like if he you, looks bad, dude. Yeah. If you cannot get a Brandon Ingram game, they become very beatable, Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. This team has had your number. And like, I, like we can talk about the X's and O's and what your philosophy is going into the game. Whatever it is, if the same team that the Kings, if the Kings had showed up on Tuesday night against the, the Warriors show up in New Orleans, I'm I'm going to put them at 60-40 to win the game. If if this that's not who shows up, if it's some weird you know look that we've seen this team do all throughout the year, mm-hmm. you know you could see another blowout. Yeah, yeah. I I, I mean the margin for error is not big. I like, no. don't get that. Don't get that yeah. twisted. I'm not sitting here going, "Oh wow, look, the Kings." It's just that in a huge spot against a team that is that is giving them trouble, uh huh. They played their best game and blew that team out. Eleven points decided the four games between the Warriors and Kings this year, and the Kings go one go and win by twenty four. Ended up being twenty four. Yeah, go they go win by twenty four. Um, I I, I believe that you'll see the same type of performance against New Orleans. Again, whether that translates to a win or not, couldn't tell you. Because like you said, they have so many weapons and so many guys that can beat you that and maybe the Kings don't have a couple of threes fall and, you know, things get a little sideways and and they wind up with but 
I don't, I fear less the, oh man, the Kings just came out flat. They just can't, they just, boy, they got down big and they just couldn't rally back. I don't, I don't, I don't think we're going to get that. I think we're going to get a, at least a close game. Yeah. At least a battle. Yeah. Should be fun. Really excited. We'll dive uh, fully into that uh, tomorrow. We also, because of the, the King stuff, didn't get to talk about Jonte Porter much yesterday. Let's, uh, let's do that next. And we also got to talk about Greg Doyle mm. being weird. And we're going to give away 500 bucks. We got a ton to get to here in the next 45 minutes. So stick around on ESPN 1320, Sacramento Sports Leader. We have a lot of questions. It, well, I mean, you'd start some earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was curious, Kings on Friday, do they... Okay, so Anthony Green asked, Hey, guys, not sure if you saw my earlier question. If not, no worries. Just curious if the Kings win on Friday, do they lose their first-round pick to the Hawks? Absolutely. If the Kings are the number eight seed in the playoffs and they go on to play Oklahoma City, they lose their first-round pick. Uh, it goes straight to the Hawks. Because they will not be a lottery team. Yes. It's top 14 protected, which... Top 14, if you're in the playoffs, you're not one of the the bottom 14 teams. Um, yeah, so, and it, that's the same thing. We had uh, Vlad the Vlad the Imp, 916. You asked the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, we're, we're going to get to that other question, right? In, Did Ramsey hit? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get to that within... Yeah, so the Kings, like that, it's a big deal. And I, I know some people can say, well, you want to keep your pick, don't you? And the answer is no. Um, you want that, well, in my opinion, like you would much rather have that asset. Uh, well, what you, the other assets that you get by losing that pick, right? So again, step in rule. If you don't lose a pick, you're 2025 and 2026. And even 2027 picks are tied up. You can trade your 27, but the 27 has an asterisk next to it and says, hey, you only get this pick if uh, the the 2025 pick conveys. So it ties up everything. Hey, Sass, maybe Chris Duarte can guard Zion. <laughs> Zion. I want, I'm going to... I hope Mitch calls our show. I want Mitch to call our show so bad. Does he just make up names? No, he's just he's just a legend, man. All right. I'd like him to call my show. It's coming, Bryce. Relax. Pause. Uh, James, correct me if I'm wrong. We have about a minute. Uh, this is not how that works, right? No. Okay. Yeah, there's no way. Um, the Kings are at fifty-two million dollars in cap space. I mean, in dedicated salary for next season. Uh, and the salary cap is at one hundred forty-two million. One fifty-two to one forty-two. So in order to pay Monk more than like you have to drop below the salary cap, like well below the salary cap. So trading Kevin Herter would take you, would shave about 18 million off. That only puts you about $8 million under the cap. And like, so keep shaving. You're going to have to get up probably to like 32 million to make it impactful at all. I thought he did play. Did he not play late? Uh, he might. He might have played late, but erroneous, erroneous. There you go. All right, fifteen seconds. Here we go.
Now, back to the Insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen, brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. We got a lot to do. We got to stay on track. We got to stay on track. Okay. We can't talk about, like, our rock Bruno. band songs. No. We can't talk no. about Bruno. No, we can't. We've already talked about Bruno Caboclo enough today. We have. Like, did Bruno or Caboclo. Bruno Fernando. Fernando. And Bruno Fernando. Yeah. Do we have one more Bruno we can uh, Bruno Fernandez. We haven't talked about Manchester United today. No, we haven't, and we're not going to. Oh, All right. No, sorry, man. Uh, sorry, man. You. Uh, money. Let's give some away. Let's do that, and then and then we'll talk about the Jonte Porter stuff. Okay. All right. If you're unfamiliar, we have the nothing but net five hundred dollar giveaway happening right now. Yep. All this week, all next week, and what that means is every day, this week and next week, Monday through Friday. We giving away five hundred bucks. Five. We, the insiders, that's me, Kyle, and him, James. We're gonna give you a keyword. You can go enter at ESPN thirteen twenty dot com. You'll see the nothing but net contest page there. You click on that. You're gonna enter that keyword, and you will be entered to win five hundred bucks. Mm. But then, because we are so generous, well, because let me, because Delo and KC are so generous, they went, hey, we'll also give a keyword that people can go enter at ESPN 1320.com and get a second bite at the entry apple. Two chances to win one prize. Right. Well, one prize every day. So give yourself two chances every single day. Listen to our show. Listen to D-Lo and KC. Get that code word. And you will be entered to win $500. Yep. Doing that each day. Yesterday's winner. The big one. Huge shot. Teresa P. Teresa P. in, I believe, Sacramento. I didn't write down her location. I probably uh-huh. should have. But Teresa P. is our big winner yesterday. She is in... Oh, because I wasn't given one. But a huge shout-out to Teresa. She was the winner of 500 bucks. And now you can enter to win 500 bucks with this code word that we're going to give you right now. The code word is... Today's code word for the insiders in the nothing but net $500 giveaway. Today's code word is net. Net. Like a basketball net. Like mm. a soccer net. Like net rating. Oh. That's the word. I'm not spelling it. I'm not writing it today. Like if you can't get if you can't get if you can't get net, then that's on you. That's right. I totally agree. Not net. <laughs> not not net. Just basketball net. Net. Or a soccer net. Or a fishing net. Hair net. Internet. Fish net. I said fish net. I was thinking like not fish net stockings and then fish net stockings. Oh, I was thinking fish net like catching actual fish. Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking you mm. were thinking at first. Yeah, yeah. What, and then, fish and then you went to the same word but different meaning. There it is. Sicko. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> net. That's the code word. Head to ESPN1320.com. Hit the nothing but net. Fi- hit nothing but net. $500 giveaway. You hit that contest page. Enter the code word net. And enter to win 500 bucks. And then listen all day because D-Lo and KC on this very station will have another code word for you where you'll be able to enter to win again. You don't have to enter twice to win, but we recommend it. Because everybody else is going to be doing it and you're going to enter once. Come on. I like giving away monies. It's the best. It is fun. Yeah. We give a lo- away a lot of yeah, stuff. We got here. a jersey to give away too. We do. We have a whole Kings jersey just sitting there that we haven't given away yet. I mean, we had all those PS5s we gave away during. Away. Did shout during... out Jiffy Lube. Shout out Jiffy Lube. We have uh, we had eighty two one hundred dollar gift certificates. We to Jiffy away. Lube, courtesy Jiffy of Lube. Jiffy Lube, courtesy of Jiffy Lube. <laughs> like we the Kings jerseys, a, we courtesy of Jiffy Lube. A lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. We're also giving away a chance to go to the D-Lo and KC live show tomorrow, except we're not giving that away. There's no tickets. You just pull up. You just pull up. Sky River Casino, noon to four, 32 Brew Street. You can't miss it. When you walk in the front, it's there to the right. You yep. you can't miss it. Uh, it's a super fun time. If you've never been out to a live show, make this your first one. Mm. Get prepped for a massive Kings game tomorrow against the New Orleans Pelicans. There's not going to be a better place in Sacramento to prep for that game, and maybe not even a better place to watch it if you just want to stick around and watch the whole game. There. Yeah. I highly recommend doing that. Mm. as well we didn't get to talk about jonte porter much if you missed it jonte porter yesterday was banned 
for life. Forever. From the NBA for betting on himself, betting on his unders, having other people bet on his unders, his player props, and then checking himself out of games to make sure those unders hit. There was also in the investigation reports that he bet against the Raptors. Oh. Which is the cardinal, like, of the cardinal sins, that's the cardinaliest. That is the most cardinal sin. That is the Stan Musial of sins. All right. Is Stan Musial the most cardinal player ever? Probably. Because Pujols went to the Angels. Yeah, no, no. And it's the, I think him. it's Musial. Yeah. Okay. So it is the most cardinal sin. Yeah. And I think the NBA did the right thing booting him. It was the only thing that you could do. You had to set a precedent that when this happens, that player is gone. I have two questions on this. Okay. One, how many people do we think are doing this in the NBA right now? Because there's no chance. You cannot tell me that of all the dudes in the NBA, Jonte Porter is the only one betting on basketball. Okay, so I don't know. Like Again, I, I've been in the locker room every single pregame this season. Not once have I ever heard the word prize picks at, from anyone being well, prize mentioned. picks isn't betting. It's daily or, fantasy, or, daily fantasy <laughs> or or uh, FanDuel or right. or DraftKings. I haven't heard not once have I ever heard anything yeah, yeah. mentioned. Sure. Even when um, Harrison Barnes was asked about whether he as a North Carolina Tar Heel had a bet against Keon Ellis and oh yeah and from Alabama yeah. he's like nope. in the NCAA tournament <laughs> uh yeah he just laughed and said no we don't do that here yeah like you know it was very like it was it yeah, was yeah. comical but it was also like hey we don't do that mm -hmm. I, I think that there are players I think there are and and I don't think that this is an isolated situation mm -hmm. I hope that it would be and you know one of these games that everyone's talking about it was against the Sacramento Kings Mm -hmm. like the March 20th game. And it was something crazy. Like somebody bet $80,000 on a weird prop bet that would have paid him over a million. Yeah. And, uh, and they it's, froze it. They right. said, Oh no, Big that time red flag. Yeah. That doesn't make any yes. sense. Right. We're used to someone spending $20 on right. that, on that right. same prop. Right. And, and so, yeah, I think it's a shame, but I also do think that like, it's everywhere, man. Like, and my point of view too is, is this, the NBA, the NFL, like they let these people in the door. Mm -hmm. They they let them have a seat at the table. Of course. They they are they have betting partners. They mm -hmm. have like what do we have but here? BetQL. But, but look no, BetQL and Odyssey Company. Check them out. But no, I, I, I totally get that and I understand that. Yeah. And, you know, Shams somebody pointed this out on 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 air. Shams like works with DraftKings directly. Yeah. And he's reporting this. But that doesn't matter, dude. Like oh, the fact no, that the no. NBA, the fact that the NBA is and 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 the NFL and, and MLB and NHL, the fact and, and all these media companies, ESPN has its own book. Like that, these are these are separate from. Yeah, the NBA is going to welcome in sports gambling for fans. Yeah, they want fans investing in the game like this because it makes and you get more casual fans tapped into basketball games. Yep. That's what the league wants. That doesn't mean all of a sudden that it's okay for players to go do it. Oh, like that's no. a separate thing. Yeah, it's yeah. the same reason you and I can't win a contest. Yeah. It's the same reason that on this nothing but net giveaway, code word net at ESPN1320.com to win five hundred dollars. Um, it's the reason that I can't go in and be like, hey, promotions, make sure I win. Oh, yeah, totally. Like that's it, our it, family can't win. We right. can't friends. We can't, I yeah. yeah, there's nobody if you're associated with me directly. Outside of being in the chatty house, or you know, you know, we 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 said what's up at a game or to watch party or whatever, that's you can't win. Yeah. So that's it's the same kind of deal to me. Like just because just because the NBA is partnering with these books doesn't mean that they're going to go. Oh, Jonte, it's okay that you bet against your own team and also bet on yourself to play poorly. And then made sure that you played poorly. Yeah, I, that's not what I'm saying about you let them in the door. But I do think that when you start taking money from these folks, mm -hmm. like it's a slippery slope. And, and the players are, are the league. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I don't know. Like it is such a, it, let, it's, it's, it's everywhere. Let me ask you this. Yep. Let's say sports betting had just become legal in the U.S. federally. Mm -hmm. Just like every every 50 states, 
but DraftKings doesn't sponsor the league and or FanDuel or whatever. I don't want to pick uh, Bet MGM. There's a there's a yeah, yeah. D- dozens and dozens of sports books. Let's say the league is the NBA is not in bed with any of them. They take no money from gambling sites. It's still there. No, oh, no, I, it's still, I, I agree. like that's where that's where it, I don't I don't find it hypocritical or or and it, it's a little bit funny. It is like, well, I mean, but at the same time, like you have to understand as a as a player, just because the league your your is t- partnered with DraftKings or whatever does not make this okay. Oh yeah, I, I don't believe that. Yeah. I, I'm with you. So I, it's I, it no and, and like look, whatever happens to Jonte Porter, he he's gone. Like we'll never see him again. Yeah. But like the athletic article on this, they're like, hey, there's gonna be another shoe to drop and it'll be a much bigger shoe than this. That's what everyone's waiting for. I mean, we had the Shohei situation. We have Jonte Porter that no one cares about because he's just like a, a guy on a two way that may or may not make it. Mm-hmm. Somebody well, else will get caught. We've got to get to the Greg Doyle stuff, but there's one bigger question with this yep. and a much bigger name who could be involved. And we'll tell you why next on ESPN 1320 Sacramento Sports Center. Look at you with the T's in. John Poles asked if that's a new tattoo, Kyle. Um, he has a new tattoo, but I don't think you can see that new tattoo. The Cheshire Cat was I can't I don't know if I can it's kinda of awkward. Um this was uh this was a while ago. Yeah. Um did this in two sessions. Did the cat with the branch first and then uh did all the moon and all the sky and stuff. This is not complete. We're still working on it. And then uh Oh god, this thing's and then uh this one is newer than that. Uh, this is Madame Leota from the uh, Haunted Mansion uh, inside a Main Street lamp. Uh, and then the base of the Main Street lamp is the uh, Haunted Mansion wallpaper. Oh, that's oh, complicated. Yeah. Complicated. It's a lot going on. Uh, I'm going to pull up a, a question from John Poles. We, we Just because we keep talking about this stuff. Like, look, the most the Kings can offer... Uh, Malik Monk is a four-year, $78.4 million contract, I believe. It's right around that. They cannot offer him a, a one-year deal to get his Larry Bird rights. He's an early bird candidate. An early bird contract has to be a minimum of two full years and no opt-out. What they can do is they can give him a four-year, $78.4 million to lock him up and say, hey, you're secure, and they can have a player option after the second year and they can even renegotiate in year th- uh, before that to to extend him. But what they can't do is um, like they he can basically opt out early and get a new extension on top. Uh, they cannot have it. They can't give him a one year deal and then give him a full like Larry Bird rights deal. So early bird versus uh, standard bird, it gets all confusing and weird, but. It's got to be for more than two years. Mm-hmm. Norm asked if you have a se- season pass to Disneyland, Kyle. Um, no, I don't. We used to years ago. Yeah, I definitely used to, but it just it got more expensive, and uh, you get less stuff with it. Uh, the benefits weren't as good. Um, and honestly, the bigger deal is like, you have to go like eight days or nine days or something to make it, you know, pay for itself yeah. as far as take, and just, we can't at this point commit to going to Disneyland four or five times a year. It's yeah. Just, that's a lot. Yeah. When the, uh, the boys were young, the passes were so much cheaper. Yeah, dude. They Especially used to be the, super cheap. the kids pass. I mean, it was like three twenty five for an adult pass. Plus, you could go once and then keep your your tickets, and then if you win again, you could go in and say, "Hey, we already went. We're we want to bump up to a season pass." Mm. And oh, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, it used to actually be worth it. I think it's called a magic key now. Yeah, yeah. If I if I went this often, Norm, I'm super jealous. By the way. If we went this often, then yeah, we would get we would just get passes. But right now, um, yeah, 
Um, terrified, bro. Won't go on the ride. No. Um, um, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, we just, my, my father-in-law gets, because uh, he's a career military guy, he gets a military discounted ticket. Mm. And so that's, that's how we go. I actually think we, we get something here too. Uh, and the same with NBC yeah, media. If you can show your media, you can get a, a so cheaper pass. we can discuss that later. I've had tried dealing with this before. Oh, it wasn't great. We'll talk. <laughs> now back to the insiders with James Ham and Kyle Madsen brought to you by Jiffy Lube on ESPN 1320. Final segment. We got the handoff coming up. D'Lo and KC going to be in here hanging out with us for the last few minutes before we hand it off to them. And they will take you to four o'clock. I want to remind you the nothing but net $500 giveaway. We gave you the keyword last segment, but if you weren't tapped in, we'll give it to you again. Today's code word is net, as in like a basketball net, as in nothing but net. That is your code word for today. Head to ESPN1320.com. Go to the nothing but net. $500 giveaway page, enter that code word and you will be entered to win 500 bucks. D'Lo and Casey will also give you a code word where you will be able to enter again. Um, we were talking about the Jonte Porter situation. There's one last thing I want to touch on with this before we, before we kind of move on. Cause I, we, we need to get to Greg Doyle being weird yesterday. Yeah. But the big shoe to drop that you mentioned, Mm-hmm is one where was a two-way nba player getting this money from mm. and i think the logical thing to do again no no accusations but ramsey and in, in our youtube chat in the jatty house said has the nba investigated michael porter jr at all yet Michael Porter Jr., of course, Jonte Porter's older brother, who and lives in a gambling legal state. Which is where this account was in right. Colorado. Right. And maybe, maybe again, maybe Jonte Porter just lives there and that's where he set up an account because he couldn't set one up in Toronto. I don't know. I I, I don't I don't. It's possible the whole Porter family lives in in Yeah. Demo. Yeah. So I don't yeah. so again, this is not to say, but to answer Ramsey's question, I'm guessing if the NBA, I, the NBA had to make that connection as well. There's just no way they didn't also do that. So my guess is Michael Porter Jr. has been talked to about this, but I don't, I don't know. You would and, hope so. And if, and, yeah. dude, and if it came down over the summer or whatever that he was involved, I don't think it would surprise anybody. And if he was, if he was the one funding this. Or if he was the one physically placing the bets, then he's out of here too, man. Oh yeah, yeah. No, there is uh, like that's not. There isn't a second chance. Like mm -hmm. if you compromise the game, there's not a second chance. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. That's it. Like you're gone. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Yeah. I and totally I think there's agree. and I think there's levels to it because you have this, but then you have like NFL guys got suspended for placing bets on team property, even on like. So NFL mm -hmm. guys betting on baseball or basketball or college sports or whatever it was. Um, but they would do it at like the team hotel on the road. And they got suspended for that. Okay. And it's like, okay, I get <laughs> I get Even, that I get that you're trying to really crack down on it. That feels extreme, but didn't also, Ridley Ridley was injured and bet for his team to win? Yeah. And, that, and I, I mean that was that is wild stuff. That shows that, you though that there is, there's no question. This is like, it's cut and dry. Yeah. Like we're not dealing with this. Like yeah. you were not doing this. But I'll tell you, man, I got a I was pretty year surprised. Old. I was surprised Calvin Ridley didn't get ousted forever. By the way. Yeah. Betting on your sport, regardless, is nuts. No, I yeah totally. I, I would tell you though, like I have a twenty year old and all of his friends, all of them play, mm -hmm. like it, at the college level. Mm -hmm. Everyone is playing. 
it's like I, I when I went to Davis, I had a a buddy who who was making 125 grand a year, uh, like bench playing online poker. He had like four <laughs> screens set up, and he was spectacular. And he'd be like, "Hey, when I run low on money, I'll I'll go on like a 36 hour bender, and I'll just sit here and play all night long for for a couple of days straight, and I'll make 20 grand, and I'm back straight." And your then- your buddy had a problem. Well, it, it, well, <laughs> Kyle, it wasn't a problem because gambler, he was, dog. Because he was winning. No, that is a problem. <laughs> That's a problem. It was wild. That's like saying I don't have a drinking problem. I haven't died yet. Yeah. It, like, <laughs> I mean, this was literally a college kid at Davis, yeah. like a college kid who was making 125 grand a year. Yeah. It's wild, man. So, what does that mean? Uh, I don't know. That's just this thing. I, I'm just That's telling just you, like, thing? like this is it's out there. It's everywhere. It's yes. like. You can't like when when I promote prize picks, I, I don't feel bad about it because everyone is like so many people are doing it. Not and so many people are are pushing it out. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm saying so many people are playing. Mm-hmm. So like, hey, okay, why not? Yeah, it's wild. All right, let's talk about this Caitlin Clark stuff. If you missed it yesterday, somehow, Caitlin Clark had her introductory press conference with the Indiana Fever. After going number one overall. After going number one overall. Number one pick. This is her introductory press conference. And here's who Greg Doyle of the Indianapolis Star, who has been around forever. He is like the dude, the sports dude at the Indianapolis Star. Here was his question to Caitlin Clark. Hi. That's not it. Here was his question. To Caitlin Clark. Hi. Still no? I got nothing here? Oh, no, I hear it. Did you? Okay, I did not. Okay, maybe I just won't. Maybe I just won't get to hear it. All right, here you go. Hi. Caitlin. Uh, Greg Doyle, Indy Star. Real quick, I'll lead to this. You like, you like that? I like that you're here. I like yeah, that you're here. I do that at my family after every game, so... Okay, well, let's cool. start doing it to me, and we'll be able to get along just fine. So, question is, yeah, dude. No, yeah, dude. I don't think I'd listen to the whole thing. Come on, man. It was bad. Come on. It was really bad. So here's what, here's where I'm at with it. Because it's it's. Bottom line is, this is creepy and weird. Yes. And if the Indy Star made sure that Greg Doyle was never at another WNBA game, or if the Indy Star decided that, hey, Greg Doyle doesn't work here anymore, fine. I will have no gripes. I can stop sharing my screen now. Um, I would have no gripes. Yeah. I don't think Greg Doyle set out to be a creep. I don't think Greg Doyle set out to go, hey, I'm going to go hit on Caitlin Clark today. But. I think he genuinely was trying to be like, yeah, hey, I relate. I'm a, I don't know how old he is. I'm a middle-aged man, and I'm going to relate to this 22-year-old and then got stuck in a corner. And the problem is, is that he reverted to creep. Yes. He reverted to, well, if you do that to me, we'll get along great. It's like, what? That's insane. When he did, I think he was genuinely trying to connect. And maybe he was even going to do a story about the hard hands. This is what he did. He did the hard hands. Yep. And maybe he was trying to get a great answer, and she just went, yeah, I do that to my family after every game. And instead of going, great, where did that start? Great, where did that? Great, here's my question. Yes. Talk about moving up a level. Whatever he was going to that's what he reverted to. The fact that that's where his mind immediately went when he got backed into a corner. The fact that in his apology, he goes, oh, yeah, I was awkward and clumsy. And this is what came out. It's like, bro, the pro- that's the problem, though. Oh, and read my piece. Oh, yeah. And by the way, column coming. No, dude. No. Clicking on your column. Are you insane? <laughs> Kyle, <laughs> I have seen, like, over the course of my, my career, I have been in a couple of un- uncomfortable situations, like, in the locker room, right? Some uncomfortable stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Like, again, uh, like, not not talking names here there was a reporter who sat on a player's lap at one point um, and then got banned. Um, I saw a player make 
uh, move his towel to basically expose himself while there was a young uh, reporter slash team employee in the room. Like I've seen some weird stuff mm-hmm. where it's like, what are we doing here? Disgusting. Like, what are we doing? This is horrible. Right. Like you get like, no, 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 no. So, um, but at the same time, like, th- like we're so far forward. This sh- we should th- be, this shouldn't be something where, I mean, like the, the women's game is blowing up. That, that doesn't like open the door for weirdness. No, like, it, it doesn't. I, I just these are look look the, this is this is the I, I think one of the major problems here is that is that there are going to be I promise Greg Doyle is not the only person whose mindset is this way is that oh this is nice for the girls like no these are professional athletes yeah. bro conduct yourself accordingly you would never ever see that go the other way. No. And you have you have women who work in journalism, in sports journalism, who have battled their entire careers, A, fighting an uphill battle to, to get to where they are, but B, at every single accomplishment, every single time they receive some kind of promotion or some kind of praise, it comes with this undercurrent of sexism from men. And weird, random stuff that gets sent to women. Yeah, all the I, time. Just, it's, all just the time. Ask. ask. It, it, I, it, it's crazy. Ask if again, don't don't randomly do this because it's weird. But I have I have friends who are women in journalism. Of course, who I have, do too. Yeah. Right. We we both do. Probably some of the same people. And you hear these stories, and it's like, oh my God, this is what you do. And the <laughs> the fact that now that that same dynamic, but from reporter to athlete, no, is being is being like no, no, no. This is not a, this is not a, hey, this is a side you're like, no, this is, Caitlin Clark is one of the most famous athletes in the world right now. You don't, there's no leeway here. And the fact that I, I think it really exposes kind of this, this double real, standard this relationship and, and this weird, well, yeah, the, yeah. It exposes a lot of things, but it's, it is um, terrible that it, that it happened. But also, I think it shines a light on something that not a lot of people knew happened or knew what was going on. Somebody even said, somebody, uh, uh, I, I forget who it was, and I, I, I apologize, and I wish I could remember. But they mentioned, this is, a, this is a reporter at a press conference who knows there are people there, who knows there are people watching, who know that they are going to hear what he is going to say. And that's what his brain reverted to in a, in a moment where he was like, oh, what do I say? Hmm. Imagine what's going on behind closed doors. Yeah. Imagine the interactions you don't see and the ones you don't hear. And that was um, just a really, really eye-opening exchange, I think, for a lot of people. And it's something that that I think, like I said, I think the Indy Star has to address. I, Greg Doyle has already tried to address it. It's something we should talk about, Kyle. It's yeah, something that, that needs to be part of the conversation. Like, hey, that's... That's not okay. As a collective, we need to tell somebody, no, Mm -hmm. no, no, let's not get awkward with the WNBA player. That does, you know, and and these, again, ladies, they hear all kinds of stuff. Like social media is is just horrendous, but to have it be where cameras are rolling Mm -hmm. is just like a, a, it's a different level. It's a, it's a different like twist on like a really old and, and sort of like horrendous way that this has been dealt with. Yeah. Old sports writer being a creep in public. Not great. Really bad. We'll have the handoff here in a second. Damian Barling, D'Lo and KC. Yeah. I don't know why I, we need to, that's, that's one of our, bad. that needs to be one of our, I, I, yeah. it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm we're a bit scattered. I'm, today. Yeah. We're scattered. It's a handoff. <laughs> Damian Barling in the building. You sound better today. Thanks man. I'm trying. It's uh. I don't know what's going on. This is this has just been brutal. The whole week has just been brutal. The doctor told me what to do, but I was like, buddy, I can't do that. I cannot <laughs> not talk for 48 hours, man. I'm really sorry. Yeah. He's like, well, cut out caffeine. He's like, you already don't eat dairy. Just just get 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 through, get through Friday. It. Yeah. Get through Friday. And then and don't then talk. Do not talk the entire weekend. Like, All right. 
you got Matt. it. <laughs> I'll I'll be I'll be trying to sign language the entire weekend on my little little stops, but um, <laughs> like I like I it, pen, just just... no chance I could miss yesterday's show. And no, obviously I'm not missing tomorrow at Sky River leading into the Pelicans. So of course. it's just been oh that's gonna be loud talking. Uh, yeah, we're we we've made a a couple of adjustments to the broadcast that we think will help the people on stage. So, um yeah, normally those shows wipe just absolutely wipe your voice out. Mm -hmm. But we're we're making a couple of adjustments. Jonathan has made a couple of adjustments our lead in the man. to how we do things. So, uh, hopefully that will will help us get through a little bit and if I can improve just like 10% leading into tomorrow. I think I'll be in really good shape for that Scott River event. If not, I'm just going to pull Ramsey and Katrina and different people on stage. To come <laughs> with Kenny. There you go. The Kenny and friends show. Yeah, yeah. Um, I posited early in the show that it's actually a good thing that the Kings got the Pelicans. Yeah. Because I think you're going to get a more locked in version than you might have. And maybe they would have been locked in against the Lakers and wiped the no. floor with them. But it's less of a worry. Complacency is less of a worry to me now than it would have been. Yeah, I agree because the complacency you would think would come from the New Orleans Pelican side. Definitely. Like it was a really unique thing where either the, the Kings were going to have to beat the Pelicans, a team that they hadn't beaten all year, mm -hmm. or they were going to have to beat the Los Angeles Lakers, a team they haven't lost to all year. Mm -hmm. And I think each of those brings a unique uh, set of pressures to it. And for me, and James, you've talked about this before in the past. I, you know, I didn't want to look past the, the the Warriors and the Lakers Pelicans game was first, but with everything behind us now, I, I'd rather play the Pelicans. The Pelicans might be the King, beat the Kings ass tomorrow. Sure, but I would have rather have had a situation where you have to defy the odds here a little bit. Yeah, and and you 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 go out there and beat the Pelicans than having to beat LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers in a one game playoff. Yeah, to be honest with you, that's the one genius to this is it's going to be called straight up. There is no, there is no NBA agenda. There is no, like, yeah. who do you want to see there? Yeah. Like, I don't think the league cares, especially with Zion gone. I don't think the league cares at all. This is straight up two teams. They're going to be able to battle and you hope that it's called as, as clean as possible. Yeah. Just if they're you're gonna let them play, let them play. Let all of them play. Yeah. If you're you're gonna call it tight, Tuesday. I that's feel like fun. that's what they did Tuesday. I yeah. I agree. They let they 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 let everyone play. They missed calls all over the place. That was that's what was that's what was so funny is I didn't feel like there were any egregious like oh that was not a foul. Why did they call it? Like there were definitely fouls when they blew the whistle. But no. it would be like but it would be like wait okay yeah no he got him on the arm there for sure. But on the other end, they got him on the arm and the and the hand and the face, and there was a push, and then there was a push in the back on the rebound. Like you didn't call anything down there, and then we get a touch foul on the other end. The, 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 I think I tweeted once the entire game, and it was the Keegan Murray play. And the only reason it was funny is because they showed the replay from like that over head mm -hmm. basket shot, mm -hmm. and like he goes up and he's fouled, and he's yes. pretty definitely. It's a pretty definitely good foul, mm -hmm. but he gets the rebound or recovers the ball, I can't remember which, goes up again, and he's fouled again. Mm -hmm. No whistle, no whistle. He goes the third time, and I think the officials were like, all right, Jesus, yeah. foul. Like we, <laughs> look, we, who we wants gave, it? <laughs> we, gave, we gave you two. We can't give you three. All right, we're sending Keegan to there the was, line here. There was the the play where Keegan ripped Steph in the backcourt when Steph just lazy, turn around, mm -hmm. Keegan rips it from him. Goes out. He got fouled once or twice there, too. At, le at least once, maybe twice. Yeah. Warriors come away with it. Andrew Wiggins drives, gets hit on the arm as he's going up, and they blow the whistle. And that's the specific play that jumps out to me. Mm. Was like, okay, yeah, he got fouled, but what? What are there we? Was, there was another one. There <laughs> was, was another one with Clay. It was like they did just enough to try and control the game. Yeah, Clay. <laughs> Clay got fouled. I think it was on a jump shot. It wasn't a three, but mm -hmm. Clay. Clay got fouled. The next, I think it was the very next possession. De'Aaron got hacked. Mm -hmm. No foul on either one of them. And boy. boy. <laughs> Excuse me. These guys are really physical out here. It's like, okay, so these guys are really physical is now code for, uh, yeah, the refs aren't calling anything. Dude, I, <laughs> we had the, the refs are calling <laughs> nothing. We had the weird play where Kaminga came from behind on uh, on Fox and hit him in the awesome. head uh, on the jumper, right? And Kaminga starts 
like calling for the replay. Yeah, yeah. And Fox yeah. turns around and goes, yeah, mm-hmm. replay, you hit me in the head. I want the flagrant. He, <laughs> so they're both going like this at the same time. You're like, yeah, that's Stop fine. The game. Review everything. <laughs> Stop the game. If you're going to hit me in the head, let's go ahead and look at the tape. Yeah. yeah. The refs were really confused. They're like, no one gets a review. I don't they, know what's going they, on here. No I one. I kind of dig it though. Hey, I kind of like also, let's play. Hey, we Look, didn't talk about this yesterday. Reviewing an out of bounds play less than two minutes into the game is insane. <laughs> oh my gosh! I get it. Was he was right? The was, only thing I could think of is it was just so clear and obvious. Yeah, but like, then no one thought it was. Challenge? Everyone at home is like, "Oh, that's not going to get overturned," and then it was. Yeah, I didn't even see the replay. Oh, I it was definitely out on the Warriors. Yeah, it was definitely yeah, the right review. I didn't even see the replay. I was like, I can't believe. Even if that was end of the first quarter, I'd have been like, oh, okay, that's fine. But two minutes in, like, bro, nobody's picking up a foul. You know, win or go home game? Like, no. Like, you, you're if gonna, you, you had, need that, bro. <laughs> and if, yeah, if you didn't have your replay Mike, late in the game and it cost you ooh, the game. Mike is wild. He's, dude, he's Mike, the best. Mike is, Mike is amazing. But I get, you know, setting the tone like, hey, you know, every possession yeah, matters. Absolutely. Like, I guess. But absolutely. It's just, when I saw the review, I was like, he's kidding, right? And shout like, out to Keon, who did the review thing again in the first half. And Mike was like, no. Like, no, I'm not doing that. Well, there was the one, too, where Keon, I think it was on Steph, kind of pushed it a little bit. It was very borderline. And they blow the whistle, and Mike's, like, looking up, and he's looking back at his bench, and Keon looked at the bench and was like, no, 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 like, I I, I technically got him. Yeah. It's like, man, that's... They should let fans review fouls. I agree. Because it's like, spirit of the rule, bro. Did he get his arm? Yeah, but did it affect the shot? Eh, come on. I'm here for it, though. No whistles. Well, I'd rather know I mean, as long as it, like Ham said, though, if you're if it's the same on both sides, then yeah. fine. Yeah, so be it. No doubt. Yeah. And that's where I'm at. Like, hey, if it if it all evens out in the wash, mm-hmm. like I'm good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, and I don't think the officials were a part of that game at all. No, like they didn't not, impact totally anything. And, and I, that's what I would love to see. Like, OK, look, if you're going to let them play, let them play, because mm-hmm. I like the physicality. It's kind of interesting you say that. And we got about a minute here, but. <laughs> we got about a minute. I'm going to bogart it. Um, no, but I think in that exact situation last year where the refs kind of come out and they're like, hey, boys figure it out. Like, you guys got it. Yeah. I think the Kings lose in that situation last year. Where they're where they're every time going up there hunting and they're looking around they're like, what the? Sure. But this year they're like, yep, hey, we know how this goes. We're going to bring that physicality. Okay, you missed a call. All right, well, we're going to make sure to match that on the other end because they're not going to blow the whistle. I think that's one of the things they've kind of learned over the last playoff series and, and throughout this year. Yeah, I mean, the second half of the season, it's like, hey, it's game on. Just go out there and play. Yeah. And ignore it. Ignore it because no one's going to bail you out at all. Yeah. I can't wait for it tomorrow night. I'm so excited. That you can just erase so much frustration. Yep. 82 games worth of frustration you can erase with one win tomorrow One win. Night. One win. 48 and then, minutes. Dude. And then that first round series? Who cares? One, one, game, at, one <laughs> game at a time. Nobody cares. One, one game at a time. One game at a time. Right. Want to know every day. D'Lo and KC coming up next. Uh, your code word today for the Nothing But Net $500 giveaway for our show was NET. They will have another code word for you. Uh, you enter it at ESPN1320.com. You'll be entered to win 500 bucks. What do you guys got coming up besides that? Aren't you supposed to only give the code word out at 11? No. Then the 11 o'clock hour. We, we do oh, what we want. Um, Bro, I've been, hey, dishing, I've, been, I've been dishing this code word out. Salute. He time. refuses to Net. spell it. I'm not spelling it. Oh, well, <laughs> all right. That's fine. Uh, I don't know. We, we podding. Oh, we're podding today. Yeah, we podding. That's the best. Will Z's with us today. Matt George is traveling, so we can't talk to him. Ant-Man, Anthony Slater's with us the first hour. <laughs> Anthony Edwards? No, close. The other Ant-Man. <laughs> slightly, Paul Rudd? Slightly paler Ant-Man is with us. <laughs> D'Lo and Casey coming up next here on ESPN 1320, Sacramento Sports Later. Play! Goodbye, friends. Oh, former Lions safety We're CJ gone. Moore, who was suspended one season for violating the league.
Shady House, what's good, baby? What's good, what's good? All right, friends. All right, Hammer. Good job, man. Appreciate you, Hammer. One minute. I've got a quiet day today. I'm going to enjoy my quiet day. I thought you said I have a flight later. No, quiet day. Oh, you are driving. No, I'm not going. Mardi Gras ham. Think about it, but like it's so late. Like if we go, if I go to games, if there's a five and a seven, I'm talking about two weeks out. Appreciate yeah, appreciate you. Right. Oh. Thank you, brother. <clears throat> Hanging in there, PG. Hanging in there. My partner been carrying me all week on two shows, so that's all I can. Tribal Chief was like, uh, you okay? Like, yeah, bro. How y'all feeling today? How y'all feeling? How y'all feeling? How y'all feeling? One more time. What's good? Come on, man. Hang out. Get comfortable. We are here with you for the next four hours on this Thursday, April 18th edition of Dealing with KC. I am Damian Borling. The ultimate needle mover in God mode himself. He is courtside. Kenny Caraway. Yes, sir. Acknowledge me. Man, and we appreciate you so much for being with us on the eve of the Sacramento Kings second play-in game in New Orleans. On the eve of our next live broadcast. Yeah. Sky River Casino, 32 Brew Street. We hope that you will come hang out with us, spend some time with us, spend your day with us. We're going to be doing our live show there from 12 to 4. And then you're already there. Why leave? Yeah. Game starts at 6.30. The food is amazing. The drinks are amazing. Yes. Uh, you want to kill some time? We could go hit the tables, go hit the slots before 6.30 hits. Whatever uh, you win, I get at least 10% of. Those are the rules. So whatever you win, the Chatty House gets 10% of. That is not the rule. Oh, <laughs> well, you Don King? What? What? When, uh, when, when America gets money, do they give it to us? No. No, they definitely don't. <laughs> but when you make money, you got to give it to America. So you're just to be clear, you're America in this situation. I'm Kenny. Oh, okay. I'm starting my own country. <laughs> well, <okay. laughs> you know what? Before we get too far into this election season, let me apply for citizenship. How do be? How do I become a a, a, a Kenny? I, I, what what do you what do you call it if you're a buddy? Uh, we're still working on the name okay all right i'm in i don't even care i'm in i'm in it, 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 hey aldrin j says make kenny great again um i i, I what I, is it i'm seceding from from all of this and i'm that's just fine just that's, going, <laughs> gonna go do my own thing that's fine off I'm, the grid that, that's fine you do that and i'll just break off and fall into the ocean and we'll call it a day we will call it a day, man. We are going to get you ready for tomorrow night's game. This Thursday is going to a little bit look a little bit different uh, than some of our other Thursdays do. Matt George can't be with us. He's on a flight right now. He's mm. making his very first trip ever to New Orleans right now. You've been to New Orleans before? I have. Yeah, you I like went it? for. <clears throat> oh, yeah, you went for All-Star Weekend. I, I did. Oh, yeah. oh, well, oh. woo, woo. I think I've been twice. God, I can't remember. Yeah, I have been twice. So the first time I went, it was that all-star game that was shortly after Katrina. Mm. And I remember um, 
it was devastating. It was stunning to see because I did the NBA cares thing. And that's where, uh, I met, I met magic for the first time. Um, but they took us to a neighborhood that had, it was, it was decimated Mm. and we were, we, the, the, the project was rebuilding this woman's house who had lived there for like forever. Right. She had lived there like 40 years or whatever. So they were trying to preserve her house. She was literally the only one there. Mm. It was the only house that was going to be preserved. And as we were driving, it was, you know, it was probably six people in the car and the driver. And I asked the driver, I was like, yo, what do all of those symbols on the boards mean? Worst question I could have asked. Because he told me. That's tough. And the symbols were, they stood for, whether the house had been searched, Mm -hmm. whether there were bodies inside and whether there were animals inside. Mm -hmm. It was gutting Mm -hmm. because as we were driving, going to this house, I realized that's, that's every single house we're looking at. Like every single one went back a couple of years later. Trip was a little, it was, I think it was for all-star weekend again, but trip was a little bit different that time. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that first trip was, was, Ooh, I couldn't that imagine gutting. that one. I, like yeah. I said, I, I I was there. Told it before, but I was there a couple of days before. Yeah, what'd you what'd you do on on that trip to New Orleans again? Which one? Wasn't that the one where you took the famous boat ride? No, no, that so that, that was I a went, different trip. When I when I, the first time, well, it wasn't the first time I was there, but the one of the more recent times I was there was literally. I talked about this. It was like three days before katrina hit i mean katrina didn't mm-hmm. hit like there was rainfall mm-hmm. for like a week or so and then it got progressively worse but we were there like three four days before and my mom shout out sure Oak grove we were supposed to go back to atlanta drive back to atlanta on like a thursday mm-hmm. and it was like tuesday and she's like ah i think we should just start pushing this pushing right now you know going to atlanta or whatever get back it was raining crazy we get back to atlanta on like Wednesday, we're there till Friday. We get back to Sacramento on like a Saturday night or a Sunday. As soon as I get back to Sacramento on like Saturday night, turn on CNN. Yeah, they're preparing for, you know, one of the craziest hurricanes ever. And I'm like, yo, I was just there. Like, what what in the world? And and that's crazy. I didn't go back. Now, this was the time when I took the boat ride down the Mississippi River. Uh Uh-huh. And they they, they took us to a plantation. So you, you just, just to be clear, <laughs> and you were with family members. <laughs> so you and your family took a boat ride <laughs> to a plantation. Yeah, that was we, good. You can't they, make this they, up. And look, they amazing. Dropped us off and let us get out and look at the plantation. Let you get out and look at the plantation. Do you <laughs> hear what, yourself? It's what happened. It's what happened. And now, no, now look. Did at any time, point someone go? Mm-mm. This time, Mm-mm. they let us back on the boat. Yeah, that was well <laughs> to go where we wanted to go. At any point, <laughs> did someone say, "Hey, we're really chancing this thing here"? When I got off and like saw the plantation, I said, "Now, first of all, I said I wouldn't have made it. Second of all, I said, <laughs> I said, ah, dude, it's not, I just no. Let's just let's get back on the boat." just so <laughs> let's get back on the boat it was so hot it had just finished raining too. this was like late july and mm. it just finished just pouring just the just the skies open crazy 10 minutes later sun's out everything's good but obviously you know it's just sticky yeah. and hot oh, at that nasty. point and then we're, like nasty. i said we're on the boat we get off the boat we're on the plantation and that's what i was like Man, that's... respect to my mm. To, to my forefather, this is crazy to have to deal with this, man. You know, and that's just that's just the elements, let alone what you had to deal with. You know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, I, I had gone back. It was probably maybe 10 years later, maybe even more than that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, things have been built, but we went to that area uh, mm-hmm. where the levees broke and just seeing those houses. Though Now the way they, you know, make the houses out there, especially um, in, in some of these wards or you know these houses are like it's, two stories inc- tall to yeah. get to the they're on still front door yeah. yeah it's 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 fascinating yeah. it, it, it's uh they also have um uh what do they call kc the, the uh the graveyards that the, oh, the yeah. above yeah above ground, they're above yeah. ground graveyards yeah, like it's yeah. a 
because of that. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a fascinating place. But seeing those homes on stilts it's was crazy. It was it was uh was it, it's different. I, uh, it I, different I love that city sure. though, man. I love New Orleans. It's a, it's I, I a had cool such a great city. time. I gotta get back. I wish I was balling like Damien. I'd I'd probably hop on a flight, you know, and I'm here with go you. to the what game. Mean? Well, I mean, that's just by choice, you know what I'm saying? Like you you got it like that. You know what I'm saying? I could have hopped on a flight. They got fifteen dollar tickets to that game tomorrow. <laughs> Really? Yeah, they got super affordable tickets. They got tickets in the lower bowl for like I'm not saying it like it's Trump change, but they got them for like 175. Well, to get in price Tuesday was two yeah. twenty. Yeah, you can be you can get in the building for fifteen dollars tomorrow. Wow. You can sit lower bowl. That, you for know like what the one seventy five. The one thing about that, like Smoothie King, is it's nothing special. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of there. Yeah, you know, it's just kind of like the the, the is it is it, is it still called the Mercedes Benz? Yeah, Superdome. That that has more. That has a lot more cachet. It's literally it. in the shadow of the Superdome. Right. No, that's that's a shoot. Yeah. Right. It is like you get you get in the right hotel, your 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 window looks right outside at that gigantic stadium. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a great it's a, it's it's a great city. But look at one thing we ain't gonna do here. Mm-hmm. We ain't gonna disrespect the know you. Yeah, I mean, we'll come down no, here. We got the smoothie king. We're going down there. You're playing the Pelicans. I know Zion ain't going to be there, daddy. But I tell you, they still got B.I. They still got McCollum. They still I'm, got. I'm sorry. They still got I, McCollum. You know what it is. Don't act like you don't know what I'm saying, daddy. You know what the verbs is. You know what it is up here, uptown, third wall. Now, we also got Trey Murphy. One more time. C.J. C.J. McCollum. You know what it is. Don't do that. I'm going to say it one more time, and that's the last time I'm going to say it. You heard? You know, that's what I said. My man Birdman and them told me how to say it back then, and I know what I'm doing. But they got a good team. My boy Willie Green, he going he to have them boys ready. They're going to be emotionally ready to go. That crowd going to be ready to go. It's going to be a later start. We're going to be popping up there. It's going to be a good old time out there, baby. You understand me? It's going to be feeling like it's going to be feeling like one of them games in the Bayou, baby. It's going to be feeling like LSU versus Florida. It's going to be feeling like LSU versus Alabama. It's going to be feeling like Saints versus Falcons. It's going to be one of them games. You heard me? Uptown, third ball. We're going to man choose. We're going to get us some, we're going to get us some pole boys. You know what it is after the game. I just wish you knew like when to hit the stop button. And I recognize that I'm only inviting all gas brakes don't work. I, I, I realize, I realize I'm only creating problems when I do this. That's my favorite impression. That, that That's my favorite. That's not even an impression of anybody. I just, I just love that. I just love the new Orleans sound, man. That's good stuff. Them girls so, get uh, to talking. They get crazy. <laughs> the, the, when i was the, younger when them I girls think, got to talk it i think boy oh boy i think new orleans was my first all-star game experience mm. i think that was the first one i went to and watching those young ladies <laughs> dress the way that they were walking around because you know that area down there yeah. it's not like the smoothest yeah. It's not the it's like old walk. Yeah, that's exactly it's like what it's sack. like. Yeah. And so imagine those six inch heels, you know, dropping into those cobblestones mm-hmm. and they're just trying so hard because <laughs> they know. And they didn't have a couple of drinks. Oh, they know they outside. A couple of, a couple of them oh, daiquiris. <laughs> and it was not warm that weekend, boy. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was a hell of a. And I've told the story bef- before about coming back from an event with with like darren williams and a couple of nba guys and we saw a crowd of people running towards us and i thought oh man these brothers is about to get mobbed but c murder was behind us oh and that's who they were running towards (laughs) that's why i recognize the power (laughs) of 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 the no limit family in new orleans oh Oh, my god yeah for sure oh my god so we're gonna talk basketball we'll talk about what happened last night buddy did it buddy did it buddy did it come on man man. give me horns man give me buddy did it Let's go. We're just getting started, man. It's Dilo and KC here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. There's a real interesting interview I want to watch. I've seen snippets of it. You know, I want to watch this, my boy. Of uh, Birdman with... uh, What's his name? The the white guy. I think he's from Jackass. Stevie... Steve, Stevie, Steve-O. I think it's Steve-O. I think it's Steve-O. Let me, let me double check because I got it. Johnny Knoxville. I mean, if it's a, if it's an S, I think it's Steve-O. It's Steve-O, Steve-O was Johnny. the one that got beat up by Umaga that one time. You might have not been around, though. You ever I see that? I thought that was Johnny Knoxville. 
I think that was both of them. Oh, Johnny Steve Knoxville. Rest, he was in the Royal Rumble, I think. It yeah. Steve-O Steve and Birdman. And uh, I just saw one of the clips where he's just talking about, like, how Cash Money sold, I think he said almost a billion records or something. But he's like, I don't know my publishing and all my masters. And I'm not saying that to brag or salute people. But it, Birdman. He does or he doesn't? He does. Oh, okay. He owns everything, 100% of everything from Cash Money. And he's, I, I just, I'm fascinated by him because he doesn't say much, but when he gets to talking, he didn't seen some stuff, good and bad. He's done mm -hmm. some stuff, good and bad. Mm -hmm. But he's like a, at this point in his life, he's like a, almost like a, a OG, you know. And he yeah. just, he just talk the way, the way he, 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 he speaks about things is fascinating to me, and I, I want to hear more from him. So, I want to check out that interview. Is uh. Just do a quick roll call just because I'm curious. There's a lot of people in here right now. Hit the thumbs up if you wouldn't mind. Anybody pulling up to Sky River tomorrow? Anybody? Where they anybody? at, though? Anybody pulling up? Just curious. The 209ers coming through. I think they were. Jason's coming through. Of course, Jason's coming through. Joel coming through around 2 o'clock. Love it, love it, love it. Zay, of course, you're going to be there front row. Love it. Ah, Scuba, sorry about that. I know Chiron uh, said Ronaldo, he wasn't going to be able to make it, man. Happened. Chiron usually there, man. He said he wasn't going to be able to make man, it. Man, I, I know uh, yeah, I'm going to miss Warren tomorrow. No, no. Uh, I'm going to miss Tyler. Coach coming through. Nicole coming through. She's going to be antisocial as yeah. usual. I'm going to make Nicole sit in the front row. Yeah. Uh, I'm with that. Nicole, you sitting up front. Dr. David, that's what's up. Dave Garcia, very, very, very good. Gino, okay, okay, okay. Love it. Yeah, when's Stephen Brown going to pull up on us? When Aldrin uh, Jay going to pull up on us? Steve, Stephen Brown, now that I think about it, Stephen Brown probably pulled up. We uh, we just we just ain't seen him. We're too small. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. I have four, 135. Stop that, <laughs> I've been there every time. There you go, Jack. There you go, Jack. I know it's tough with these events during the week, man, but it's, it's Sky River loves these events, man. They love they love the support y'all show for them. That's why they're always on, you know, Thursdays and Fridays and so on. So um, I know it's not easy to make all of them, but man, we appreciate you guys for pulling Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Yeah. Hold up. Is this a shoe Stephen pulled up to the last one? We didn't even see him. Just, was we, we in the uh we was standing right there we was didn't we see him. stop doing that man <laughs> johnny g you pulling up to this one i think we missed you at the last one right i can't remember if johnny g came through oh we was at the humidor warren you should have texted us yeah man come y'all be man. getting in warren, warren 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 how tall was Steven? Come on, man. We all How tall? Come on. Hey, Warren, go ahead, man. Tell us, man. Five, six, man. I what? gave him a couple inches, man. Five, six, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah. Hey! Yeah! Hey! hey. hey. I caught it. I caught it. That's a flag right there. Yo, man. yo, we, we had That's a flag, flag on the insiders, too. What was going on the insiders? Did you... It's, uh, Kyle paused it. He didn't say, but Kyle paused it. Said, oh, was that when I was on? Yeah, yeah, Jay. I caught it. Yeah, I caught it. I caught it. <laughs> I caught it. I caught it. Yeah, I know. What exactly it's, did James say? James, it was something about. James said he. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that's yeah. Kaminga came from behind. Yeah, on Fox yeah. yeah. That's malice at the palace right there. That's, full season suspension. Yeah, that's uh, that's the John, that's Jante Porter treatment right there. <laughs> Sir, you're out of here. <laughs> See, Steven's like, no, we didn't. <laughs> okay. Hey, <laughs> someone come get this dude, man. Casey over here. Yo, crazy. man, y'all crazy, man. We can't even be adults no more, man. This is crazy. We really can't. <laughs> no, but, no, we I would hey. That was funny, though. That was a good, that was a good one. You said it. I kind of waited. No one said anything. He's like, no, that was too crazy. <laughs> I had to tell Kenny. 
what was going on with my voice a couple of days ago and had to be like, all right, look, <laughs> I'm going to need you to be an adult for a second before I tell you this conversation. Oh, man, that, I had. That, that convo got crazy. No, it didn't. <laughs> What is it like the Oakland Raiders in the eighties? They say it was just leading the league in penalties. That was the thing. That's it, Kenny. No, it, yeah, yeah. Oh, that that's absolutely Kenny. <laughs> Kenny out here wilding. Yeah, out here wilding. Hey, uh, real quick, man. I want to give a shout out to Sacramento. I want to give a shout out to Sacramento because for though, well, you guys can't see on the stream, but those in the in the studio in the office, you see what time it is. It's that time of year. Hoodies and shorts. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. It's that it's that three, four week period before it gets too hot, mm. but it's also warm enough where you can wear the shorts. Yeah, it's, it's a good time. It's a okay. good time. Okay. It's always hoodie mm. season too, though, when you work in radio. Oh uh, yeah, it'd be cold in here. I understand why it's cold. Though. Bro, I, I I had to get on a call this morning and I went into the wake up call studio. Uh-huh. Bro, one is hot. Mm. And two, like I, there'd be a fist fight every day <laughs> if we had to work in that studio. <laughs> it's a mess. Oh man, there is stuff everywhere. Are they the only like, ones in that? They're studio? the only ones in there. Like it is literally theirs. They're the only ones in there because we lost Ashley. We don't know what happened to her. But like, it, I, I walked in there. There's like Gavin got trinkets of himself like everywhere. <laughs> Like all over the place. It's like damn near a shrine to Gavin. It's the weirdest thing. There's always just a box of stuff in there as well. Yeah, just a box just of stuff. Like Katie got blankets everywhere. Like it's <laughs> it's it's a wake up call. That's a wild place. You know who? Uh, I'd never been there, but just by looking at it on TV, that's uh, that's how the the Breakfast Club looks. Just breakfast stuff Club all over the place. Bunch of yeah. stuff everywhere. Yeah. And I don't know. Maybe it's organized cast. They also have like a new studio now. But like the old Breakfast Club. It looks small. It looked like a, a Madison size uh, uh, studio. Oh my God, a Will Kane studio. <laughs> yeah, just stuff everywhere. Man, if we had the Will Kane picture, maybe we could have booked the Rock. Oof. I think oh. the picture somewhere still here. I, don't no, know. I think Is Charlie. It I think Charlie did. I, th I, I think, probably took it. I think Charlie dropped the people's elbow on that thing. Right. Charlie right. really does not like Will Kane at all. Mm, mm, mm. Not many do. Yeah, except, no, I'm not a fan. Except Dwayne. Um, Apparently, this is Dwayne. That was disappointing. Dwayne's made a lot of missteps recently, hasn't he? Well, he's got just that one. What else he got going on? Well, he the Maui thing. I mean, he he explained that. So one. so when you when you when you dip your foot into politics, mm. you're going to piss off, as we've learned, very literally. Half the country. Mm. So The Rock does something he had never done before and endorses Biden and, and, and Harris. Mm. And he gets a lot of backlash for that. Shortly there, you, you know, you have the, 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 over the last few years, you have the Maui thing. Then he goes on the Will Kane show, which is on Fox News, mm. and says he's not going to endorse uh, Biden and Harris this year. He doesn't endorse anybody. Yeah, but, he, he, but he's saying that on Fox News. And his commentary with that though so it's, it's like crazy. and from my understanding and that, and that's why like i think i think Dwayne's always been a lifelong republican mm -hmm. i know that's weird for people because mm -hmm. he is a he is a person of color whether he acknowledges and, and if you ask him about being black he'll talk about it but <laughs> he doesn't really he doesn't really volunteer that information right you can yeah. find uh uh beads or you know something to acknowledge his uh his uh Samoan side mm -hmm. but he ain't gonna make an Under Armour shirt with a with a fist <laughs> no. up on it he ain't, Under yeah. Armour's Project Rock is never gonna be confused for actively black <laughs> no. but like when he was with Ryan Clark and him guys on on the pivot he talked about it mm -hmm. um he's just a he's just a weird I don't know he, he is an interesting it's just dude. The, like, I, I just I don't I, I don't know what he's working towards he, he he's an interesting dude for me and not in the same sense as Birdman <laughs> Birdman like I want to I want to hear what he has to say oh that was off the break that was during the break when I talked about that but like Birdman from Cash Money like I'm interested in hearing what he has to say because I feel sure. like he's he's seen a lot he's lived through a lot so I, I'm just like fascinated by hearing him talk mm -hmm. The Rock I'm almost baffled by hearing him talk sometimes. I'm like, what? What's your well, deal? Like, you what, know are you, why? what are you really? I think the I, I think it's because The Rock talks like a politician. Mm. 
whether that's in his future, whether that's what he wants or whatever, like The Rock became such a massive movie star mm. that he became like he he talks to people like like politicians do. Mm -hmm. And now that the 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 final boss run is is on pause, he's back to doing that stuff, right? Like and, and that, that was our conversation leading into WrestleMania. He can only abandon his social he can only abandon the way that he is for so long. Mm -hmm. And he got to the first night of the WrestleMania press conference. Mm -hmm. And when that was over, he was back to, oh, this was great. It was blah, 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 blah. He didn't, he didn't break kayfabe too much, but he mm -hmm. did. And then by the time Mania was over, over, he was like, I love Seth Rollins and I love Cody Rose. Like he was back to, right. it's all the work guys. Right, right. It's all the work. And right. so, and, and there's, I think there's the, always this unique thing with, with professional wrestlers where they spend so much of their life trying to convince people of something mm -hmm. that, you know, people get on Hogan for being a liar. Hogan's entire life has been built on convincing you of something that's not actually true. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what that's that like the rock being in a coming from a wrestling family. I think he has that certain, I'm going to, I'm going to make you believe what I want you to believe. Mm -hmm. And that's, I don't know what, I really don't know what he's about. Right. I know if I talk to The Rock about being black, he's going to talk the way I want him to talk. Mm. But if Will Kane, Will Kane is talking to him, mm. he's not going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. So he's very, uh, Calculated. He, he's a chameleon in that sense. Yeah, interesting. Well, I think, and you're right, he does talk like a politician. I think he, I think he wants to be a politician. I don't know what's, I know what's stopping him. There's a lot of money to be made right now in entertainment for him. And I think that's what's stopping him from being a full-on politician. But I think he, just my feel of it is he definitely wants to be a politician in some form or fashion. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And I think obviously there's money for him to be made, but I also think there's a, you would have to take a, if he, if he ran for that party, you'd have to take a specific stance that I don't think he'd be willing to take to beat Donald Trump. Mm. And when Donald one way or the other is out of the way, then I could see him entering that field. Mm -hmm. But you're right that the most, he'd be taking a massive pay cut. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know if a president can sell energy drinks and <laughs> skincare cream. Right. Like my sister, like I've, I've, I've loved the rock forever. It's never like been a secret about that. My sister was shopping and sent me a the the uh, Target display mm -hmm. of his beauty line. It was like I think that's where I draw the line. <laughs> like workout gear, <laughs> energy drinks, you know, something related to working out. I got you, but like energizing eye cream, like I'm not sure because I look at the Rock and it's like you know Ryan Clark told him like you look like you're fifty, <laughs> like uh, like it. Now Tracy Ellis Ross got a beauty line. Come on now. I'm going to get that. Come on now. I, I go get that. Talk to me. I mean, a lot of them, a lot of them queens, Nia Long, uh, a lot of them queens out there. You never know. It's not Lathan. Yeah. Oh my God. It's not Lathan. She Lathan. Asian like fine wine. Whatever they doing, they doing it right. Um, I one, one other thing with wrestling. I don't, I don't, I don't think this is a secret or like big old revelation. I think people had talked about it a little bit, but I think it was like uh, made official in some sort of way. Uh, you know, Roman's filming a movie. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I don't think it was a secret or nothing like that, but he's- What, what movie is it? I don't know, but he's doing it with Kiki Palmer and Kiki Palmer on her stories the other day posted like a, a back behind the scenes picture mm -hmm. and he's he's in it he's some type of supposed to be like an action comedy i think or something like that where he's like the bad guy in it so or he's, something. He's going roman it. roman can be a leading man he can Ro like in the in the in the well, sense that the rock is roman could be a leader and, and and i know i know that during that certain moment and certain people they they really like the rock trust me they love roman and when i mean they i'm talking about the Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They oh, love I know. Roman. I, I know. And when I say they, yeah, hell, no, I know. You might be talking about the women in my house. Nope. <laughs> they, I know. Love 
yeah. some Roman Reigns. Yeah. So. <laughs> but do you think I got away with watching eight hours of WrestleMania <laughs> over two days? Yeah, I'm aware. You think Roman came to that level where he's getting paid like The Rock in Hollywood, though? No. Like, no? Okay. No. Yeah, okay. No, 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 no. The, no, The Rock is the... the is that the just Rock, because The Rock has years on him? Yeah, The Rock is the highest paid actor in Hollywood. Yeah, no. no. Like, that. that's... that's I don't, I don't, I don't think Roman can hit rarefied air like that, but he can absolutely be a leading man yeah, in a movie. I don't, I don't think he can get where Rock is, but I think he can get, he can the get Rock, up there. The Rock, he can, yeah. The Rock, and, and hopefully, and it's because of the women. You, you I, know like what the, said, the women love the them. the plus side to it is though, The Rock may have taken some bumps that Roman won't have to take because mm. The Rock can, because he can go directly to Dwayne and hey, don't do this, mm. like. I've already set the template. You don't have to get smaller. You don't have to get skinny. You don't have to do any of that. Yeah. Be you. Be what people love right now mm. and use that in your career. Romans are, I mean, Roman is, you know, he's very good looking. He's charming. He had the, uh, he had that commercial with the little, with, mm -hmm. I think that the was, I don't know if that was his weird, real daughter or not, yeah. but that was the gist of the commercial. Teapot. Yeah. I don't like, know what shoes he was wearing in there. Wow. I don't, I don't know what jeans that. he was wearing. I don't know what he was wearing. Period. Wearing he did. Jordan. He did not. And look, I don't mean Jordan Brand. I nah, mean, it was like, not. It was not a good look at all. But like, yeah, he has a lot of attributes that could that he could be a Hollywood star. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I uh, I was thinking about Hogan this morning, real quick, because why about movies? Because <laughs> um, the the wife is gone, and I've got the kids You're watching No Holds Barred or something. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I have the kids and I got to organize, get everything ready, get, you know, take them to school, lunches, and all this other stuff. And I was, I just said to myself, Oh, I'm like Mr. Nanny. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. No, yeah. that was Hogan's movie. Mm -hmm. And that's a Hogan. Yeah. The, the thought of Hogan came. Mr. In. Nanny was Hogan. I don't remember that movie though. I just remember the title. I don't remember Mr. Nanny either. I'm sure I saw it. I remember suburban commando much more. <laughs> was Hogan ever in a good movie? No, no holds bars was bad, but I like. No I mean, holds bars was it. bad. It was so bad. I liked it. it. I, I like to see so that bad. now, and it was so cheesy. It's so no, bad. It's terrible. it's terrible. It's it's up there with. I mean, but that's how they made movies at that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, no, what I mean? for sure. Remember, like one of my favorite movies that is like super unrealistic. Well, okay, okay. Rocky three. He's in Rocky three. He He's Rocky not 3. the star of it. Yeah, but Hogan is in Rocky Three. Good, there. good call from Joel Wright. But it, it reminds me of, and I think this might have been a couple years later. But it reminds me of, remember Blank Check? Marlon, what's Blank Check? Blank Check is where this guy um, runs over this kid's bike, and he's like in a hurry or whatever. He's like, "You just ran over my bike," and he's like, "Whatever, kid. Here, take this check and go get the fixes." And the kid writes out the check for a million dollars and he basically becomes like a kid millionaire. And so the, the, the check cash the check. The check yeah. I mean, but so, you know, it's I that don't, time, I don't... right? Like he like, he like, cause the guy was rich or whatever or, or whatever, but he, I think he was like a, he ended up being a bad guy. So I don't know what exactly he did, but I used to love blank check, but I mean, the film follows a boy who inherits a blank check and uses it to buy a house under an alter ego yeah it, oh that's right and but people it's... would want to meet him but he had like a voice translator where he'd sound like a grown-up and but he was like a mystery guy nobody had seen his face blank check was a good one. but as <laughs> yeah, soon like being one. searched by several members of the bank he cashed it under <laughs> I don't... mr mcintosh <laughs> now now I, uh, oh boy, <laughs> Preston Waters laminates his relative lack of money compared to his entrepreneurial older brothers and working class father and investor. His situation regularly leads him to humiliating situations, including his having his brother, 16 year old Damien <laughs> and 15 year old Ralph. Uh, commandeer his bedroom as an office. I was, about, they, I was about to say, didn't they work for him? I think that's what happened. Tone Loke is in this movie. He was. Tone Loke was a good guy. Or no, he was a. I can't remember. He might have been a bad. No, he was a bad guy. He was with the. He was like the muscle for the guy who was trying to get his money back. Okay. All right. Well. Nah, but um, like, well, blank Tone, check Tone Loke a, stars as Juice <laughs> in this movie. Debbie Allen is in this movie. I think I remember Debbie Allen. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's not who I thought. No, there was a baddie in there, though. And he liked it. Like, he was 11 and liked this baddie. And, uh, she was, you know, she was a grown woman. I think the baddie might be Karen Duffy. That sounds about right. Okay. All right. Well, no, I don't remember blank check at all. I don't think I've ever seen it. <laughs> oh, the moral of the story is that was a movie that I really liked. And I liked No Holes Bar at the time. But that's there was a certain way they made movies back then, too. I wonder what the wonder what the Rotten Tomatoes review of No Holds Barred is. Oof. Can't be critical good. response. The film was panned by critics with a ten percent approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh my gosh, that's one of the worst. Film critic Brian Ordorf described the film as tremendously crude, unapologetically manipulative. <laughs> And aim directly at easily entertained thirteen year old. Yeah, boys. fool. It's not for you, Greg. Yeah, that's that's a shoot. <laughs> I enjoyed the movie. <laughs> that is facts. And I was like nine. What year did it come out? Uh it came out, I think, in nineteen eighty nine. Let me confirm. It came six. out uh June second, nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, I was six. So yes, I love the movie, Jackass. It is owned by WWE under Shane Distribution Company. Oh, never knew that. Did you know that? I didn't know I did. That. Uh, you know what the music line was called? No. Stephanie Music. I didn't want to look at him. Trying to give back to his kids. Tried. He gave back to him, all right. So much so that Stephanie said, Man. I'm out of here. I'm gone. I'm not dealing with this guy. No holds barred. <laughs> I remember the match. The steel cage match with Zeus and Macho Man against, and it, and it wasn't even again in a with a crowd, right? No, it was, it was like a crowd. A, uh, I thought it was like at a studio. Didn't they try to do that? They like filmed it as a, as a studio. The one with Macho Man? No, no. The, no I mean, on the, in the movie. in the movie, yeah, no, in the movie, yeah, it was in like a studio. Like it wasn't a a real. It wasn't like, like a live event. No, no, it was in like a studio. It was, yeah, like I think Zeus tried to stab him with the ring post, if I remember correctly. I think if I remember the, the the sequence correctly, Zeus ripped the the post out, <laughs> held it up over his head, and tried to stab Hulk Hogan with it. Who wasn't Hulk Hogan? He was Rip Thomas. <laughs> rip, 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 rip. Which is so fascinating because Hulk Hogan isn't real. <laughs> so it was it was basically the fake Hulk Hogan character playing another <laughs> fake character, Rick Thomas, who looked exactly and acted exactly like Hulk Hogan. Hogan. But I did always love the baby blue rip them classic t shirt. I to be honest with you, I only remember the hotel scene. Well, yeah, that was a odd scene. I don't he's don't working, know. He's getting a workout in. He was getting a workout in. <laughs> that was crazy. Thirteen year old me did not understand. <laughs> I wasn't even thirteen. No, How old I was I? Even, I was nine. Yeah, I didn't know. I was eight. Either. I was eight years old when this movie came out. I saw it in theaters. I did not understand. I wonder what, what my were. mom was thinking. I saw it with my mom. I wonder what she was thinking when she saw this. Because I was oblivious. I had no idea. I had no clue. <laughs> you you know again, that movie was aimed at us. You're six, I'm eight. There's an attempted rape scene in that oh, movie. Oh man. Oh man! Like, yo, what are we doing? Like, watching that movie back years later, it was like I was nine when this movie came out. That movie, like, just like the critic said, that movie was for me. And he over here, they over here having these sexual assault scenes. Eighties, Hollywood, Hollywood a crazy place. Kids, man. the eighties were wild. Nah, man, it is. Hollywood was a crazy wild. place too. Still is. Hey, so about that plan last yeah, night. Yeah, New Orleans, is that a crazy place? Or no, Philadelphia is a crazy place. Hey, shout out Philly. They got it. That was a hell of a ball game last that night. That was a good game. That was, was a hell a of a game, game last night. Um, you know what I watched last night? I watched the Kevin Hart broadcast. It wasn't that good. I don't think I knew that was a – they're still doing that? Yeah, they do it periodically. Like, they didn't do it for the second game. Oh. But they did it for – I guess they did it for Philly. Yeah, probably so. Okay. So I was watching it. I, I, I don't want to say that like was it was on. It wasn't like bad or nothing like that. It was just it on True TV? Where was it? It was on the Deuce. Oh, okay. Been too. Um, yeah, I, that was the first time I really watched that. I know they did that during the in-season tournament championship. 
But sometimes I like to watch that. Like when Stephen A does his thing too. I wish like that's that's always meant for people to like just be candid or whatever and like talk unlike the broadcast. But there's still so much at stake. You you're not really being candid, right? Like the way Kevin Hart was talking last night was not how you would have been talking about that game if the cameras were low. Yeah. Yeah. I um I went to see my man Darren this morning to get lined up for for the live show tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So you know I saw you know, first take and the different shows they got on. I think ESPN got Kimberly. Oh. They turned her into one of them. Oh, no. Yeah. That's my girl. And shout out to ESPN, because I thought it was extraordinary that they found a way to work Dak Prescott into a show on April 18th. What was the, what, what, what were they talking about? The NFC quarterback, sorry, the NFC East quarterback under the most pressure. And it was Stephen A, who was remote, I believe he was in Los Angeles, mm. and Kimberly. And Kimberly starts to launch into her explanation, knowing clearly Stephen A is going to object to it, like mm. he's going to have a different response. Mm. And just listening to her, it was like, she's not even making a point right now. Mm. She's retorting stuff that Stephen A hasn't said yet on television. Mm. Like he might've said something in their production meeting, but he hasn't said anything on television. And because she went first, she's responding to stuff that hasn't been said yet. And I was like, oh no, they got her. Not, not Kimberly Martin, they got her. Look, man, I refuse to believe it. No, she's fine. She's fine, guys. It's the only way you get on TV there. I mean, it's being sucks, bro. Like, it's, it's garbage. Really it's really bad. Garbage. It was just so, it was like, no. Because every point she made, because she said Jalen. Mm -hmm. I thought every point she made was valid. Mm -hmm. But the way she delivered it, again, she was talking to Stephen A, who hadn't said anything yet. Mm -hmm. And just as a viewer, I'm, I'm like, oh, I don't know why she's responding this way. But no, nah, I'm gonna be like the kid in Little Big League when she makes a good point. I'm like, yeah, there we go. See that? I you like, see what hey, she did? Kimberly, yeah. Kimberly Martin is fantastic. I, I wanna, I wanna, I, like, I wanna, like, hey, grab my hand, girl. Like, come on, man. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get you out. <laughs> I'm, gonna get you I'm gonna get you out. See, that's the thing, though. Like, maybe Kimberly Martin's just for it because I'm sure the paychecks are bigger that way. That's how you get on first take and stay on first take and stuff like that. Damn. Someone explain to Toxic 916. <laughs> Feel like we have to explain. The toxic nine one six. No, not even explain it. We'll take a lap, bro. Yes. We'll, take we'll take a lap, lap bro. Oh, like, no, man. we'll take a lap. <laughs> Run to the fence yeah, and back. Fence and back. Gosh. Touch the line. Come back. Okay. Well, so we that that. <clears throat> I'm just checking our 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 sheet here. Uh, no Dwayne Johnson. No, no Hulk Hogan. Uh, none of that is written in here. So what we're gonna do is we're you gonna know, regroup. You know. You know what we're doing though, because I'm I'm turned up for this game. I've been like. Deep dive, and I'm trying to figure this thing out. And really, I might have needed that just to calm myself down. Yeah, well, because I'm I'm already anxious. I'm already anxious. Well, you might be even more anxious because Anthony Slater at the Athletic. We'll get his thoughts on no holds barred. <laughs> he joins us next here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. We get him in the link. You got Anthony's email, yeah? Okay. That'd be a good shirt to wear around the office. John Paul, John Paul's funny, man. You're muted. Oh, no, you're not. Why are you saying? Oh, the mic's away. Oh. What'd John Paul no, say? No, it, he didn't say nothing bad. It's just like, damn, John, that's what we got. That's what we got to put in this chat. <laughs> John Paul. John Paul just be saying, I ain't even going to put it up there, man. Like I said, oh, I got to find it. It's not bad. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah I see you. I, I see but you, John. John. Yeah, yeah, I see you, John. <laughs> I see you, John. No, oh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. He's he's just, not wrong. He's just speaking his mind. <laughs> Mason Jones, all NBA G League second team. Damn. All right, Mace. Open. All right, Mace. Damn, Charlie told us to get our time cards in, and I still ain't do it. Yeah. 
Uh, Hector, I'll put this on the screen because I think some people are curious, but I don't, I don't, I don't think it matters to be honest with you, man. Um, I don't think it influences anything either way. Certainly just my opinion, but yeah, I don't think it influences and I don't think he's winning it. I think them voters have already forgot about him. Let's bring our man, Anthony Slater in here. I wonder where Ant-Man's at. Hey man, where you at? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, you in New Orleans? I am. I ha so I'm right now in Chase Center doing what you guys will love to hear: exit interviews for the Golden State Warriors. Uh, hey, their GM just talked about getting you know railroaded by the uh, Sacramento oh. Kings. Uh, but oh, no. <laughs> after that, I'm going to New Orleans. I brought my uh, stuff. I'm flying out in about two hours. Oh, very good. Well, thanks for making time for us, man. I didn't yeah, know you no were. Swamp today, appreciate you. They, there's a there's a question. I just something I came across that probably more better conversation for here than on the radio. But um, Logan Murdoch, a guy, he wrote an article yeah. talking about Jonathan Kaminga. Not all about him, but part of it was Jonathan Kaminga. They say you know GMs think he could get thirty million on the open market, wow. thirty million a year. But so like, is his is his extension wow. up? This summer, they got to make a decision on his extension. Uh, he's extension eligible, uh, starting it. You know that'll get. Sorry, Ant Man. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Hang on, we're we're coming back right now. Sorry. You can ask me on air. We can actually bring that conversation to the air. There's no problem with that. We'll welcome our man Anthony Slater of the Athletic. He's with us. Unfortunately, Ant Man's at the Chase Center uh, covering uh, exit interviews for the Golden yeah. State Warriors. Yeah, hey, what is it? it? What does he have to get a root canal? Does he have to get a, get a cap field? Well, like those, that is the those, dental those, office. Those, those that, that's, that's what we call it out here, Anthony. It's a dental office. I it's figure pretty quiet. it's pretty sterile in there. You know, I figure this would be the event of the year for y'all. It's, it's it's not bad. bad. That was yesterday. It's the, it's the Warriors sifting through the wreckage of getting their season ended by the Sacramento <laughs> Kings. Like you, you, know, you two should be here. To, to, this would be the best event of the year for you. We show up to the exit interviews. That'd be cold. Ain't been to one practice all year. <laughs> That'd be cold. Show up to the exit interviews, but but uh, bring everybody in on the cut because I I think it's fascinating what you what you just said to Anthony. It, so so our guy Logan Murdoch, um, he did a story. Uh, I think it was just about the Warriors in general and what's next or whatever. And he, and he said, there's a quote in there where he says, some analysts believe Jonathan Kaminga could fetch more than $30 million per year on the open market, a figure that would make him the second highest player on Golden State's roster. And I was kind of unclear where his contract situation is. Did they have to, you know, do his rookie extension this year or can they wait a year should they wait a year what what does that look like you you can wait uh he's under contract for 7.6 million next year that won't change mm -hmm. but he's extension eligible just like anybody keegan murray you know it's the same draft mm -hmm. uh extension or no wait, wait, it, i am wrong on that they, they're a year before keegan murray next summer we will be having this davion was his draft That's davion right. davion extension eligible moses moody extension eligible uh this is the year that they Coming off the title, they decided to give Jordan Poole the four years, one hundred twenty-three million. Um, now he was still worth three point nine million the next season, but you locked him in. Eventually, traded him, so they have a choice to make. That usually comes down in October, right before Halloween, uh, if you do or don't extend. Um, but you know, considering how the pool thing went, I wouldn't be surprised if they're a little bit more careful. Uh, but the truth is, yeah, he will get expensive two two seasons from now. They just got to decide. Do you want to lock them in now or go to restrictive free agency the following summer? Draymond going to swing on them. Oh, yeah. You know what time it is. Watch out in, uh, in training camp, uh, Jonathan. <laughs> you know the hands vibes. Up. Keep your hands up at all times, brother. <laughs> you know the vibes. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. <laughs> you know, you know, one of the things that I, I heard um, that that might sound a little, a little off, but I actually see the vision is, uh, and I think it was our guy Guru, he was just breaking down like how the the Warriors believe and the coaching staff and all this other stuff. You can't play Wiggins and Kaminga at the same time. Like they just do too many of the same things. It doesn't really work. And you've got to choose between one or the other. And obviously in a perfect world, you would move on from Wiggins, but because of his contract and sometime of his spotty player, whatever, he may be tougher to move on from. And if you want to talk about improving this team, you might be able to get more if you move on from Jonathan Kaminga and still keep Wiggins around. Is that something that you you've heard? Is it is it something that makes sense at all? Because 
as as good as I think Kaminga is, I don't think he's going to be like I don't think he's franchise. I think he's just a really good young player. And I think if they're trying to, you know, um, extend that window with Steph Curry, a really good young player is not good enough. I, I think they're looking for like a needle mover. What, what, what do you think about that thought of of moving on from Kaminga? Because it might fetch you more in a trade scenario. Well, I think to, to a few of your points, like the Wiggins Kaminga pairing actually worked when Draymond came back and played center. You have to go small. Kaminga has to be a small ball four, give him more space. Uh, but, you know, those lineups really worked. When you had a center next to those two, it didn't. Uh, that mm-hmm. pairing was was rough when Draymond was suspended, really. But that derailed a large part of their season anyways. Uh, I I agree with your overall assessment, uh, you know, that, that that Wiggins, to me, will be a salary they'll potentially look to move this summer. But Kaminga, of course, would, would, would fetch more value at $7 million next season. And for a, you would theoretically be sending him to a team that's looking to rebuild. Obviously, he's more of a rebuilding piece. Um, but that's that. That's what the next month's about. They have a lot of choices to make. Chris Paul's thirty million dollar non guarantee that that they can wipe off the books, or they can use it as a vehicle to get, you know, uh, like a, another salary player from another team, or you know, theoretically, uh, you know, also Clay Clay Thompson's future. You got to look at that too. So everything I think they will reassess and are reassessing. That's literally, you know, the GM just talked. Mike Dunleavy just talked uh, about that. Uh, and I, I think everything's up in the air, including, you know, Kaminga could be on the table. But the one thing I will say, you know, the, the guy who signs the checks here is a fan of Jonathan Kaminga, was part of the drafting of Jonathan Kaminga. And I don't think we'll just as easily be like, oh, you know, chess piece to, to move elsewhere. Like he has probably a higher future opinion than Kaminga than, than most people have. Well, well, Anthony, you know, is probably better than most. What happens when the owner's a fan of somebody? I, uh, we, <laughs> let's go down the list. You know what but, happens? But we know that matters, right? That is like vital to organizational decision making. And yes, you guys know better than me, correct? You will be getting contracts. They're like, wait, what? I thought we were all in agreement. We wanted him out of here, but he, the owner was a fan. And well, <laughs> there you are. Were you surprised by what happened Tuesday? I mean, I'm surprised it was like a runaway. I, you know, I think the Vegas line had it as like two or something like that. I thought it was going to be a close game. I was telling people in the lead up, I thought it was going to be a little scoring. I think there was probably an outside notion from people that weren't watching the Kings on a nightly basis that they were this like, you know, up and down team still that it was going to be 125, 120. And it was like, this is not who they've been for two months, right? Mike Brown has changed who they are defensively and the personnel has forced them to Keon Ellis has risen, no monk, no herder. So I thought I was thought you were going to be looking at something that was like one Oh five, one Oh two late. They always played close games. Uh, and I just thought it was going to come down to who screwed up at the end. Cause both teams had been screwing up at the end. Uh, but the Kings just ran away with it. And the Warriors just look, they just look toasted, exhausted at the end of a long season. And I think that that was my largest takeaway. And then, spin it forward and i'm sure you guys want to talk kings pelicans like i want to see how that defense shows up in new orleans yeah and that's the that's really the thing with this version of the kings now since you know not so much monk but since herder's gone out and keon has stepped into the starting lineup they started to get tenacious on the defensive end and you know i i love what i'm seeing i got an inkling that it's part of their identity right now and will be moving forward it's more of a mike brown uh, type team, but you know, I'm still a little reserved to be like, oh, they're fixed defensively forever now. I, I'm, I'm still waiting on that, but that is kind of the story of this team right now. And and what's going on is the way they play on the defensive end, and particularly on the perimeter with Keon, with Keegan, with Davion off the bench, and I think with De'Aaron Fox too, what he's able to do on the defensive end that that has been one of the stories um, uh, of this team in the last month or so. I think Keon Ellis would be the starting two guard, even if Kevin Herter hadn't got hurt. I think he was, it was trending that way, right? You guys watch it on a nightly basis. You already felt it tilting that way. Um, And then the other night, I'm not saying Keon Ellis is going to be an all defensive guard, but that was an all defensive guard performance. What it was, five steals, three blocks, bothered Steph Curry most of the game, was on. Curry at times was off. He had that up, that block weak side. I think it was at the end of the third quarter got his floater like that was like elite stuff that was you know some of the stuff Derek White's been doing like a Marcus Smart like big time playoff game like he just he blew up the Warriors offense and you have De'Aaron Fox who for for a star guard high usage guard is about as 
you know, disrupt it. He kind of reminds me of Shea, which is interesting because that, that might be the first round series, right? The way Shea is very high in the league in steals despite the high usage. Um, that's that's a really good, like, twosome to, to bother a team, especially when you're allowed to play as physical as you have been lately in the NBA and certainly in the playoffs. Uh, the question mark is still backside, no rim protection. Sabonis is your center, limits you. Um, but that's why Mike Brown did what he did the other night, right? He's blitzing Steph Curry. He's doubling. He's getting out. He's he's kind of using exotic schemes to, to, to bother an offense. Now, the Pelicans are different. What I do like about this matchup compared to the other ones is Mike Brown has a few days now knowing Zion's out. He doesn't have to game plan for Zion. He can suddenly go, hey, Keon Ellis, lock into the C.J. McCollum matchup. You know, mm. what are ways you can take away Trey Murphy? Like, that's where he can – use all of his attention, whereas if Zion was playing, like you can't talk much about Trey Murphy and CJ. you got to focus in on Zion. So I think if you're going to win, if the Kings are going to win Friday night, it's going to be by, by like kind of locking up the Pelicans because the Pelicans can defend right back. Mm-hmm. And the tough part about, we, you know, we're talking about Keon and singing his praises from the other night. And, and these two teams, the, the Warriors and the Kings, hadn't played since January 25th. And we had believed these teams were, were, were different. The Warriors were different. Certainly the Sacramento Kings were yeah. different. The Kings and Pelicans played on April 11th. Mm-hmm. Like, they played with Keon. Like they, and, 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 and the result was the same. It was the same as the other four games. Like, they're 0-5 now. What has to be different? for it to not be 0-6 for Sacramento? Well, I, I don't know, because every time I'm in the building, the Pelicans look like an NBA champion. I mean, they blew right, the Warriors out a right. bunch this season. The next night after McCollum hits nine threes and they blow the Kings out, I came down to a big Warriors-Pelicans game, which, by the way, if the Warriors win that, they're the eighth seed, and you, you never even see uh, mm-hmm. Kings-Warriors. Uh, the Pelicans blew them out. And I'm like, this is the best team ever if I'm in the building. Um, so I got an idea. How about you don't get on this flight to New Orleans? <laughs> yeah, Why don't you stay your happy ass right there at the Chase Center? Uh, I'm good. Um, but He said, I'm going yeah, to New Orleans. Stuff like me. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I do think the fact that there's no Zion, like he's been, even when he's not scoring a bunch, he's just like every time you go to a pregame Kings Pelicans game, like that's what Mike Brown's talking about. Like their scheme to stop. Zion, and then suddenly it is CJ McCollum open for more threes. It's Trey Murphy bombing from from twenty six feet away. Like that's just not the game plan. So, can you just limit CJ McCollum's open looks? Can uh, you know? Can you keep a body on Trey Murphy? Can you try not to allow Jose Alvarado to have as much of an imprint on the game as he's had in, in some of them? Uh, we'll see. But some might just come down to hitting shots too, right? Does Trey Murphy just instead miss five of those? deep threes does keegan murray get hot again i mean that like i hadn't seen him have a game like that in a long time yeah keegan what he did in that warriors game we talked about it yesterday it was like one of those things where there there have been some question marks about keegan and not if he's a good player or not but like man we all had a lot of expectations for him is he going to be able to reset or is he just this type of player and usually i'm not like hey one game just changes everything but it felt like, at least for me, you saw a justification for everything the Kings had talked about going into the season and what they hoped and De'Aaron working with Keegan and like, no, nah, he's really got this and that, this and that. In the brightest stage so far on this, in this season, he showed up and it was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll give him a little more time because I think he might have something like, maybe not 32 a night, but like that type of aggressiveness and, and shot making on a regular basis. It's always a really good sign for young players when their games get better in the playoffs. And this isn't just a one-game sample for Keegan Murray. You guys remember the first-round series last year. You know, he was a little bit shell-shocked, it seemed, the first three games to the point that I remember going into, I think it was game four in Chase, where I'm at, there was a question of, like, would Mike Brown replace him in the starting lineup? Would he have the, the quick hook? And then that night he played really well, and I think he played, like, 40 minutes. And if you look at his game log in that series, it went from – like lower 30s, 20 minutes to 40 by the end of the series, which to me showed like, no, Mike Brown believes in him on the playoff stage and he elevates his game in those type of scenarios. And we saw it again the other night. I'm not, like you said, I'm not just like saying, okay, he's definitely going to now score 32 in every playoff game. But uh, I just, those are always very good signs for young players because, because oftentimes it goes the other way, right? You can, you've got a lot of players in this league that do a lot in the regular season and, and suddenly playoff time, more physical, different style of game, they shrink a little bit. I mean, not that y'all want to get too deep into it, but this has been a question about Demonis Sabonis, really his entire career, going back to 
to Indy. You know, what does his game do on the playoff stage? So it's good. It's good that Keegan Murray seems to be going that way. And it felt, you know, going back to, you know, Tuesday, it felt deliberate. Like when you look at what Keegan did in the first half, it looked like it was deliberate and intentional. Like he's going to be aggressive. He's going to be a factor in this game. He was really, really aggressive right out the gate in the first quarter. Yeah, like that completely flipped the game. And the, I, you could tell early that the Warriors weren't sharp because it was like Clay would get caught on a screen and then Keegan Murray would get open for three and Clay and Draymond be looking at each other like, was that you? Was that me? Um, and I think that that punched the Warriors in the mouth a little bit. And, and like, that's what Keegan has to be. There's no Malik Monk, no Kevin Herter. They, they can still be a good team because they've gotten better defensively. Honestly, losing those two guys in a weird way, like, does make you better defensively. But you got to still score a certain amount of points to win an NBA game. And I think a lot of those points have to come from him because I don't think Sabonis is suddenly going to explode for 30, right? He's going to just get his normal amount of numbers. Somebody's got to get 12 of those monk points that are no longer there. It's pretty much got to be Keegan Murray. Yeah, I hear you on that. Anthony Slater, one of the hardest working men in the game right now because he's got him covering two teams all over the place. And I've had this discussion a couple of times and we had it again yesterday. Um, the the future of this Kings team and what they're trying to build. It's it's the really it's the second year of this quote unquote program they're trying to put together, you know, and they're they're being compared to, you know, other teams who have been at this for four, five, six years, right? Like you should be where they're at. Well, they're at the the Kings are at the beginning of what they're trying to do. And a lot of people look at it, if they're not able to make the playoffs, is this being a failure as a season? And I, I would definitely say you wouldn't reach the goal for sure. There's no doubt about that. But the way that they've transformed themselves in the last month or so, or a month or so, with finding a guy like Keon Ellis and essentially finding your defensive guy and, and your two guard and transforming how this team plays, more of a defensive team in the mold of Mike Brown. Do you think you can still pull out some positives to this series, even if you don't win on Friday night, if you miss the playoffs? So there's still some things that you can say, man, we missed our goal, but we figured some things out. We learned some things about ourselves, and now we can kind of mold our franchise around what we learned in these last couple months. Yeah, I mean, look, they won 48 games last year. They won 46 games this season. Darren Fox, I think, in the Mike Brown era has taken his – game to another level another guy who i think shows really well in the playoffs just like his his game fits that uh you know this season you found ellis i think you you did miss on some of the margins the vizankovs uh the duartes like some of that stuff hasn't worked there there's going to need to be some sharpening around the core uh if you lose this game you do keep your first round pick it's kind of interesting uh how, how that goes um, and, you know, you, they, they have not emptied the cupboard, right, the first-round pick cupboard that they have and, you know, uh, made a big trade, which I still think is on the table with the various salaries uh, that they have. But, yeah, I think, like, th this franchise is in a healthier, more positive place than they've been since the yeah, – I mean, this isn't a revelation, but the Chris Weber, Mike Viviera, right? I mean, like, it's two straight mid-40 win seasons. Uh, I think – if you wanted to have a, a conversation or an argument about could this could this core ever be a true title contender, I could hear no and I could hear yes, depending on like what type of trade might be available. But okay, let's say over the next four or five seasons, the the Fox Sabonis core is a mid forties to low fifties win teams that, depending on the season and depending on how good the conference is, you're maybe a up to a three four seed down to a seven eight seed playing through the play in like. I think that's that's good results. I think that's great basketball in Sacramento. I think that's fun nights where you go where you go and watch these great playing games and and if stuff breaks right, like the Memphis Grizzlies are a great example, right? The grit and grind era. They never won a title. They never went to the finals. They got to I think one, maybe two West finals. They they had these seven game wars. Now they're retiring Marcus Soul's number and Zebo's a local legend and Tony Allen and like that's viewed very positively locally. It made a people a ton of money. It established that brand and that franchise there. And that might be what's going on with the Kings. They, I would guess, if you told me, do you think they're going to win a title or not over the next decade? I would probably say no. But I think they have a lot of really good, fun basketball going on there that they certainly did not have the last 15-plus years. Yeah. 
Steeler and Casey on KIFM with Sacramento 98.5 FM Carex QHD2 Sacramento ESPN 1320 always live on the free Odyssey app. Anthony Slater at the Athletic with us. You mentioned something a minute ago about Demontis Sabonis. He's probably not going to explode and give you 30. Why? Give you 50. Huh? <laughs> Said drop and give you 50. <laughs> yeah, well, that too, but like Why is he not? He doesn't Yeah, shoot. like doesn't shoot. Yeah, doesn't shoot but, the jumper. He's he's just not a, he's he's just not aggressive enough. He doesn't play outside. My my thing is always him. Mean, he doesn't play outside of his game. Like he's never gonna like guys who 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 get to 30, 40, 50, things like that. Like they'll they'll force some shots. They'll feel something. Domas is it feels like Domas is never gonna do that. To, to Damian, yeah, I don't, we, yeah, we, go we ahead. feel like he was aggressive on Tuesday and he shot 14 times. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're never gonna see a Demonis the bonus heat check. <laughs> right, <that>. yeah, right. <laughs> uh which that's his game, you know, it's it's outside of him to like shoot three straight threes or something like that. And, you know, that's where I think Jokic over the last handful of seasons changed. And uh, if you give him the three, if you just go into a game saying, you know, we're we're taking this way, we're taking this way. Nikola Jokic, you can take every three you want from the top of the key. He now will. He didn't used to. Uh, or mid range or whatever. Like if you and there are times I've seen it with the Warriors, they like to make Jokic a score instead of a passer, uh, which they really like to do to Sabonis too, right? They 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 want to make Sabonis have to beat him as a score. Jokic now will. He'll just he will score thirty five to forty. That's a change in his game and maybe where he's just like a better player than than Sabonis in a sense. Uh, he can be more of that score. I just don't think Sab- Sabonis trusts like okay if you want to give me five straight mid rangers or, or this or that, I'm gonna keep taking him like that's just it it's either not in his ethos or he just doesn't believe he's going to make some of them because he's not going to do it when's the last time he's, he shot 20 times in a game uh, he hasn't done it very often like we looked it up a couple of, it's it's i think it was like three times or four times like he has not done that very often right. at all which by the way scores love to play with that right like malik monk's like yeah just fine like max center shoot 11 times because then i'm getting eight more of those shots and like keegan murray and and barnes now should shoot more i think it's just how they're built and how sabonis is it is the other guys that got a bulk score sabonis is just not going to be suddenly a 26 point per game guy yeah in the west sack league i like playing with my guy ted because all he does is set screens for me yeah. Yeah. that's my guy screens I'll play, rebounds yeah, with him in any league because it just sets screens let me get my shots up big dog so yeah three times by the way is the number of times don't my shot 20 or more i was gonna say two it's three with the kings or in his career this season uh this season is okay just okay yeah that's so so ant man what, what you thinking about tomorrow man i think i think the kings even regardless of uh, Zion being out or whatever, I, I think they got a good shot. I, I One of the things that I kept saying was I didn't think they were playing bad basketball towards the end of the season per se. They were just – they couldn't get over the hump. They'd play good. They'd get these leads. Then they give up the leads, and when it got late, they weren't able to do it. That didn't equate to bad basketball. That equated to not being able to find a way to turn that good ball that you're playing into wins. They got the win on Tuesday, maybe a little bit of a confidence boost, I think they got a really, really good shot. Even before Zion was out, I thought they had a good shot of going into New Orleans and getting this win. But what what, what do you see with everything in play now? Yeah, I think they're going to defend well. Uh, I think they're going to have a good scheme. The fact that they got, I think, what, yeah, two like an extra day because of how the schedule had to break with the play-ins, I think that helps them. Um, I think it's going to really come down to De'Aaron Fox scoring, uh, particularly in the second half and the fourth quarter. He's going to need to bring them home. I think because uh, I think points are going to be at more of a premium than, than most NBA games. And it might just be him having to break Herb Jones down and score. And, you know, we're talking about an all defensive guy against basically an all NBA offensive type type score. And, and Joe, Herb Jones has given him problems in the past at length. Um, you know, Alvarado is going to be out there doing pest stuff. I'm very curious about Willie Green's rotation choices. Now that Brandon Ingram's back, he got Brandon Ingram got benched by the way, in that late in that playing game. Um, and even when, Zion Williamson got hurt. He didn't go to Brandon Ingram. He went to McCollum, who had also got benched because he was having a bad game. But real, real, real quick, real yeah. quick about that, I saw the same thing. I and I was in the arena, so I couldn't really tell. Was that a minutes restriction thing, or nope. was that a coach's decision? Yeah. So he so Ingram had missed what like twelve games, something like that. He had a pretty bad knee bruise, uh, and he came back in that final Lakers game on the last day of the regular season, and he played twenty something minutes. 
he was he slowed down their offense and he was not good defensively and and remember I mean you remember when the Pelicans were in Golden One they just had all those athletes fr- flying around Dyson Daniels was in there you know causing steals Alvarado Ingram I think really affected them and it is hard to reacclimate high usage stars who don't necessarily play that great a defense to what Minnesota's dealing with with Towns right now um, so. Going into that second Lakers game, there was a thought going in like, man, if, if Brandon Ingram doesn't look good again, he might pull the plug on Brandon Ingram. And he did. It was a complete coach's decision. And I'm curious going into tomorrow, what Willie Green does. Does he go small, right? Valanciunas, how many minutes does Valanciunas get? And then, yeah, what he does with Ingram. Because I think the maybe the best way to beat this Kings team is to just envelope them in size and try to like you know limit their offense. Anthony, we appreciate you, man. We you, we we know you're you're absolutely swamped today, man. Appreciate you making ones. Leave all that bad juju you you you, you bring to the arena. Leave that leave that stuff at Chase. Yeah, leave it at Chase. We don't need the all world Pelicans tomorrow night. Uh, you might get them. All right, but don't blame me if you do. That's no, we will. Be. It'd be public yeah, enemy you, number one. All right. Well, you know what? I, I won't feel as bad because I'll no longer be covering the Kings playoff run that I'm gonna cover until it ends. But you know, if, you if the Pelicans end it. Uh, but I'll be in Oklahoma City if the Kings are there. That would be a really – I don't want to get y'all too hyped, but that would be a fun series. Oh, it would be. No, we already there. We're already hyped. Wait. Yeah, don't worry. Are they going to welcome you back to Oklahoma oh, City? that's right. That's yes, right. Of course. Does, does OKC this, got beef with Anthony Slater? So they used to call me Trader Slater, but oh, uh, right. but that was when Durant left, and I left when Durant left. Now I've got I've gone back about four times this year. I've written a few stories. Um, I'm, I'm welcome back. I think that some of those feelings – and not just towards me, towards Kevin Durant, have, have softened, okay? It's a different really era. Sure. There's no longer the Russell Westbrook era. It is a new era, and they just they, – they like coverage there, right? They're on the rise. Real, real oh, quick, definitely are. in like 20 seconds with that, with, with everything you just said, KD gets his, his number retired there, right? Eventually, yes. He'll need to be retired. That'll be an emotional day. How about this? I'll leave you with this. Uh, how about Kevin Durant? In his later, later stage career, doing a, doing a welcome home, mid level, I'll come off the bench as a thirty nine year old for the for the ascending mm. Oklahoma City Thunder, and, ha- and maybe win a title in Bricktown, and, and career mm. comes full circle. That's something that you know. That's yeah, I'm yeah. not saying it's going to happen, but man, what a storybook that would be to play LeBron and Bronny when they're with the Kings. OKC okay, versus the Kings. Oh, well, let's yeah. bring Zero back too. Let's if we're oh, winning we'll rings. Everybody if we're Harden, winning rings, Serge Ibaka somewhere. No, 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 no. You went through, you went a little too far oh, with James. Sorry, sorry. Let's yeah. just get Russ back and and, and 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 make sure Russ gets a ring. Oh, this uh, is like Space Jam Four. Did we just make like a script here? What's going on? Thunderstruck. You remember Thunderstruck the movie with Kevin Durant? Oof. Not my bag. No, no, no. no. That, that didn't hit quite as good as a Space Jam. Uh, wow. Yeah, that is. Oh, that's a deep cut right there. That actually took a second. That That's a deep yeah, yeah. cut right there. Uh, we okay. appreciate you, Anthony. Safe travels, yeah. brother. Thank All right, you. y'all. Yeah. It's the man, Anthony Slater, right there. Uh, covering the Warriors exit interviews and then headed off to New Orleans to cover the Sacramento Kings uh, and the New Orleans Pelicans mm. tomorrow. Uh, our man uh, Matt George can't be with us today because mm-hmm. he's en route to New Orleans. So shout out to 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 our crews that are out there handling business. Yeah, man. And there's Anthony said some things in there, man. It had me thinking about, about right. a couple of different things. Well, let's talk about it. Things. We'll come back. Steal with KC here on Sacramento Sports Leader, ESPN 1320. Thunderstruck is the worst basketball movie of all Ooh, time, by tough. the way. Andre Roberson. That was a tough situation. I was so frustrated with it. I mean, yeah, I, like as a as a um as a guard, as a, as a point guard, and all this, I'm getting so frustrated with people who guard specifically who can't shoot. I get so frustrated. And I'm sitting there and I'm like. You have all the resources in the world. How can you not hit an open jump shot? How? How? You should be locking yourself in the gym every offseason. You know in this offense you're getting corner threes. Work on them. And I'm pretty sure Andre Robertson worked on it. He's just the the, the poster boy for this. There's so many people um, like that. But, But what are you doing? 
What are you doing all summer? What are you doing? I, I see videos of you in the gym. What are you doing in the gym? That this doesn't translate. That you get in these get in these games and you're shooting 25% from three, and they're all wide open catch and shoot threes. What are you doing? That used to bother me about Ben Simmons, too, right? I used to be like, Ben Simmons has had access to a gym at any time, day or night, since he was probably 12. You know, he was a phenom. People would, you know, when you're a phenom like that, people open the gym doors for you. Like, hey, you can come in here and work out anytime. You, you can work out by yourself. I got a trainer that you can work out with free of charge, all this other stuff, whatever. You've had access to all that f- since you were 12 years old. How are we at 27 years old and you still can't shoot the jump shot? Counterpoint. They gave me 200 million, even though I cannot shoot the jump shot. What's that? What's that? And that 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 separates the the not the rich from the not rich, but the great from the good. Oh yeah. The greats aren't money motivated, so solely money motivated. They just want to be great at what they do. Michigan, he's not my boy, but this is what happens when you're working with Oscar De La Hoya, bro. I had a press conference today. I haven't seen any quotes or heard anything yet. But he totally put his thing somewhere Wait, to what? some to some. I go, I'm not even trying to say it on the That's stream. Enough. He's he's on one, bro. Yeah, man, it's this gonna be this gonna be a knockout. It might be. be. Bernard Hopkins tried saying he's appearing to look weak when he's actually like, oh, he's in shape and stuff. I'm not buying that. Nah, bro. Nah, this is this is the end of the road for dude. Him and Oscar probably going to the same parties. <laughs> this is the end of the road for uh for Ryan. Mm-mm-mm. Yo, that's crazy. That is crazy. Oh, yeah, he said, too, he's like, Mike Tyson used to act like this, and you guys respect him for it, so well, you guys are going to respect me for it. He actually has a point there, but still, he's crazy. Well, were people, like, respected Mike back then when he was telling Lennox Lewis he did his kids and all that? No, they were telling him he was crazy, but, I mean, we look at it. T- nobody talks about it today. Hey, but, oh, I love Mike. Yeah, but he's kind of. Well, it's different. Yeah, he's kind of lovable now. Yeah, he's changed himself. He's not the same guy. All Ryan is saying is, I'll just come back a couple years later, be lovable, and you're He's got to be in the hangover six and sing (laughs) Phil Collins, and he'll be back in the game. (laughs) Hey, uh, Jesse, you you got all that stuff, though? The the number. Okay. Canelo tried to warn him. Listen to Canelo. I was going to say, it's um, Oscar's fault why Canelo will never fight Benavides. That's a hell of a die on. What, what's the hell? The promoters ruined it for Canelo so much where he's like, you can't tell him to do anything. His experience with Oscar was so bad. Like now, you, like I said, you can't tell him to do anything. Nah, his, his heart needs to tell him what to do on that one. Don't he, do that. His heart is telling him you don't want none of that. Oh man, we'll 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 touch on it. We you know we got some other things we got to talk talk about, but uh, man, this this Caitlin Clark shoe thing has been a hot hot topic the last twenty four hours. Um, yeah, we've got that here. No, you know I'm saying we'll we'll get to we got Andrew Lopez coming up, and then we got you know I want I wanted to well let's touch on a couple of things from let what let's Anthony start there too. let's start there because Andrew Lopez he's going to join us uh, in about ten minutes right mm-hmm. about one thirty so let's what 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 got your what what did Anthony say that got your attention so there was, there was a couple of things the first thing that I was thinking about was he was talking about um, let's start with the the recent 
mm-hmm. this game on Friday night. He's trying to figure out how to go through all this other stuff. And he talked about CJ and I'm on the same page. And that was the focus of, of how I was thinking about this team attacking the Pelicans. And I don't know if it's exactly the same way to, to go about it, but with Zion not there, I would, if I was Mike Brown and Jordy Fernandez, I would treat CJ McCollum like he was Steph Curry. I would defend him that way. Oh, I would game plan against him yeah. the same exact way they just did for Steph Curry. A lot of blitzes, a lot of trapping, get the ball out of his hands. And basically the same game plan you just implored, I would start that with C.J. McCollum. I think they've won games in different ways, the Pelicans against the Kings. Um, it hasn't always been C.J. going off. But it just feels like, especially with Zion out, if you can limit C.J., it feels like that's the key to everything. Hmm. And that's and I, I'm just like, that, that would be the game plan to start off is treat him like he's Steph Curry. Don't give him no open looks. Hassle him. Change the 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 everything you said for Steph Curry. Change the the matchups for him. Everything else like that for CJ McCollum to keep him from getting hot, feeling comfortable, and leading this team. I feel like he's the head of the snake in this in this particular situation. I was uh I was going through the the, the box scores from the previous five games, trying to attempting to pinpoint, you know things to look out for and cj was one that like i immediately had in my mind well cj because because i know zion missed the game mm-hmm. like brandon I- ingram missed the game so wow. it was okay so cj's the, the the constant here cj missed the game he missed two <laughs> and it's like hey the hell we know cj's in this one mm-hmm. we know zion's not we know at the very least ingram is searching he's not 100 he's not right he's he's trying to find uh himself a little bit i'm a thousand percent with you that was my number one takeaway from going through these past games is zero in on start with cj and then let everything branch out like i was texting with tk earlier tk put her she reposted her uh her keon video went absolutely crazy on social media mm. it's at like a million views right now Man. um but she was like, ooh, did, did, did you, you put Keon on CJ, don't you? And I was like, that's probably what I do. Yeah. Put Keon. Like, I, I, I would, CJ, it would be the, CJ would be the center of everything I'm focused on defensively. And then I'd go from there. See, see, this is, this is what I'm thinking. Because without Zion, you can, we talked about it yesterday, it can become a little bit more of a traditional matchup zion was the guy you have no answer for whatsoever mm-hmm. you were like harrison barnes please try and guard this guy so unfair to harrison but he's probably yep. the most qualified so yep. so you try it yep. right and that was always like anthony said that was always like what mike was trying to figure out like how do we slow him down because we don't have no natural matchup like we mm-hmm. there's nothing that we can do about that now without them out him there you can start doing some different things and i was thinking about this and i was thinking maybe maybe you start with harrison guarding brandon ingram which brandon may look at harrison as food right but that's just the initial that's like in a rap but that's just the jab mm. i'm not i'm not giving you the full combo i'm not giving you the full arsenal off top i'm gonna start with a jab and put harrison out there and i'm gonna have harrison guarding ingram keon maybe on murphy because even though he's way taller than him, he's going to hang out around the perimeter. And I might go Keegan on CJ. I might go Keegan on CJ. And I'm just going to, that's going to be the start of giving different looks. That doesn't mean Keon's never going to guard him. He is, but just like, just like Steph. Yeah. I'm giving him multiple looks. I'll probably start with Keegan to, to, you know, give him a different look or trap and everything. We're doing a whole bunch. Not no one person is going to guard CJ for a, a duration and on each play. Like, if he's on a screen and roll, we got two guys. Like, I'm treating him just like Steph. And I think Keegan started on Steph. I'm not sure. But I think he did. And eventually it was some Keon action and all this other stuff. But I could be wrong. But that's how I would look well, at it. I would, and Keegan Keegan is is my is my ultimate 
Um, that's my ultimate chess move for CJ and Keegan. Keegan is, is. or Keon is. Okay, Keon, Keon is. is my ultimate okay. chess move for okay. CJ, and Keegan is my ultimate chess move for Brandon Ingram. Okay. Like eventually, eventually, if things aren't, if that's not working, that's where I'm going to revert back to. But I don't want to give them what I'm going to do at the on start. Okay. Trey Murphy is problematic too. You know who we didn't mention in that that list of. I I, I don't know what percentage he's going to be. Jose Alvarado is not going to be a hundred percent. That's right. Yeah, he, he 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 got pretty banged up in that second yeah. Lakers game. Yeah, um, both ankles. I think. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't know what that means for him. I'm sure he's going to play, uh, but he's going to be pretty banged up. Yeah. Um, and to finish that off, it's probably be De'Aaron on Herb Jones, and obviously it's Sabonis and Valanciunas. And obviously Herb Jones is taller than De'Aaron, but if you want to. Hey, let's take advantage of this mismatch and so you, De'Aaron on Herb Jones. Let's get Herb in the post all the time. Go ahead. Give him the ball the entire time. Because remember, the whole game plan is to make sure CJ don't go off. Wasn't – yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, the problem is, though, you could have Trey Murphy go off. Because we've seen it. You got Keon on him. That's that's where you, you mix that up a little bit. You got Keon on him. And then here's the other thing about that, too, when I think about the game plan. We're going to stay home. If they want to shoot a bunch of mid-range twos Whoa. with Brandon Ingram, if they want to post up Balanchunas and, and do this with twos, they're not going to beat us with twos. But they can't, obviously, hit 22 threes like they did before. I think the other game they hit 19 threes. Like, we, we can't have that. We're staying home on the three, and we're going to go one-on-one, which is something that you can't necessarily do with Zion because Zion will get 40. I don't know if Valanciunas is getting 40. Valanciunas might get 18. But they once again, you want to run your offense through Valanciunas? By all means, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, do that. I'll sign up for that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll sign up for it's, that. It's one-on-one Valanciunas in the post. You want to give it to him every time? By all means. I don't think he's going to beat us that way. Same thing I talked about yesterday like with Kaminga. You want Kaminga to just shoot the whole time and not give the ball to Stefan up? By all means. Yeah, he, he hit three in a row. That's cool. Keep shooting. Like, don't – Jeff Van Gundy used to always say this, and I agree. If you have a game plan, don't overreact to, you know, when they make a shot on the game plan. You know what I mean? Stick with it. Stick with it because you had, you had that thought for a reason. Now, if it's being beat, if you're being beat bad by it, then you have to make the adjustment for sure. But I'll take Valanciunas one-on-one and see if he can score 35. He might be able to. He's a good ball player. But I don't know if you'd be able to beat the Kings that way. So what – you know what I want to do? I want to pull up the film from while we're talking of uh, – like seven days ago. You know, we had a lot to hang our hat on with uh, the Warriors game because it was three months ago, mm-hmm. right, even though I think the Kings won that game. But still, it was like this is a different version of the Sacramento Kings. Different version of the Warriors, but it's a different version of the Kings. We can't really do that with with the Pelicans. We just played them in a game that did matter. Mm-hmm. Um, in a game that you hope they learned something from. Mm-hmm. That was a game Trey Murphy had 27 in. Right? So there's... I like the idea of throwing different looks at CJ, but I'm also not of the belief... I believe CJ is the hub, but I'm also not of the belief that CJ is the only one. He's He's not the only one. They can have good games, but in that game... Zion once again was the problem. Zion, you had nothing for him. You you would try to leave Harrison Barnes on an island, and unlike Valanciunas, they'll go to Zion every time, and he will score forty to forty five on you, and you'll lose. Mm-hmm. So you couldn't you couldn't just say, "Oh, let Zion do whatever," because number one, he's also going he's going to get buckets, but he's also going to get your guys in foul trouble. So you had to you, you when Zion was there with this particular team, you had to help. You couldn't stay home. You tried to stay home. They scored every time with Zion, and he was getting to the free throw line. And that helped out Trey Murphy and those guys. Now with no Zion, you can stay home off with Trey Murphy a little bit because Trey is a lot of – he's a catch-and-shoot slasher type guy. So he's going to take advantage of when the defense is is playing soft on him or, you know, if they're doubling down or they swing the ball quick and he slashes or hits the three and things of that nature. And 
you're 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 better prepared and bear, better matched up for that without Zion on the floor. I think the Zion's the Zion's had like mid games against the Kings and the Pelicans are still blowing them out. So it's not like his scoring is the end all be all. I just think his matchup is such a problem for what these guys like to do. Mm. Can't believe I'm about to do this, but I'm gonna pull up Trey Murphy film. Well, I gotta do what you gotta do, man. If you, we can find let's bring in Andrew Lopez. By the way, Andrew Lopez covers the New Orleans Pelicans for ESPN in New Orleans. But he with us. He with us. Because Andrew's the only one who thought Sacramento <laughs> yeah, would yeah, be yeah, yeah. would beat uh Golden State. So Andrew, on behalf of all of us, uh welcome to the kingdom. We will try to get you access to the beam <laughs> the next time you're in Sacramento. I was gonna say, do I do I get the beam? Like is that is that part of this? Because I'll pick you every every round until if I can like the beam. <laughs> well, if continue with the favorable coverage. We'll play some calls. And keep being right yes, when it comes please. to the Kings. And please. Then, yes, we'll we'll make that happen. Please. <laughs> Please, especially, uh, I don't know who, you, I have a feeling you might not be picking uh, the Sacramento <laughs> Kings tomorrow night, but we're trying to dissect this matchup as best we can, Andrew, and it's difficult. We've got a five-game sample size in which mm-hmm. the Pelicans have just beat the Kings up. Yeah, it's, uh, and it's not, it's not a particularly close five-game sample. I think I was, I was looking at them today. I think it's an average margin of victory, I think 19 points. Uh, in those games, two 30 point victories. Uh, it, it just has not been a great matchup for the Kings, which it, sometimes that, that just happens. I mean, you, you look at the Pelicans, the Lakers are just not a great matchup for them. Um, there's other teams that, that they just don't match up for some reason this year. Uh, it has worked out. And look, I remember the last few years, it was, it was the opposite. The, the Pelicans couldn't do anything to stop deer and Fox. I think if, if if I remember correctly, going back to maybe 21 or 22, at one point, I think th- three or four of the Aaron Fox's top five scoring games were against the Pels. Um, I think those are Alvin Gentry led teams and now he's there. So maybe, I don't know, maybe that's why the switch happened, but it, it was one of those things that you're just like, man, it just, when you have a team's number and you look, it's tough to beat a team four teams times in a year. It's, it's obviously tough to sweep a team. It's tough to do it five. And I think all, everyone in New Orleans knows everything that happened in the five previous games is really out the window right now. I know one of those games did happen without Zion, but this is, this is different. This is, you know, play in playoff basketball, this is postseason basketball, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be different this time around, and they're going to have to bring their A game uh, if they want to try to, you know, do it a six time. Andrew, I want to I want to go back just a little bit here, and, and to your pick of uh, the Kings beating the Warriors. I think it was fourteen to one. I think it was yeah. maybe thirteen to one. You being 14. the lone one, yeah, that 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 picked the Kings to win. What did you see there? Like, what what made you think uh, they were going to get that done? One in in these situations, I typically like the home team. Uh, I feel like that's a big advantage in, in games like this. I've covered playing games, uh, obviously seen all the playing games and, and I've, I've watched the home team lose. I've watched the home team win. But if I'm, if I'm feeling like things are pretty close, I'm going to lean home team. And with golden state, it, it's just, I mean, I obviously in the week prior to the play in, I watched the Pels play against the Kings and the Warriors. Uh, Pels won both of those games, obviously, but, I was like, I, I saw what I saw there, and I was like, I, I just don't know if they're going to get it fixed this quickly. And I think it's it's hard to bet against Steph in, in a situation like that. But I, I just lean to let me go with the home team here because it just felt so close. And the Golden State still, I, I was still not convinced that they had completely figured it out. And you know, if it if it felt like a toss up, which it did. In those cases, I'm going to go home team. So, Andrew, not not trying to be funny here, but like, where are you leaning with this game tomorrow? Because there's so many different, like, fascinating circumstances involved. Obviously, right. you mentioned Zion Williamson. You know, Brandon Ingram does not look like Brandon Ingram at all. And then you have the fact that they've <laughs> the, the Pelicans have beaten the Kings five times this year. It's it is a very interesting set of circumstances right now. Obviously, the the, the Zion factor. Zion played some of the best basketball I have ever seen him play in an NBA uniform in the last two weeks. Hmm. I think his game against the Lakers and his game against the Suns, which was right, I think right before the King, or I think they went, 
because they played in, in Portland uh, before they came to, to Sacramento. The, the Phoenix game and the LA game, about a week apart, were probably the two best games I've ever seen him play in an NBA uniform. It, it was just, you're like, oh man, like this is, like, not, man, they can get six. Like, this is looking pretty good. Mm. And then they have the hiccup against the Lakers. They bring Brandon back. Now, Brandon's had the bone bruise in his left knee after hyperextension, which, to be quite honest, when you saw that injury happen, it looked a lot worse. Yeah. And the fact that he was able to come back within four weeks um, was was huge. However, in, in, in covering Brandon over the years, Brandon doesn't typically – uh, come back strong in his first couple of games. Um, usually takes him two or three games to really get going. And I think we saw that in the first game against the Lakers on Sunday in the regular season finale, he played 23 minutes, 13 points, just didn't look the same. Uh, and probably for the first time in, in a long time, he, he was not, he was benched at the end of that, that playing game. He was at 25 minutes. He had a little bit more on his, his clock, basically, he could have come back in, but he struggled a, a lot in that second half, had a couple of bad turnovers, a couple of bad shots, just didn't look like himself. Um, now they have, you know, I, Willie Green just told reporters in New Orleans that, uh, you know, Ingram was in early yesterday, getting some extra shots up. Um, he, he's trying to kind of work his way back so he can be um, that guy again. However, it, it, it's going to be a lot. And I think for both teams having the two days off after processing this or for the Pels having two days off the process is good for the Kings having two days to kind of try to, you know, get back and figure out how do you, how do you do this against a team who has uh, handled you this year? I think it's good for both teams. I, I will say this, even on ESPN, uh, I am, I apologize to Kings fans because you will not see an official prediction from me mm. on this game. I, I do not I try not to predict games where I have to actually cover the, the series. I like that. Game. No, I, I like you. that. I like yeah, that. I got you. So I will not have an official one for this. <laughs> However, um, it it does feel like the situation is a little bit tougher for New Orleans this time around. Andrew's and the got the Kings. <laughs> Andrew's got the Kings. <laughs> Tweet it. The pressure is a little bit more on New Orleans right now because of, you know, if if New Orleans loses this game, they are only going to be the second team in NBA history to win 49 games and not make the playoffs. Wow. And the only other time that happened was when there were only eight teams in the playoffs. Wow. So, and it's, it's, I think they're going to have the pressure. I'm very fascinated. And I, I honestly don't know which way this game goes, but I, I do feel better about Sacramento's chances. Obviously you don't have Z that, but, I feel better about Sacramento's chances than I would have if Z would have finished that game healthy. I know He's having the game of his life. Yeah, he, he was balling. God, I just feel terrible he, about he, that. He was absolutely balling. The game, I mean, in the best season he's had. I mean, yeah. he stayed healthy. They had a plan. Yeah. They had ev everything was going the right way, and he just turned it on in that fourth in that fourth quarter. Like they couldn't stop him. Hmm. LeBron looked tired. Anthony Davis looked tired. Everyone that you talked to around the team after that game, they just were like, "If he stays healthy, we're we're the seventh seed. We're going to Denver." I mean, that's that's how everybody felt around the team after that game. It's such a fluky play. It's such, yeah. it's like a weird – oh, so weird. Yeah. It's tough, man. It's definitely tough. Um, Andrew, I'm I'm kind of fascinated by this, this Brandon Ingram situation because yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big, big fan of Brandon Ingram and his game and, and what he brings to the table. And I was, I was at the Kings game um, while that game was ending, so I had it on the phone, couldn't hear anything. And I thought mm -hmm. maybe, you know, he had reached a minutes restriction. I thought it was kind of odd. I was like, minutes restriction in a playing game. They're still going by it. But, all right, I guess that's the case. And now you're saying, and we had Anthony Slater on as well, like, no, nah, they just didn't go back to him. So do you think the the issue with Brandon is performance or does he not feel right physically or a combination of both? It's a combination of both. And we, we talked to Larry Nance after the game. Um, Brandon was not available after the game. I think he he was upset. I mean, look at him. I mean, you're you're getting paid this much money. You've been the guy. You've been the all star. You know, one of the reasons you didn't sign an extension last summer was because you thought you might have had a chance to get All NBA this year. Um, you know, so you could get that 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 bump in in, in the money in the contract. 
everything was kind of go, trending for, you know, you, you're the guy. Mm-hmm. And then in your second game back, I mean, when's the last time Brandon Ingram got benched? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it, it's tough. And we, we talked to Larry Nance after the game and he's like, look, I've, I've come back from a bone bruise before. It sucks. It hurts. So Brandon has, I think, especially, like I said, traditionally, and I'm, unfortunately, I've seen Brandon come back from a few injuries now. Mm-hmm. Every time he's come back, he's slow. And I, or he's slow to, 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 to get back to Brandon Ingram. Some players are like that, some players are not. And, you know, and they didn't exactly have a bunch of practice time where it's like, okay, say this injury happens in December. All right, well, he could probably get a couple of five on five practices in in January before he's. I mean, now I can come back. Now it's like, hey, man, it's playing. We need you. Like, if they would have handled business and got to 50 wins and got to six, I think it would have been a case of, hey, we don't need you for that last regular season game. Let's get you some fives this week and then be ready to go for the first round. And maybe he's not in that same boat, but he's playing himself back in. And I think. There was just a couple of plays in that third quarter that just you're like, man, man, Brandon's better than this. Mm-hmm. And there was a couple of turnovers. You're like, man, Brandon, come on, what, what, what does he see? And I think Willie saw that the group that was making the comeback with Zion on the floor, Trey Murphy, Larry Nance, Jose. Here's the other thing, CJ. I mean, he was about to bench. He was benching CJ for the mm-hmm. final stretch as well. This was not a all against, uh, you know, a, a Brandon thing. This mm-hmm. was. Hey man, Brandon's not playing great. CJ's not playing great. The guys I got on the floor are playing great. We're running with them until the wheels fall off. Mm -hmm. And I think that that took a lot from Willie Green and it told him, you know, it just so happened. All right, Brandon's out. Which one of you is going back in? CJ was shooting a little bit better. Get back in the game. So I think it's a combination of both things. I think it's a combo of, you know, he he's not, he's still trying to work his way back in, which the fact that he was in early yesterday to get some work done, come back out, looked like he was having a great practice today. He was frustrated. Let's see how he responds tomorrow. I think Willie should bench CJ to start the game. <laughs> That's my personal opinion. <laughs> you know, so disgusted with everybody for losing that game. Just, just, just bench all the starters. Prove a point, Willie. Yeah, put the G League squad out there. <laughs> uh, really tremendous insight, Andrew. We, we appreciate you, man. Thanks for carving out a few minutes for us. Got it. Thanks, guys. Thank you, bro. Got it, man. That's the man, Andrew, right there. Andrew Lopez, ESPN, covers the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, I like not picking games that you cover, by the way. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. That's fair. Like that's that absolutely lot. fair. He, um, he's, and he's, he said something else that, oh, my gosh. I'm just. Well, hold on I'm to it. I'm just thinking awesome. around here, man. I'm just thinking the, the present day and long term. Thank you. Oh, we'll, we'll talk about it. All right. We'll talk. Thinking, thinking, uh, huh. <laughs> All right. We'll come back here and see what he's thinking. Uh-huh. <sighs> Casey's thinking we'll find out about what when dealing with Casey return here on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. Mm. Yeah, kind of did. Mm. I hope he's right. I hope he's right. Boy, oh boy. I hope he's right. That is, I saw you the first time you said it, Aldrin. That was funny. That Drew is an honorary oose. Oose. <laughs> oose. <laughs> that was very oosy of him. What the hell? Hey! My God, Jonathan did it! Wow! My God, Jonathan of did it! Of course, Jonathan did it. <laughs> Man, Jonathan put in work for us. That's good stuff right there. That's awesome. Man. <sighs> 
Hey, Rich from anywhere, or Rich could be anywhere. What's up, man? What up, Rich? Oh, Norm coming through tomorrow. That's a good look. That's a good look. Love to see that. I haven't seen that boy Rich in a while. I know he's in there. I got this Kings Warriors game on for like the fourth time. See, be leaving that damn iPad on. So I got this Trey Murphy film in front of us. Looks like Keon. Looks like he scored his first basket. Keon was on him. Then he missed like four straight with Keon on him. Comes back the next one. Davion. Davion had to switch to him. Keegan left. It looks like Duarte tried to close out on him. Oh. It looks like he scored, like looking at a couple of these shots, he scored on like switches. Yep, yep. Davion closed out on him. He missed that one. Felt like I had to sneeze for like five minutes. I'm curious what uh, oh, Sham Sharania just tweeted. He confirmed Jimmy Butler has an MCL sprain and mm. is out. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I was reading a story this morning that said the Heat were upset. I said Sham's report is wrong. Okay. Yes. Apparently it wasn't. It's actually spot on. I'm guessing Jimmy probably told him. <laughs> That's just, it's just a guess on my part. Uh, what did Andrew say that got you thinking? I'm watching Trey Murphy film from that the Golden One Center a couple of nights well, ago. Well, real, real quick, what you saying? From, from well, he's scoring. So, so I wanted to see who started on him because I couldn't remember, and it was Keon. Mm -hmm. He did hit a shot with Keon on him, but he missed like four of them. He scored a lot of baskets like on switches. So he hit a couple where Davion was out there and is kind of chasing him down. And it looks like Davion's probably his primary defender. He had a couple of where Duarte tried to close out on him, um, which I don't think is a sentence we'll say well, tomorrow. Yeah, now, well, let's 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 revisit that sentence you just said. Yeah. I, 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 I know. <laughs> I know. I'm just telling the story of of the other night. Like I, I don't I don't think that's gonna be the case. Uh, no tomorrow disrespect. Night. No, just but I'm, I'm looking just at the saying. game. This is the game he had 27 in, so that's what I'm trying to follow here. Um, but yeah, those are just a just a couple of the things I'm picking up on. <laughs> when when I say that, that's always like when Stephen A gets from that classic uh, cl clip where he goes, he's a bona fide scrub. That's no crazy. disrespect. What? Yeah, sounds like Jay Gaden. <laughs> bona <laughs> this guy's a Jay bona fide scrub. No disrespect. Yeah, that's none, all the disrespect none, in the world. What are we talking about? None taken, Stephen. I don't. <laughs> that is probably one of the most disrespectful things you could say about a player. Um. Oh yeah, Trey, 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 somebody you got to watch out for. Yeah, I like don't Trey. Don't let him get in the open um, court. Her, and that's, that's don't let him get in the open that's, court. That's, that's the key. You got to limit the transition. He does, and he and he shoots the three well yeah. in transition as well. Yep. So you got to watch out for that. Um, but they they got a lot of guys like that they can play. I, I like obviously Herb Jones. He can do some things. Um, I like Hawkins. If Hawkins comes into the game, that kid can shoot the rock. So. You got to be aware, but to me, that's that's why you got to take away that three. You take away that three, and in the two two of the games, not in all 
wins. So, t- so take away the three. You talking about take away the three from Trey or take away the three from from the team. New Orleans got you from the got team. You. Like you've got to. I, I would stay one on one. If they want to go, if so, they want to go with the the mid range or go in the post, I'll I'll give them that opportunity. But I can't help off. These so guys he just hit another three on a Davion switch. Mm. Mm. So just as you're saying, stay one on one. He he. That's like the. It's got to be like the third or fourth one. Yeah. Uh, that he's hit on switches like that. Yeah. So, you know that 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 would that would be my thought about playing these guys, man. Is yeah. Is you got to take away the three ball. Two things you're taking away here is you're taking away C.J. McCollum. First and foremost, you're trying to play him like Steph Curry, and as a as a whole, you want to take away that three ball from from the team. That's those are those are two of my keys right there. Now, Andrew and um, Anthony. Anthony both mentioned something that this is a little bit more bigger picture. And well, they didn't mention it per se. Andrew specifically didn't mention it exactly or per se, but. Anthony was just talking about the team and like where they're at. And he's like, yeah, you know, you, you still have some of your pieces and you got a, a big trade to make and you know, you, you can still do that. And then Andrew started talking about, well, you know, Brandon Ingram, he turned down the extensions in hopes that he would be all NBA this year. Same thing De'Aaron did. Yes. Yes. But De'Aaron wasn't benched in a, Win or go home game. Of course not. That'd be crazy. And you just oh boy. You just wonder. Oh now, boy. Andrew, Andrew was after the fact. I was already thinking this way. Because what I was thinking initially mm-hmm. was Paul George. And the whole thought, like I, I guess I have my contracts mixed up. But Paul George right now isn't this isn't the the final year of the contract. This is when he's extension eligible. Mm-hmm. So he's got another year before he becomes a free agent. All this talk about Philly would, you know, go hard in the paint for him as a free agent. He had a whole nother season. And if the extension isn't brought to him, you know, this summer or already, or he's not willing to sign it right now, writing may be on the wall for what that next year may look like. Right. And that's when you say, Kings, do you do you make a phone call to the Clippers and Steve Ballmer and play and give the ultimate gamble? Say, look, there's no guarantee we're keeping Paul George, but I'm gonna take my chance as a possible one year rental on Paul George. He signed once. Yeah, he I absolutely wanted would. to immediately leave, but he did sign <laughs> once. Yeah. I abs- I absolutely would 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 do it. I think that. <laughs> By the way, you could probably make the argument OKC's in the position they are. Because they signed Paul George to that deal, he wanted to leave, and they yeah. had uh, the Clippers by the proverbial, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, Bear Bruce and all the second graders. Yeah, yeah, you know? I've used restraint right there. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I, I, I think if you got put in a situation where you know he decides to come back, because because the reason why it's coming up is I think he's got a, I don't think it's a team option. You talking about but Brandon Ingram or no, Paul, Paul George? Paul George. You, you still on Paul? I don't, George. I don't think it's. A, I think there's some option there, and I don't think it's a team option. I think it's a player option. If it's a player option, I think he would opt into it. Or and by maybe maybe if he feels like Philly's going to give him all the money he wants, maybe he opts out. He's got a player option next season. Yeah, and see, and I'm I'm going on the basis that he it's opts a, into. It's it. a forty eight point seven million dollar player option. Yeah. So, I yeah. I, I I don't know, but I I think. And to be clear, that, I'm talking about next. It's the 24 25 season. It's the next basketball season. That it's, the player option is. Yeah. So he this summer. So this, he can opt out this summer. He, that's right. Okay, got you. So the the whole thing about that though, the reason June why twenty ninth is the deadline. The the for him to sign the extension. For him to opt out. To opt out. The whole reason I thought about all this anyway is because I went to see who the free agents were, not this summer, but the following summer. And I feel like that is the move for a trade. You try to find somebody that's in the final year of the contract, and you might you, you got to take a chance. You got to take a chance that you'll come up empty-handed, and you'll lose whoever you trade for him, which will probably be you know any one of Keegan, Davion, 
Harrison, Trey Lyles. You'll lose those guys for nothing if this guy doesn't resign with you. But I feel like that's – Did you say Keegan? I didn't say Keegan. Okay. I said Trey Lyles. Okay. Trey okay. Lyles. And I don't want to trade Trey Lyles. I don't, I don't want to trade any of them. But, um, you know, those are the guys that the contracts. You know, that, that, that's what I'm thinking of. So you got guys like that, like – um and I don't think this this guy would fit now with Keon being here, but Donovan might be in that situation. Cleveland may be looking at it like like they've been talking about for the last twelve months. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not coming back. They, if they lose in the first round to Orlando, mm-hmm. you know, and he may, well, I ain't coming back here when it's mm-hmm. time to sign, you know. And he may be Kenny one Bond of those guys. over here. <laughs> he he may be one of those guys, but you know that's. That's kind of what you're looking at. I'm looking at, I don't think he would leave, but you 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 got guys on this list like Jimmy Butler. Um, Brandon Ingram is on that list. That's one of the reasons why I, I, I thought about him. Yeah. Uh Julius Randle is on that list. You know, so I I think when people talk about a big move and doing stuff in the offseason and trying to improve the roster and find another guy, I think that's what it would be. Yeah, and Ingram's not an opt out like he has a just a year he yeah. says a year on his yeah. contract next year I, so I, he is too entering the final year of his contract yeah I, I think that's i think that's what it would be it would be a guy that yeah you you love him as a ball player but you know it's going to be a little uncomfortable with, with a year left and can you you know re-sign this guy can you win him over essentially oh there goes baby rain again Look this guy, I was, I was telling, I was telling the chatty house during the commercial break that this has been on four times, <laughs> and like normally, like the, we're not watching this again. This time, we just leave it on. <laughs> just leave it on. Just, just leave the game on. And this is definitely the highlight. Baby Rain is definitely the highlight. And there's that look. <laughs> the best part about Baby Rain is she looks dead at you. Or he looks dead at you, <laughs> like, like right like, at what? you. <laughs> yeah. It's the perfect meme. Like Baby Rain has created the perfect meme. It, it almost feels like. If you let the the video play when it happens, Chris asks a question, and then hands the mic to De'Aaron, yeah. and Baby Rain is like, "Do you hear this guy? Yeah, <laughs> did, he, did he just this, ask my dad that? Do you hear dude. this guy? <laughs> this dude. <laughs> He's saying something else, but <laughs> and here's TNT so, doing everything they can to get, get the, to get the beam on get TV. The beam. They're, they're like, well, we'll just go to Scott Moak here and they're, let him. <laughs> they're so angry. Why is he still talking? Just Scott press. Moke isn't like his second question. Yeah. <laughs> they got De'Aaron walking off. I think at this point, B.A. is not saying anything. They're, He's they're, just not saying anything on the broadcast. The, the cameras, <laughs> there, there's our girl, Rachel. Rachel. The cameras, like, can someone, <laughs> is Steph Curry anywhere? Somebody get me something. <laughs> they said, we're going to get this beam come hell or high water. Pause. There we go. They finally get it. Wait, what? Like Vivek giving the countdown. Like, did you see Vivek? Vivek was giving the countdown. <laughs> I was watching this. He was giving the countdown to Domas. Like Domas didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was I was watching this uh that that telecast back and I was it it felt how, like how close were you to Domas when he lit the beam? Were you right next to him? I didn't no, see you. No, I wasn't I wasn't right next to him. No. You just a little over to the a little, a little out of the camera view. We got, we got context to the story now and stuff like that. But you do need to get in there and light the beam, like we thought Vivek's son was just some random guy. Yeah. Like, like you got to yeah. get in there one time. Yeah, like we I, know that's Vivek's son now. So like, yeah, he was like hey, smoking there, good, but I'm like, I'm you got to like, just sneak like, in there one time. I ain't gonna lie. No, I don't want because I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to lose more. I would try. I would try, but I don't want to do it. Kyle Maybe. just made a point right now. Like if Jason Derulo can light the beam, you can light the beam. Jason Derulo was in the building. A, a guest of Vivex. I haven't been a guest of Uncle V's. So there, there's the difference. Allegedly. You got to take odds. Like, who's the next celebrity to light the beam for the first time? Oh, it's somebody random. I feel like Floyd Mayweather like, would be like one. He's always like, sitting there. Like Woody Harrelson. Like, it'll be, <laughs> yeah, right. it'll be somebody... someone totally <laughs> random that, like, you're not even thinking about. Like, oh, hey, look. It'll be. Uh... Jerry Seinfeld is here. <laughs> like, okay. Yo, the crazy thing is, outside of Jason Derulo, it's like these heavy hitters like oh, what is this guy doing oh look here, here comes mims <laughs> nelly lighting the beam who, who is uh oh no well they're not like the exact same but like kyle shanahan and john lynch at game seven just yeah they're here bro chuck liddell was at a game one time well he wasn't alone either well, well that's I, I didn't name the other guy on purpose <laughs> but yeah 
There was a thief from Mississippi there it, as well. It's, yeah. it's like you you say you say Mims, but it's not that. It's like legends that randomly well, come said, here. I said Nelly. Oh yeah, well Nelly, yeah, yeah, Nelly, Nelly. Congratulations to Nelly and Ashanti officially. What everybody's known for, I don't know how long. Ashanti but... eight months pregnant. <laughs> Ashanti about to pop on stage and they're like, yeah, she's pregnant. <laughs> oh, no, you're kidding. Yeah, no idea. You're did kidding. you see did you see who's coming to the uh, state fair this year? The state fair? No. The flow rider coming back to side. Wow. <laughs> All right. Salute. Slow rider. Hey, flow rider put on a good show. He did. He did. Very lots of crowd participation. Lots of crowd. Hey, we need hey, y'all to go. We're gonna be back hey, on it. We, we, we all, baby. We, need, we hey, all get we, ready. We need y'all to go out. Go, come on, come on, come on, go on stage. I'm, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Go on stage with Flow Rider. Yo, hands me the microphone to finish the song. I barely know the song. I don't know a damn word. I'm just like, <laughs> it's going down for real. <laughs> I said, I said it, and I pray that that's what the part was. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> You see P Dub nine one six question. Wait, 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 you gotta look at it in the chat. I don't. He says, speaking of music. Oh. Hey. Oh, hey. hey, I'm leaving that alone, no, man. No, no you know, comment. You know I'd be saying anything, so no, I'm leaving that alone. No, dog. no comment. <laughs> we'll be announcing our plans for single to mile weekend later. Oh man, bro, that was on the news, bro. Oh, that was news, on the news. Bro. That's a shoot. Oh, it was on the news. God. It was on the news. I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation. I'm sure there is. Uh Jamie <laughs> Foxx has been here before. I don't know. I don't think he's he's he hasn't been. I don't know that, that Jamie's been here in the beam era. Yeah, I don't but think Jamie's, so. Either. I met but, Jamie Foxx. But that, that that's the type era. of person. Like game yeah. three against OKC. Yeah. Jamie Foxx is here, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. <laughs> what? Yeah. Stevie Wonder's here, ladies if and gentlemen. If was a real one, Kendrick Lamar would be here. Oh, well, he can't do that because that's Drake's boy. I'll say if Vivek was a real one, Kendrick Lamar He's would be here. He's staying out of that. He's staying out of it. See, well, you, wait a minute. Wait you a are minute. you are picking sides and you're agitating this whole thing. I just I just want to see these. I, I, I want to hear these two brothers' I ain't music. Even pick a side. You, I, <laughs> I ain't even pick a side. <laughs> what I do? <laughs> <laughs> Rick Ross been to a game before. Rose has been to a game. Drizzy been to a game. Mm -hmm. Floyd right. Floyd been to what about three or four games? Floyd being a game two was kind of random though. Yeah. And he sat next to fifty. 50 and, and Vivek pieced him up. Pieced, yeah, he did. I don't know if it lasted or not, but Vivek brought together Floyd Mayweather and Fifty Cent and had them talking courtside, went backstage, everything. So he can bring Kendrick and Drake, and mm. can he bring Drake and Rick Ross together? Yeah, they're, they're, that's just, can he bring 50 and Rick Ross together? No. <laughs> no. Vivek, the ultimate peacemaker. We needed we needed Vivek in, in, in the 80s. Yeah. We needed him between the Bloods and the Crypt. <laughs> For real. Hey, I, well, I, can't, I can't promise you, though. I can't promise you. Mm. Kings make the playoffs. Oh, they're going to be somebody at games three and four. Oh, bet. Yeah. They, yeah. They're, they're going to be Absolutely. somebody at three and four. Absolutely. That's for sure, no doubt about it. So yeah, guy, like I said, I don't, I, I don't want to get in trouble. I ain't gonna go try, try and like do that. I ain't gonna do that. Well, I mean, I you, were, to you were close enough. We all know that you were there. They know you. You're not a random person either. Yeah. They don't know me. Stop. <laughs> they, don't, they don't know me. We saw you. The only person who knows me is Reggie. Reggie, Reggie on the other Kenny. side. And, and Mr. Royster well, Doug. And, and Doug. Yeah, Doug. Doug, Doug, Doug guard the, uh, he guard the, the, uh, that's my boy, Doug. The officials, when they look at the review, <laughs> he told me he had to stop Kyrie Irving the other day. <laughs> and that second Dallas game, he was like, Kyrie, you know, you can't come over here. I know, I know. <laughs> Thanks, JB. <laughs> Thanks, JB. Yeah, man. So, so the, the original part before Baby Rain came on and just, uh, captivated everybody was, um, yeah, I think that's the type of move you're talking about with the Kings, man. And, man, and, man. and it's going to be a gamble. Paul George. It's going to be a gamble. Or there might be a gamble in the sense of a Zach Levine type where health is a concern. People don't like the contract number. People may not like him as a player. But I'm just, I'm just preparing everybody. There's going to be warts in some form or fashion, whether it's mm -hmm. the contract, the length of the contract, the actual player. It's not going to be perfect. There's going to be 
cons to the situation. And I'm okay with it. Take the chance. Take the chance. Shout out to TK in the chat asking if K Dot gonna come through. No, I don't think so. But uh, I don't even think Kendrick even goes out in public. He's uh, in New York right but now. But really, just shout out to. You Trisha. see that? He was like, yesterday. They, said they had him in New York doing pull ups, but just in Manhattan streets. He was just doing pull-ups? Yeah. You pull-ups. know, there's always construction in New York. Yes. And you walk down the street and, you know, there's construction going on. So the the little things where, you know, construction workers can work, walk up, you know, without being inside the building. Yeah. They had one of those structures and he was hanging on that doing pull-ups. All right. So he's just living life. That's something Kamara would do. Let's get <laughs> Kamara in here now with 6909-1320. What's up, bro? Yeah, I absolutely would do uh, pull-ups on a on a bar at at New York. I've done it before. That's how they I get. They, they say you know that's that that New York workout. They talk about that's how you get. That's how you get. That's brawling, how you get buff. That's how you, you get just brawling. walk like you walk twelve blocks to wherever no, you're going. That's a shoot. And at every place, you just do ten pull-ups on the, uh, yeah. the walk stop signs. Absolutely, absolutely. Or on the sign where the um, the crosswalk sign as well. That, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's your. You oh, are yeah. correct. Cross walk. Walk. Okay. Not not walk stop. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um, yo, first of all, uh excited about tomorrow's game, but I am uh, a little worried about matchups. And I I do go, agree with you, Kenny, that I think Mike Brown is going to try to change up or at least focus in on CJ. Because if you take away an aspect of their um, their offense. I think TJ is shooting over like sixty percent from beyond the arc against the Kings this year, which is just no, he's weird. shooting seventy percent, like seventy seventy percent. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Jesus. Yeah. Okay, so like that's even worse, right? So, <laughs> um, and it seems like and it seems like he can't find a shot against the Lakers, but against the King, the Kings because we were supposed to draft him. Um, he all of a sudden turns into Kobe. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he's offended by but, it. After all these years, he's still yeah. offended by it. Right, you know, and so I do think Mike is going to um, try to utilize a, a, the, the same methodology they use against Steph, um, put a big on small with Keegan. And then I, I don't know if you saw that video where Mike explains the defensive philosophy of um, you got to be able to adjust quickly in the game. It's something that happened and he started blitzing, uh, you know, Steph when he hit three different shots, he hit three shots in a row in the third quarter. And they sort of switch up the looks. Mm-hmm. Um, I do see that happening a lot uh, this game. I think there one thing I didn't not, I did not like about them playing New Orleans is that they didn't uh, speed up the game for New Orleans on offense. They let them get into their sets too quickly. They met, made them get into their rhythm, and I really want to see them uh, really push the pace as far as getting New Orleans uncomfortable and not uh, uh, speeding, uh, not uh, just settling into their game plan as far as getting into the middle of the paint and flowing, uh, spray out shots in the perimeter. So um, love to hear you guys' thoughts on that. And, okay. uh, you know, good chat, chat. Yeah, appreciate you. Uh, thanks, Kamara. That call cost $255. Well, he could have he went to the game. Oh, could have. Yeah. Yeah, especially Rams, in New Orleans. He, he, he could have flown out here and gone to the game in New I'm Orleans. Saying, that's what I'm saying. Uh, um, Ramsey was in the chat asking, is he making the – the, the short trip to New Orleans. Mm. A lot of tickets available still. Yeah, he's probably got tickets to see some. He got tickets to out see. Out of the country. Yeah, he's got tickets to see Taylor Swift in Europe or something like that. Right. The, the, the most where's expensive my, where's ticket. Where's my film? I had all that film pulled up because he was, he was talking about the, the, the Pelicans. The Pelicans it, it, were pretty comfortable offensively. Um, oh, they feel great. Um. In fact, like you could go back and just look at the scores in this game. The Pelicans were comfortable offensively in every game they played uh, against Sacramento. Um, Shots fell at a little bit better of a clip for Sacramento in this last game against New Orleans. Um, But yeah, that didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't phase New Orleans. Mm. Um, I still take this Trey Murphy filter off <laughs> all these damn Trey Murphy plays running on a loop right here. Mm. But yeah, I, I, I get it. And, 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 and what uh, Kamara just said right there ties in. It was Andrew, I think who said uh, he thinks the game will be a little bit lower scoring mm-hmm. this time around. Mm-hmm. 
uh, which will fly in the face a bit of what what these other games have looked like. Nine one six nine zero nine thirteen twenty. Let's get Jeremy in here. Jeremy, what's going on, brother? Yo, what up, Hilo KC? Uh, first thing I want to say is, uh, you know, it's your same old G. Shout out to anyone. Yeah, um, but, uh, always. I love being from Sacramento because it feels like we're always the underdog, you know? Like, uh, it feels like nobody ever gives us the credit maybe that we deserve. And um, I think that's going to happen when maybe it, it, I hope it doesn't happen in the awards. But I think it's what's going to bring this team closer together and um, allow them to maybe stick together for the long term and like uh, the experience, a lot of fans want that instant gratification, but I feel like the experience of going from nothing to becoming a champion is way, is way sicker than like, just like meeting with uh, two of your buddies in Miami and winning a championship. You know what I mean? Like um, I think the growth and development of a team coming together and reaching the ultimate goal is the ultimate satisfaction as a fan. Um, And then, uh, so I just want to see what you guys think about that. I we appreciate you, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, I mean, that the underdog thing, I don't, uh, that doesn't phase me. Like, I don't care either way about the, the Kings being underdogs, Sacramento being underdogs. I don't care nothing about that. I care about how those uh, guys on the floor feel. Uh, and they're, they're focused. Uh, they're locked in. They man. were clearly focused. I, I loved, I just loved, loved, loved the public reaction to the Warriors win. Their was, public reaction. Yeah, yeah, theirs. Yeah, not yeah. mine. No, 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 like no, 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 not doing the thug loving intro. <laughs> not that. No, I meant the. Yeah, it's, it's just the next step. Like that, that. That's that's all it is. We got another game to win. We're not. We're not where we're supposed to be yet, De'Aaron. Even in you know holding baby rain, we're not. We're, we put ourselves in this position where we had to win this game. Mm-hmm. Of course, we were going to play the Warriors. It's great, you know. It's great to get over that hump because I know Chris Haynes asked him that. It's great to get over that hump. We're not where we're supposed to be yet. You know, you know what the the good thing. There wasn't too much emotion in beating the Golden State Warriors. I mean, for nah. for for those players. Nah. You know what the good thing about losing five games to the Pelicans in the season, in one season, and having to play them in the playing game meet is mm. no matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. Nope. Whatsoever. Nope. This isn't a series. Nope. It's one game. You've got an opportunity to achieve your goals by just getting one win. That's right. That's it. And it doesn't matter. You could have lost to him twenty five times in the regular season. Has absolutely no bearing on what's going to happen, good or bad, on Friday. And that's that's the mindset. That's the mindset I know they have. I'm sure Mike Brown is telling them all this 0 and 5 and all this other stuff. Like none of that matters. Yep. It don't matter at all. That doesn't when you get that doesn't start you uh minus 15 at the beginning of the game because you went 0 and 5. None of that. Mm-hmm. It's 0 0 when it tips off, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. None of it matters. And that is something that actually can be energizing. To a team. I'm 100% with you. You know what I mean? So, yeah, completely with you. Yeah. We'll come back. Uh, Will Z's going to join us next hour. A uh, little, 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 uh, I'll explain why. Uh, and it's, it's not a game day. Normally, Will joins us on game days. Uh, we'll talk to him in just uh, a little bit. We'll have that key word that you need yeah. for ESPN1320.com to win that $500 gift card that's coming up at the top of the three o'clock hour. You brought up Caitlin Clark's shoe deal. want to talk about that. And of course, much more on the Kings and Pelicans ahead here. With either one KC on Sacramento Sports Leader ESPN 1320. Joe coming in here to run things. I see you, Joe. What up, Joe? You know, you know what's crazy? Not, not. I mean, how can you get? You can't get away from this beef stuff right now. This is, this is the biggest thing mm-hmm. going on in hip hop. But Rick Ross is. Well, that, that's not appropriate. Trying We're doing a show, lady. What the hell is going on here, man? We're trying to work.
Ken just left us on the edge of our seats. I don't even know what he was going to say. This was a great game. Caleb really rocking that gray, too. My man has embraced it. He has fully embraced that gray. Don't let it happen again, man. Um, the, the funny thing about this whole beef and all of this other stuff is if I was there, there's merit to it. It doesn't win you to beef or nothing like that. But there's merit to it because Rick Ross's champagne moments debuted at with 609,000 opening day streams on Spotify. It is the most streams a solo Rick Ross song has ever received in a single day on the platform. And if I'm Drake. I'm just gonna keep saying I just keep making your guys' career. Future of Metro, Rick Ross. You guys are getting these. It's a, he kind of did do that where I don't know if it was real or something like that, but somebody with an OVO um letterhead sent an invoice to Future of Metro Boomer for like a million dollars. Like, <laughs> like we you you if you didn't have a Drake diss on there. You would have done good numbers. You wouldn't have done them numbers. Same thing with Rick Ross. If Rick Ross would have just put out a regular song, you wouldn't have done them numbers. This is the Drake disc. I think that's completely wrong about future Metro booming, but it's probably 100% right with Rick Ross. Well, I mean, whether what what exact number it would have done with future and Metro, but I'm not saying well, that. If, it did more because of because of Drake. If future and Metro boom, if, if, if like that had just been a regular Kendrick Lamar verse, it still would have been. Yeah, it would have been, it would have been number it would have been number one. I can I can understand that, but it would have been number one at I'm just throwing out a number five hundred thousand streams as opposed to nine hundred thousand streams. Yeah, maybe. And, I, and if I'm Drake, maybe I'm just I'm just I just keep kind of going back to that, like even indirectly, like you guys. I don't believe this, but this is what he would say: You guys need me to do numbers. I'm the hit maker, one way or another. And Jimmy Butler knew right away. And that was pretty early, huh? First quarter. Jeez. He knew right away because Joe, Joe was like, you good? But no. No. And he played the whole game. That's man. crazy. That's absolutely nuts. There was one second left in the first quarter. That's absolutely nuts. You ever been to Seattle? Mm-hmm. Looks like a nice place. Yeah. That didn't work. Jeez. <sighs> Speaking of, Sky River Casino will be live at 32 Brew Street tomorrow, beginning at 12 o'clock. If you've never experienced the D-Lo and KC live show, tomorrow is the perfect day to do it. Because 32 Brew Street has 70 TV screens. You could come through, hang out, take part in the live show, order some food, do some gambling, and watch the Sacramento Kings and the New Orleans Pelicans in that second play-in game. Yeah, man. It's 630 at 32 Brew Street. Yeah, yeah you don't want to miss that. Love that place, man. Love 32 Brews. One heck of a sports bar, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're going to have a... We're going to have a good time tomorrow for sure. Uh, so we hope you can come through. Uh, we hope you can see us. Uh, no big elaborate guest list planned uh, for tomorrow. We know Kyle Matson's going to come through. We might just keep him on stage with us the whole day. <laughs> um, we haven't really mastered. We, and, I, and I know there's a way we could do it. It would have to be test run, though. We haven't really. Couches? 
no, we don't need that. But uh, yeah, like more of a, a talk show like that. Well, no, more what I was thinking was um, we haven't mastered having guests on video. Ah, uh, because. Yeah, yeah. But what I there, I'm sure there's a way we could put the Streamyard feed on the screens out there, mm. so you could see like the guests. But that would require we'd have to work through that before we actually. We're not going to try it tomorrow. Like we'd have to work through it a couple of times before we did that. So um, we keep all of our guests for those Sky River shows, like at Sky River Casino. But either way, we're going to have a great time tomorrow because we're going to be getting ready for the Kings and the Pelicans. Yes. So uh, come through. Uh, we'd love to see you, uh, we, 32 we, Bruce Street. We'd love to see everybody. Um, but if they want to get ambitious and go to New Orleans, as I look right now, you can sit around center court halfway up for $137. Wow. Salute. Yeah. They got tickets, as, like I said earlier, as low as $15 just to get in. Man, that's crazy. Well. I wonder how much it costs to get into an LSU practice. <laughs> I think that's uh, that's that's uh, that's that big money. That's that Birdman money mm. to get into an LSU practice. LSU spring game. Come on, man. Oh man. <laughs> you want to sit fifty yard line at the LSU spring game? <laughs> you want to talk about Caitlin? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it, man. That's uh, a lot. A lot of talk going on. Um, about Caitlin Clark in the last, I mean, all the time, but specifically uh, with the news that came out yesterday. There is a, there's a, some strong reports that Caitlin Clark is expected to receive a signature Nike uh, as part of her new deal worth, uh, is according to The Athletic, well over $20 million mm. plus potential bonuses. Uh, Under Armour and Adidas, uh, also made sizable offers to uh, Caitlin again. That's according to the Athletic. I had heard a little while ago that Caitlin was getting a massive, massive deal. I thought maybe I, I don't remember if I relayed this to you. I thought it was through Jordan. Yeah, we had talked about that. Yeah. And I said Jordan, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I thought she was getting a deal uh, with Jordan, but it appears uh, 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 it appears Nike. Uh, won that battle, and that's a very rare battle that Nike might win if Jordan wanted Caitlin Clark. Because um, yes, they are the same company, but the way I've always understood the way that that works is if Jordan wants someone, Jordan usually has uh, first dibs, but the player has the right to say no yeah. because Jordan usually offers less. Mm. It's looked at as a more, whether right or wrong, I think they look at it as more of a prestigious brand. Yeah. So the 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 value of your contracts is generally less than what you might get from, and the actual Nike brand. And I don't know the actual numbers of people who've turned it down, but it feels like you know Jordan gets you in a room. So yeah, I want you yeah, to be part yeah. of my brand. Like yep. they usually, I would think this is just me. They usually don't walk away from that too often. Yeah, right. So yeah. twenty million is a stunning number for a women's shoe deal mm. um <laughs> i i did i don't i i don't think this is crazy to say like kara's shoe deal with nike her first one mm -hmm. was five thousand dollars with a five thousand dollar allotment mm. so you, you when, can, what is, when is the allotment like is it a month is it five thousand dollars uh no no it was th th that first deal i think it was five thousand dollars a year so it was it was it was it was five thousand dollars and five thousand dollars a year. Mm. Uh, that was her very very first one. I negotiated the second one, and I got. I remember after I did it, it was for it wasn't like a stunning number, but it was it was for more, and the allotment was for more. The the whole thing worked out. But I remember getting a text from the agent who really kind of like taught me how to do stuff. Mm. She was like, "Hey, great job at the Nike deal." You asked for such a weird number. They were confused and said yes. <laughs> so instead of asking like, and I and I I I, I'm, I don't remember what the number was, uh -huh. but instead of asking for like ten thousand dollars or fifteen thousand dollars, I said I wanted like eleven five or something like that, mm -hmm. and I explained why, mm -hmm. and immediately got back a okay, you got it. We'll draw up the new contract, 
And then I got a text that night was like, they were so thrown by the number. He must they, know something. Just give it to him. <laughs> they were so thrown off by the number. They didn't want to refute it. So they, they said, yes, Look, they're probably being sued for 11, five. They're being sued for 11, five. He knows something. Just give it to him. so he can shut up. Amazing. So to think, you know, not to not 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 that all players are on the same like plane here, but to think that uh, a WNBA player is signing a twenty million dollar contract now is amazing. Yeah, and and shout out to Caitlin Clark. But yep. a lot of the discussion last night was about her getting the signature shoe, and then when people would dive into it a little bit more, it was a little bit of frustration from uh, from black community and black viewers because. I think I don't know if this is the only three, but I I think it's the only three that have signature shoes in the WNBA is now yep. Caitlin, Sabrina, Sabrina, and Stewie. Yep. And you know, people are like, man, we got Asia Wilson, two time MVP, two time MVP, two time MVP, no signature shoe, no signature shoe. She's got a deal with Nike. They got like a a collaboration that has her name on the collab, but it's not the Asia Wilson. No one. signature shoe yet. Mm. They had the that thing. That, so, so take that, that for what you will. Thing. No signature shoe yet. Yeah, but see, well, and that's but that's the whole, the whole. That's part of the frustration, of. It you know not saying that she'll never get it, but no. Why why she? It's not what I'm saying. It just hasn't been in like no signature shoe yet. I no, I understand what you're saying. I okay. get it, but okay. Maybe that should have been a year or two ago. Maybe you know what I mean. Yeah. And, and so the, I, I think the I think I think the 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 outlier in that a little bit is um, Stewie. Like Stewie didn't lose. Like to me, I, I don't I don't know why you give Brianna Stewart a shoe other than she's a really great ball player. Like I don't know that she's a needle mover in that sense. Mm -hmm. Sabrina and Caitlin. Well, in that case, to get her over there to Puma, I think. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, sure. They, yeah, yeah. They got to do something a little extra. Sure. To get her away from Nike. Yeah. Or something like that. Sure. Sabrina, Sabrina and Caitlin, like that league, young loves young white guards. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's. I mean, it's not. That's it, part it, of the. It, that's part of the story. That doesn't mean Sabrina or Caitlin aren't great players. They're nah, not. It is. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't mean story. that oh they're they're only getting attention because they're 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 white guards. Mm -hmm. No, they're getting attention because they can ball. Mm -hmm. But we can't ignore mm -hmm. that they're it's, white and it's, the consumers and the well, media. Well, you can't ignore they love, like you said, they're you, white guards. You say it again because you can't ignore what came before them. Becky, mm -hmm. Birdie, like that's, yeah. it's their bag. Yeah. Like they see. Oh, well, we're gonna latch on to that one. Yeah, she's gonna take us to the promised land. <laughs> Absolutely. And and you see, I think, I think that's part of the story with Caitlyn. I think with that ticket sales, viewership, all this other stuff. Like you can't, you can't ignore that. Caitlyn is also one of the great players that we've seen in recent memory. But by by no means is she the most dominant we've ever seen. Yeah, we've seen other dominant players. Hello, Candace Parker. <laughs> and what she did at, at the university, she got Tennessee. a signature. Yeah, she did. She did get a signature. She just got it with Adidas, and no one cared. Right. Well, that's what exactly. happens when you sign with Adidas. <laughs> uh, Diana Taurasi and what she was able to do in, mm -hmm. in her career, and, and some of the 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 recent players like a Chelsea, like an Asia, like a Kelsey Plum. Kelsey yeah. Plum was wasn't she the all time leading scorer when she was. came out? Yeah, when, when uh, she came out. Caitlin broke a record. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you know, so we we've seen high level basketball, but. There's a, but Caitlin is different, but it's yeah. With that's with, it. With everything that she's got going on, and it, it, we've seen it for a couple of years. Too. It's not just high level basketball. It's the uh, it's the ability to move the needle, mm -hmm. and I think for the first time, we're seeing the needle moving in women's basketball, and or for for at least for the first time in a in a while, we're seeing like a significant move uh, in the needle as it pertains to to women's basketball. It's like I express. And it's a good thing, right? But I express frustration sometimes when I look up and see, like, the individuals who cover the NBA. Mm. And seeing, like, knowing how, like, the inner workings of ESPN mm -hmm. and how 10 years ago 
who they would and wouldn't let cover the league. When I look at the women who are covering the WNBA and women's college basketball, knowing 10 years ago who they would and wouldn't let cover the league, how they dictated studios shows to look and all of that. It it's great. They're in a different place now, but like, knowing what it used to be before like it does leave you with like a bitter taste in your mouth mm. so if i'm like diana Taurasi, i'm like sorry 20 million dollars you know i'm the all-time leading scorer in this league mm. yeah even though it'll be a smidge bit fraudulent got my six gold medal on the horizon right yeah like i i understand the a, a certain level of, of frustration you talk about signature shoes knowing the way that this shook out then you know the next one to watch for Juju. USC. Juju's about to go great. Juju, Nike, Nike, mm-hmm. Nike, been doing it. Nike, well, they, they all these companies they do their they do their work early. Mm-hmm. They do their work <laughs> very work early, very like early around Reese's age. Yeah, they, they do their work yep. early, and they try to make sure they're in the the family. So you know, by the time it's yep. time to do the the professional thing, that's what it is. And there's no doubt in my mind, Juju, like I, I, if they do this right, if I was um Nike and I, I they may be like years ahead of me if I was Nike I would work with Vanessa we'd create a Kobe line and a Kobe brand so to speak and Juju would probably be the first athlete on the Kobe brand mm. and that's how I'd keep her with Nike and give her you know that that rub that that Mamba rub so to speak I like it of 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 how to elevate her where it's not just another shoe deal. Mm-hmm. This is special. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And that that's the, that's the move like they, that. they should be making. And they probably are. Um, and she, she also has like, we well, have, they this, got a team, right? Wasn't Duke the first team Duke? Well, Duke was one of the first, they got five of them, I think. Okay. So it's Duke. Oh, they announced, yeah, they announced them all at the yeah, same time. Duke yeah. USC. I mm. forgot the other ones. There's like five teams. Mm-hmm. Though. Kentucky, I think, is one of them too. Um, but yeah, it's all it's all part of the the Mamba brand that they're, they're probably trying to trying to do. And and that also goes to, and this isn't this is where it's not always necessarily only about color because Juju's marketable too. Juju's got her own thing. We was talking the other day, right? Like yeah. when uh, we were talking about Juju's hairstyle, and Paul I said, George brought it up. Yeah, yeah. Paul George brought it up. Uh, what's his name, Jackie? Jackie Long, who does the podcast with him, had his hair in the juju, quote mm-hmm. unquote, with the bun up the top. Bun. And I said, oh, you know, when I did Ryan's hair, because I don't know how to do no hair, I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to just give her the juju. Like, that's going to be part of her signature, part of, you know, what um, what what is help her be, help her being recognized by the general public and everything. Mm-hmm. So um, shout out to Caitlin. Um, but I did, I mean, and people were in a little bit of uproar, and and Asia Wilson is the one that they that probably deserves some type of signature herself. And like you said, you you alluded to it a little bit, but you know she got to win her second MVP to. All right, let's get you a signature now. Yeah, I, I actually I don't. Yeah, I yeah I, I don't think it's the, the frustration is already there because she was great in college. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm I'm pretty confident that 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 Asia's signature uh is on the way. Uh let's get Ramsey in here. He wants to jump in the conversation. 916-909-1320. What's up, Ramsey? Just wanted to like I said, just wanted to jump in, in in regards to this. I mean, Sabrina's shoe, regardless of gender, is one of the most popular shoes on the market right yep, now. I, I read an article yeah. about yep. a week and a, I think it was about a week ago that said about 80 players in the NBA mm-hmm. wear her shoe. I mean, myself and Katrina, we have a pair of Sabrinas, and I'm not going to lie. Those are probably one of the most comfortable shoes that I have right now. So if they're doing the same thing with the Sabrina shoes that they want to do with Caitlyn or any of these women that they want to market, bring it. Because it's crossing over genders. It's all all in essence. It's just about basketball. And those that love it, love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I asked for a pair of Sabrinas and was what? What happened? Ignored. Oh, well. she act like she didn't hear the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, those, those Sabrinas are probably the, the the basketball shoe of the year. I mean, they're everywhere. They're we, Ramsey talks about um, 
you know, the NBA players wearing them, mm-hmm. but they're all, they're all on the AAU scene. They're mm-hmm. all, all the kids are wearing them. Reese wants a pair of uh, Sabrina's. I want a pair of Sabrina's. Like they're everywhere. You go to your Cal fit and the, the random pickup uh, spot. The Sabrina's are everywhere. That's, that's the shoe of the year. And that's the, you know, that's the other kind of component to all of this is, you know, whether it's Asia or it's um, Caitlin, you got to make a shoe that people want to wear. Mm-hmm. And LeBron's l- 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 like shoes can, there's, there's two things that can go for you. Like the name or the actual shoe. Mm-hmm. You need, you, you'd like the perfect combination of both. You go back to LeBron's like the bronze early shoes. Most normal people can't wear those. Mm-hmm. They're built for a dude who's 265. First pair of LeBron. The the first time I tried a pair of LeBron's, I was like, what am I gonna do with these? Mm. These are like uh what's 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 the Frankenstein shoes? <laughs> Can't do nothing with these. And then, you know, the Kobe's the Kobe started to get lighter. Mm-hmm. And then shoes in general just started to get lighter and lighter and lighter. Yeah. And LeBron adapt to that right. a little bit. And then KD used to make some really, really dope fly knit type shoes. Mm-hmm. And then shoes have just gotten lighter and lighter and lighter. Now you got books and you got um, uh, the Sabrinas. Mm -hmm. They're all kind of like different versions. Ja has his, Giannis, those Mm -hmm. those guys. Even I'm I'm anxious to see what um, what what Steph does with with Fox's shoes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What that's gonna look like? That's I'm gonna tell you right now. I don't have no Under Armors, but I'm getting some Foxes. I want to. I want to see what it's like. I got to support, uh, uh, support the, the the young king, you know, out here in Sacramento, and I want to see what they looking like. I want to see how they feeling like. So, yeah. yeah. Shout out to Caitlin. Shout out to everybody um, that will be getting their shoe deals. Yo, shout out to man. women's basketball, man. Women's yeah. basketball is in a great, great place. It's, <laughs> I look. It's not too late to get on board. I'm only. I'm only. You know we can't ever we can't ever be serious about nothing. No. And, but I'm only bringing it up because the the women themselves, the players themselves, have, have laughed at this. But the 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 memes for uh, oh that's the uh, wait till the WNBA players start making a hundred mil and start flying me out mm. and how I <laughs> how it will react and how I would be man that is that's that's been the 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 Twitter thread of the the week. And I only laugh because Asia and all them getting a the kick out of it and, and and all the memes, man. But that was that was some funny stuff, man. People are creative. Like I said on the other show, if they would only use their powers for good. Brother's going to learn a tough lesson when WNBA players start making $100 million. <laughs> Y'all are going to be destroyed. <laughs> I assure you of that. <laughs> oh, man. That's good stuff. WNBA needs to be back in Sacramento. Yes. Yes. Playoffs uh, need to be back in Sacramento, too. Just in general. NBA playoffs. Let's bring them back. Yeah, Sixers, since we're not going to spend a ton of time on this, Sixers and Knicks. Think about that. Congrats, buddy. Congrats, buddy. Um, that's a that's a big-time matchup media-wise and, like, energy-wise, right? Mm. Like, it's, it's probably – I mean, New York and Boston would probably be this a little bit more, but it's almost – the East Coast version of Kings Warriors. You know what I mean? Like, it's just going to be a, a lot of crazy. A 95 trip. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah little, what's what's that, about an hour, 10 minutes? Hour 15, hour 20 minutes? Philly to NYC? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. Maybe not even that. But you know, yeah. I mean. The, it's, it's the equivalent of, the turnpike you know, down, yeah. Bay Area to yep. Sacramento. It's close. It's, it's close. And 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 then <laughs> and people are going to be. <laughs> you know, they're gonna get their three weeks of oh, what yeah. we got last week. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> With those two fan bases, man. Absolutely. So that's gonna be fun. I, I, I'm enjoying that. I like all the matchups, man. I like all the matchups, and um, I don't know if they'll be able to do it. But last night, we saw firsthand. Hell, Barry Horowitz, come on, give me my recognition. I, I deserved it because way back in on courtside. Hey man, watch out for that dude, Kobe White. Watch out for that dude, Kobe White. Proceeds to light the Kings up, and it feels like he hasn't stopped ever since. What do you have? Forty something last night? He did. He's had he's having a hell of a season this year. He's elevated his game, though. This year he has elevated his game. And I say all that to say, I don't think the Bulls can beat the Celtics at all. Like, 
I don't even know if they'll get a game if they were to get past Miami. But I think Kobe's going to be, you know, putting in work in these playoffs. I want to see what he does against against Boston if they can get there. I kind of want to see them more than I want to see Miami. Mm. Yeah, it feels like the the so much of this early part of the playoffs, and you know, buckle up because the playoffs are extremely long in the NBA. But right now, you 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 know, chapter one is injuries. You got the situation that's developing with with uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo in Mil- Milwaukee. Uh, I, th- I think we're monitoring some things with Dame Lillard here over the course of the next couple of days. I don't think he's in danger of missing games, but certainly something to look at. Obviously, we know what's going on in New Orleans with, with Zion Williamson. You have Brandon Ingram coming back. We saw what happened to Jimmy Butler as we're watching the replay of yeah. last night's game just a couple of minutes ago. You have Joel, who's who's starting to settle in a little bit after fighting himself back uh, from, from injury. You got the situation with Alex Caruso for tomorrow's playing. Terry Rozier is out. Like you have, so there, there's, the, 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 there's the, the, the early part of, 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 of this, this postseason run here is just talking about all the different injuries uh, across these different teams. Yeah. Yeah. And none bigger than Giannis. I mean, there's because right, that's, that's what, already that's already yeah that's a that's a that's already a sketching matchup to begin with yeah and now you got Giannis Antetokounmpo potentially not playing or not potentially he's not playing game one he I think it's a bit far fetched to think he plays in the series at all yeah and then and now you're you're kind of monitoring whatever's going on with Dame Lillard over there that I mean I'd be sick if I was a, a yeah, that's a tough Bucks fan that's tough you have an opportunity regardless of what other other people think I mean. I understand why they think that, but regardless of that, you got an opportunity to win a chip, you know, with 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 these two guys. And, yeah. And now the season has unfolded the way it has. That's tough, man. That's tough. I'd be sick in Deer District. It's one of the most bizarre seasons for a championship contender, probably in recent memory. I agree. Yeah. It has. Well, it has. Um, it's not the same. But it's almost like Kobe with Dwight and Steve Nash. Remember, remember Ooh. how when that that trade and everything happened, they're like, "Oh, why so even play crazy. this year?" Yeah, and they got the AC seed, and Kobe tore his AC or his Achilles. In that yeah, year. and Dwight left. Yeah, I remember Kobe came hobbling on the floor onto the court because Dwight got his ass ejected, and Kobe walked right past him like, "You got to be kidding me." Mm. You knew it was over at that point. Yeah. Still. Yeah. But the the point being, like, everybody thought they were they were going to be lights out. And, yeah. Uh, it just, yeah, that was just supposed to be the big. team. So that's kind of what, you know, thinking about the Bucks. You know, I don't think everybody thought they were the, the, the hands-down favorite, but they were going to be yeah, one of those. Think about it, yeah. yeah. It's hell. I, I was on vacation enjoying the show <laughs> when, when Dane went to the Bucks. Oh my god. Yeah, your your was that your fake honeymoon where you didn't go anywhere and Jazz made you like paint the fence or something? Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah, that was honeymoon. So it was like you didn't go on vacation. Uh, it was this honeymoon, year. Casey. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll come back. <laughs> uh, we'll come back. We'll settle back into the Kings and the Pelicans. We got some more notes on that game. Our man Will Z is gonna join us uh about 315 or so. Stay tapped in. Phone line's open for you as well. 916. 916- 909-1320, Steeler and Casey, brought to you by Sky River Casino here on Sacramento Sports Leader, ESPN 1320. Yep. Oh, show ain't even started over yet. yet. Dummy. Dummy. I'm over there checking all our KSFM stuff, and it ain't even started yet. Chicago Sky won a championship a couple of years ago. Uh, Devin, Matt George is uh, on his way to New Orleans. That's why he's not with us today. And Matt's free to be on whatever station he wants, but uh, he can't be with us today because he's traveling. He wanted to come on tomorrow, but that doesn't really work with us being at Sky River. (laughs) 
I ain't got nothing to say. You guys are just going to sit here in silence. What do you want to talk about? Y'all are having your own conversations about Chicago anyways. That says he is confident in the team. Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard's injury stuff is so perplexing to me. Sal, uh, so yes, it, it doesn't, it, 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 first of all, the humidor is a lounge, um, and there is a bar and they absolutely have a TV on there to put the game on. Uh, when they opened it up for us, um, when they opened it up for us, they put the game on for us. Cause remember there was a, a Kings game going on that day. I think it was Kings Pacers. They put that on for us so we could kind of monitor what was going on as we check it out. But yeah, the humidor absolutely has that. I really do want to. Uh, I really do want to visit the humidor. Um, it seems, given the condition my voice is in, that might not be the smartest move for me. But if I'm even like ten percent better tomorrow, oh yeah, I'm going inside the humidor. That place is so dope. So, so, so dope. Oh, Michigan will miss you tomorrow, man. Yeah, it's doing a little better today, Ben. I appreciate you. Man, I haven't picked up any new records, uh, Sneaky, for a minute because, um, mainly because I'm, you know, I'm moving soon. And so I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, deal with moving those records because the records are one of those things that I'm just going to throw in the car and move over myself. I'm not going to worry about packing them. I'm just going to put them in the car. Drive them over to the spot, take them out, put them where I want them to go. So once I get in and settled in and I got I, the record player right now is upstairs. Now in the new spot, the record player is going to be downstairs in the main room. So I'm going to be utilizing those records a lot more. And Complex gave me some turntables. Pioneer hooked us up with some turntables. So I'm going to get a mixer and I'm actually going to learn how to, to like DJ for real. So I'm very excited about that too. Ah, right on, Frodo. Right on, Frodo. Appreciate you, baby. Yeah, we always have some. We always have some fun that four o'clock hour. No, I'm staying. I'm staying in Roseville. Actually, it, it'll be Rockland, but stay, staying in the, it's, it's the same general area. Oh, Prince can't 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 go wrong with Prince. Can't go wrong with Prince. Hey man, let's go. Let's bring it. Bring back eight fifteen L. I get up in there. That's what we doing? No, not a penny. Oh, that brings up a good question. I got a good question. Not oh, a penny. Man. <laughs> oh man, I don't think this is going to take us down a rabbit hole, but this it might be two minutes. It might be two minutes. That's what I hear, George. That's why I'm just throwing them in the car and moving them because I don't have a ton yet. I don't know what about that message that I threw up on the screen well, sparked something in your, your head. Wheezy80, he says, you know, 815 L Street incoming residency. He said, bring it back, 815 L Street. It had me thinking, you know, you... You got hype like hey, 15 L, bring it back. You can bring back one club. Which one would it be? Oh. One Sacramento club. Oh. Which one would it be? You can only bring back one. 
if I could only bring back one, it would not be 705 J Street. <laughs> no matter how much they paid me, it would not be 705 J Street. I don't think it wouldn't be sidelines. It wouldn't be 815 L Street. Tunnel? They're saying Tunnel in the chat. Tunnel, if if it has the same King's ties and vibes, that would work. Avalon. Avalon. Avalon up there. I got pepper sprayed it. <laughs> <laughs> Not me directly, but they sprayed pepper sprayed somewhere and I got the the fumes, and I had never been pepper sprayed before, as that man once said. Um, and I ain't never been pepper sprayed before, mm. and that was a terrible. I, and um, I can't even imagine like actually getting pepper sprayed because I just got like the fumes, like from twenty feet away, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, <laughs> like it was terrible. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine getting actually pepper sprayed. Well, which 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 one which one would you bring back? My first thought, because I'm thinking of all these places, and I mean Avalon, all yeah. these other places. Mark, Mark does make a good point. But bring back tunnel, but put some air conditioning <laughs> in there. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, and and Tunnel was so small. It was small. Yeah. Like it was so small. So like I'm I'm thinking about it, and I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking thinking thinking. Uh huh. I think it might be a hunking lounge. I had a feeling you were going to say that. That one was sweatier than Tunnel Twenty One. There's that a joint lot was of space hot. in there, though. Yeah, oh no, there, yeah, There's it was a definitely lot of space. It's, yeah, it's Tunnel, right there, prime location. Tunnel, Tunnel was at the uh, upstairs. It was narrow. Uh -huh. Downstairs, it was swampy. <laughs> yeah. No it was like no it's like you walked down and suddenly you were outside in Florida. <laughs> But, miserable but i say i say hon king now avalon was popping but I'm, I'm i'm putting all things into consideration they had some some after avalon shenanigans that will go down right well it, it wouldn't always be the safest place yeah once you got out of there and that fact that's factors into my equation i never had an issue at hon king Lounge. i'm not sure why i'm not gonna dad yeah i'm not sure why but you had space. We never had any after situations. Although, now that I think about it, there were some times in the parking garage across the street where things would pop off. So maybe that's where things would happen. Mm. I don't know. I remember a uh, Sunday call from my man, Io. Yo, hey. <laughs> Yo, man, my, my cousin got shot at Ricky's last oh, night. Oh, no. Hold on. All right. Like, yo, what? Yeah. He got shot in the pant leg. <laughs> <laughs> like, hold up. <laughs> hold up, bro. Did he get shot or not? Yeah, no, the bullet went through his pant leg. No, did the bullet hit him? No, 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 no. All right, dude. Your cousin didn't get <laughs> shot then. I, 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 I do understand. That's how you got to tell the story. No, Yo, you got to throw the pants away. <laughs> well, you got to tell the story. I got shot. I, your, cousin, <laughs> your cousin is not a gunshot victim. That's why oh. I be. Hey, guess why I be. Y'all pay me to be there ten to twelve. I'm leaving at twelve. <laughs> hey, look, Michael F. This uh, is a sleeper. Strikes is a sleeper. Because yeah, there was about my a, bag. There was about a year and a half when strikes was going up. Not my bag. It was going up. Never had me out there. Yeah, yeah, what years were up. that? What years were that? I came back here in 2017. So I'd probably say like 15 to 17. Okay. 15 to 17. It was kind of okay. maybe maybe 15 to 18. And then yeah, and then it was it just wasn't good no more. It wasn't all good at all. But strikes, strikes had a moment. Strikes had a moment. Okay. I mean, the rage had a moment as well. I mean, the rage was going crazy. Yeah. It was at college night, so you know it's a different vibe. But Thursday night, Thursday night, Wednesday college. night, college. Wednesday night, Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. And so, and Frank says anybody saying uh, Zuku, Z no Zukulu, but uh, and that's not what I thought. Um, on King Lounge turned into that turned into like a Zuka or something, right? Uh, Maybe it was Zukulu. Zuka lose Oklahoma. I don't know, but 
that building. No, I'm actually it. really surprised. I'm really, really surprised as we get into Sacramento's infrastructure mm. that that is still, there's nothing there. Mm. Like you would think a restaurant, a bar, mm. mm-hmm. something, especially with the Golden One going down, mm-hmm. that somebody would have gotten something in that area. That's Ron something. Burkle's working on it. Well, it's a, no, nah, I ain't gonna go I don't just because now I ain't even gonna say that, man. I, <laughs> mm-hmm. It's gonna have to see somebody else working on it, but I nah, I will leave it alone. Yeah, leave it alone. <laughs> leave, leave it alone. It alone. Oh, I remember Empire. Yeah, I remember Empire too. Club. What was Empire? Empire was. on it was down man where was empire what was the name of the one in stockton Oof. was empire the one in stockton i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yo so, shout out to my my brothers from the south but yeah i don't you want no was no. empire the stockton one <laughs> so that sounds I feel like, like club be. empire was a thursday night one and the reason we got away with that one in oh they're saying you know they're saying it's ace of spades is what Empire Ace of Spades. Ace of Spades. Okay. Shout that out checks to R Street. R Street kind of sneaky. R Street kind of be popping off on, on the yeah. sneaky tip. I, I'm not the fool with R Street. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, R Street. One of these, one of these nights. I'm just be on R Street, man. Cause R Street, it's a nice vibe down there. Yeah, ice blocks be popping too. A little further down with the ice blocks. Yes, I, I never been there. I, I'd heard about it, but I ain't never been there. Well, that was a good spot. Shout out to Sack King 76. Showing their age, and I'm Tommy not mad Tease. at it. Yeah. Tommy T. I heard yeah. Tommy T's Wait till somebody off though. Some bring, Bobby heard, McGee's. Oh, snap. <laughs> somebody, some, Bobby McGee's. Look at him. <laughs> Shady <laughs> Lady. Citrus <laughs> Ice. I heard Tommy T's was would go down. I think, yeah. That's, I think my mom would talk about Tommy T's. I think that 76 is the year they were born. <laughs> that's that's checking out a little bit. They had, was Tommy T's the one off Florida Road? Like Foreign and Franklin, because yeah, there's one over sack. there's one over there on Foreign and Franklin that hey, maybe it's Tommy T's, but they show where it used to be. It used to be right next to that Shell gas station. They say it used to go up in like the '80s, early '90s. Never went to Tommy to T's, up. Bobby McGee's, or America Live. Mm. I never went to America Live either. Yeah, that uh, was before our time. Yeah, that was when <laughs> when Cole's in there. Mm. <laughs> well, post game. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yo, that's true. <laughs> Coles used to do post game from America Live. That's his shoot. <laughs> wow, I forgot. That's true. Oh snap! You know they got a little post game. It ain't a post. It ain't. Well, it'd be American Live. It's not a post game show. But you know, G one, you would know actually. Uh, go to one center. They be playing some music up at the up at the little loft. I don't know for how long, maybe like an hour after well, the game. First of all, I did know that. And I, I know if you there. knew. I've been at games when they've ended. <laughs> just not at many of them <laughs> when they end. Yeah, I never know. Like, like what is it like that? That's that's there's just like a full on little party up there. Yeah. Yeah, music be playing. I've never gone up there. Maybe I will next time. I don't know. But yeah, I'll be jumping off. Shout out to all the clubs in Sacramento. Hey, you ever go to Jeffries? Local? I don't think ever. Oh. I was gonna say I've never heard of Jeffries. Yeah. Downtown no. Oakland. No. Yeah, he was he was probably working. You didn't have time to go down the, the Oakland clubs, the Bay Area clubs. It's still out? Nah, it actually shut down. It is it's, oh, Jeffries, another spot where <laughs> Jeffries was a great club, but you get out of that club. What's the one where all off. the R and B acts are at? They did. Um, um um Oh my gosh, it's right there in Jack London. It is, yeah, oh, yeah. Man, I know Ramsey knows. Ramsey gonna say it in a second. Let's see now, no, no, that's gonna bother me. That I feel, I feel I, so I, disrespectful I, I, for. Not I get it. I get it. Stand by, stand by. Yo, she's yo, she's. That's Thank it. Thank you, Roman. Yep. yep. Oh, Coach Fields, man. You can't. Yeah, yo, she's. How how can I forget yo? She's, yeah. Yo, she's a good look. I'm getting. We need a, We need a Yoshi's in Sacramento. I'm get, that, that's what I want. We call it D Lo and KC's. Let's do it. Let's do All it. them R and B acts coming through there. Yeah, man. Getting a text. Well, practice. well. I love America Live. There, there is LOL. things popping off. No. I ain't even gonna speak on it yet, but there is things popping off. What for dealing with KC's? I mean, may, may, yeah. I don't know if it's gonna be called that, but oh. yeah, there's there's vibes being developed. I think I told you about it. I don't think you did. I think I would remember this conversation. 
Memorial Auditorium. I told you in Complex. I mean, it ain't no secret. Like the, they trying to get some popping off where the PF Chang's was. Oh, and it's that it's that vibe. It's a Yoshi's type vibe. Who's they? I don't think well, we did. Well, I don't now think now we, we're going too far. See, I don't think we discussed this. We, <laughs> I don't think we discussed. I think I remember if D'Lo and Casey's was on the way. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about it after the show. All right, we'll talk about it after. <laughs> That's where Malik's will be. <laughs> That's where Malik's will be. Malik, if you're listening, <laughs> this is the most fire idea ever. <laughs> Malik, we got you. You're listening to D-Lo and Casey on KIFM West Sacramento, 98.5 FM Carex QHD2 Sacramento. ESPN 1320, always live on the free Odyssey app. I can hear my voice just wanting to quit. Uh, you, well, you actually sound, you're sounding better as the days go along. I feel like it just, it, it like it varies. It just goes through like these peaks and valleys. You're Brandon Ingram right now. You just got to work yourself back. I, I guess that's, I guess that's all it and is. And hopefully, it's just not enough games for Brandon Ingram to work that's himself That's what I hope. I, 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 I hope Brandon Ingram gets right this summer. <laughs> that's right. Beginning tomorrow night at about 930. <laughs> Start working to get himself right. All this talking about everything else that we're talking about. Real it, quick. Okay. Real oh, quick. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, real quick, because we got other business to tend to besides just telling you what station it's on. It's the station that's helping you win $500. Go to ESPN1320.com and enter the keyword swish. Enter the keyword swish right now at ESPN1320.com. That'll be your opportunity uh, to win a $500 gift card. You'll see it. Nothing but net giveaway. It's right there on the front page. You won't miss it. You won't be confused. Absolutely nothing. ESPN1320.com. Enter the keyword swish for your chance to win. Sounds oh. like me. I'm shooting. Oh, swish. I just I just got a text. I'm gonna try to make it out to the show tomorrow. Oh. She ain't never been to one of our oh, live shows before. About. Wow. She's front row. never been to one of our live front row. shows before. Front row. She got to be front row. She'd be on stage. Facts. I ain't going to spoil it because, like, you know, her fan club might come out <laughs> to, like, see her, and then she don't show up. Oh, man, it could be dicey. But, oh, yeah. We We're going to have a good time tomorrow. We are going to have a good time. And I'm, I'm – what like, a lot of this stuff that, you know, I'm talking about, we're talking about, we're bringing up, Look, I'm just going to I'm just going to keep it real. It's 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 personal. It's personal. Because What's... personally, I'm trying to keep myself calm right now. Oh, for sure. Cuz I'm charged up for tomorrow's game. I'm charged up. I'm I'm more hyped about tomorrow's game than I was Tuesday. Now, obviously that's probably because the playoffs are right there in your grasp. You win Tuesday, you still got more work to do. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow for a lack of a better term, the work is done. The job's over. You made the playoffs, mm -hmm. and you've got yep. a chance. And I, I yep. feel good about this team, man. Yep. I feel good about this team, about where they're at. And I really think, even aside from Zion and everything else like that, because that doesn't automatically guarantee you anything. That maybe presents different problems in some respect. But I, I just I just feel good about where they're at right now. I think they're catching and they're also catching the Pelicans at a certain time. Anthony talked about something, or excuse me, Andrew talked about something that is interesting. Okay. If if the game is a little tight, if the situation is a little tight for New Orleans, mm -hmm. what does that look like? All the bravado and everything that they had um all season going up against the Kings. If number one, the the Kings are a different opponent this time and hanging in there with them or leading does that factor into how they feel about themselves number two just the way the last game played out where you know ingram gets benched wasn't sure about cj does that play a factor and then the historical thing where andrew said only one other time as a team lost i forgot exactly but the two games at home mm -hmm. to lose the plan yeah a lot of pressure, you know. We talk about that in, in in the same way with the with the Kings, right? Where if if things get tight, like you can feel the angst in the crowd, and that mm -hmm. that sometimes sweeps uh, seeps down to the players. Yeah, that could happen in New Orleans tomorrow. 
Yeah, it absolutely could. And you and, and it's it's the unique this 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 matchup, this particular this particular second game is so unique in the sense that one team won their opportunity and the other team lost their opportunity. One team had to win to get to the point to play this game. Mm -hmm. The other team got to this game because they lost. Mm. And yeah, what's the psychological mindset in that? We try to compute the play-in tournament to the NCAA tournament to other. There is no other tournament like this mm -hmm. where a loser of a game plays a winner of the game. Maybe there's something in soccer or something that I'm not familiar with, but this is pretty unique. And yeah, you wonder what psyches are, mindsets are. You're you're not only dealing with the loss to the Lakers, in, in this case, we're obviously talking about the Pelicans. You're not only dealing with the loss to the Lakers, you're dealing with back-to-back -back losses to the Lakers. You're dealing with the loss of Zion Williamson, mm -hmm. who was absolutely phenomenal the last time he was on the floor. Mm -hmm. And you're dealing with, you know, two of your marquee players uh, not playing well the last time they were out there. Your sports talk radio has been seeped in disappointment. Your sports talk radio has been missed opportunities. Mm. We're pissing off Mad Dog Russo because we're lighting the beam. <laughs> right? We're, we're, we're celebrating uh, an opportunity to play this game. Mm -hmm. Now, that's us. What players are doing, that's a completely different conversation. Yeah. But this the 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 state of mind for a game like this for the two teams involved is really really unique to this specific game. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm going through the and I think you're 100 percent right. By the way, about ten like moments of tenseness mm -hmm. seeping onto the floor in that arena if if things aren't going the Pelicans' way. I, I'm I'm going through the. Brief small history of playing tournaments. It's only this is only the fourth season yeah. of the playing, but only one other time has uh, a seven seed, which is what New Orleans was, which means you got the home game. You got the home game with a chance to go. Only one other time has the seven seed lost that game. And that was last year with Miami. They got another chance against Chicago, and they had to battle back to get that one. That's right. That wasn't just a slam dunk over the home seed. We're gonna we're gonna play that game. And on top of that, Chicago was a ten seed. So never before has the seventh seed played the second game against the ninth seed. Mm -hmm. And you know this is uncharted territory, for lack of a better better term, about how the seventh seed, in this case, New Orleans, handles losing at home mm -hmm. and being faced with the the possibility of losing two straight to miss the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Sacramento Kings faced with losing to a team for the sixth time this Man. year. It's what we Jeez. talk about. It's what we were talking about with, with, with Andrew earlier. It's what we were talking about with Anthony, the different, the different storylines, the different circumstances going into this game are so odd. Mm. They're unique. Mm -hmm. A five-game set against the team is unique in and of itself yeah. because of the play-in tournament. Now you just happen to play that team in the play-in tournament mm -hmm. for the sixth time. I might have said the play-in tournament, the in-season tournament. Mm -hmm. Now you're playing them in the play-in tournament. Sixth time? That's it's uncharted waters. Like yeah. that's that's there's nothing to compare this to. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely man. nothing to compare this to. Yeah, I'm I'm hyped up though, man. I'm really hyped up. I think that uh I keep saying it, man. I just think they got a, a a heck of a shot. I think they got a great shot. I think and this flies starts with the, defense. Starts with defense and and what you want to do um with CJ. I think that's mm. where everything starts. I think I think you'll get enough offense. I don't know if you're going to score 130 or something like that, mm -hmm. but I think you'll get enough offense to win if your defensive game plan is is tight. If you if your game plan is tight and your execution is tight, I think you'll get enough offense between Fox, 
between Keegan, right. between Sabonis, between Keon at this point hitting. Um, and hopefully, you know, Harrison gives us the same type of game. And either one of the two, uh, just for argument's sake, Trey Lowes or Davion Mitchell gives you double figures. I think that'll be enough to get it done. Offense leads to defense or defense leads to offense? In this particular game, in this particular game, I would say defense leads to offense. Okay. Yeah. You get these stops, you, you, you get your scheme going, and you get these stops. And that's kind of what we saw, I think, on Tuesday. You thought it was defense leads to offense. Yeah, I thought the, okay. the defense that they played and what they were able to do, I thought the they, stops they were able to get led to what they were doing on the offense. And it's it's probably semantics, but like I thought that them hitting shots is Quite what Quite possibly. But it but again, I don't know but how to differentiate but, the two. But it was it was like stop hit the three. Stop, shut them down. <laughs> stop hit the three. And to your point, you hit the three. Now you're ready to get back on defense. Mm. But you got to stop first, so you could then go hit the three. Mm-hmm. And now you're back. Like it's a again, it's crazy semantics. cycle, yeah, right? Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So um, yeah, I don't think you're wrong. I think they started to breed confidence. They, the I think there's a certain shots. level of pop. Yeah. yeah, with with this particular team, mm-hmm. I think there's a certain level of the pop is the only word I can think of. There's a certain level of uh, increased intensity when with um with this team though as well i think they like playing defense i think they got guys out there that like to defend i think certainly know someone who does yeah i think it's led by that man yeah keon likes to play defense and i Mm -hmm. think that's been infectious uh i think De'Aaron fox likes to play likes to play defense now now that it's not all on his all on his plate on the offensive end i think when davion gets in there he knows the assignment he knows what he's doing and keon whether he shows it or not, I think he likes the idea of shutting down some of these smaller guys and and, and locking them up. So I, I think I think they like playing defense right now. They they know the assignment. They know where their bread is butter. I think De'Aaron is kind of nearing that. You know, I, like I could give any shot I want to. Mm. I think he's nearing the like I could take the ball from you if I want to. Man, that that whole wrap around strip yeah. that he does. Like I saw that two plays before it happened because he was guarding Wiggins, and I was oh, oh you gonna rip him? You gonna rip him? I thought it was gonna happen on that play, mm-hmm. but when it didn't, I was like oh, all right yeah, keep bringing the ball up. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, like two plays later, he rips him. That's his signature right now. Yeah, and he's he's seeing it that way. He's seeing it like oh, this guy kind of loose with the handle. Definitely gonna take those cookies. Definitely. Uh, we'll come back. Uh, Will Z is going to join us today. He can't be out at Sky River with us tomorrow oh, uh, to preview the game. Uh, so he's going to join us today. Of course, our friend Matt George is on his way to uh, New Orleans, so we'll catch up with him uh, next week. Will Z will join us, and we'll go over uh, some of these stats that he's been posting uh, online all day uh, as we prepare for tomorrow's game against the New Orleans Pelicans. we we'll deal with Casey return here on ESPN 1320. Breaking news. The city of San Francisco is suing Oakland over their proposal to use, quote, San Francisco Bay in their title of the Oakland Airport citing trademark infringement. Oh, man. I actually understand that if I'm San Francisco. Don't be trying to make, or you better give us some money if you're going to try and make money off of us.
Sorry, guys. I know business. Casey and Jesse, y'all think Haney winning by knockout or decision? For a long time, my bad, that mic wasn't even in front of me. But uh, for a long time, I thought it was uh, going to be uh, possibly decision. Over the last couple months, Haney going to knock that dude out, man. Or excuse me, last couple weeks, he going to knock that dude out. Ryan, before I thought Ryan might have been playing crazy. But now I don't know, man. I think he might have some real issues. Oakland got some real issues. I don't know how you change it. I'm not sure how you change it. You guys don't understand how, like, moving this mic all around and there's no squeaking or nothing like that. It's just, it's unbelievable. It really is. Shout out, Jonathan. Yeah, Brian, I mean, I'm not too passionate about this this topic, but it's if you're going to be the Oakland airport, use Oakland. Don't use San Francisco's name unless you're going to pay me. Oh, my God. Bringing our man Will really cool here. What's up, you guys? Well, well, well is man. your TV on? That uh, uh, yeah, you picking up noise? Yeah, that's yeah, all right. Well, he got his new microphone. He's got his light on. He's looking good. <laughs> this man's cooking. He's the statty baddie. Our man, Will Z. Will, how are you feeling about tomorrow? I'm excited. Um, it's like you can, they've got nothing to lose, like you guys have been saying. Um, so looking forward to it. Is the background Thank noise you. better? Oh yeah, you sound great. Man. It's fine. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, it, it's a it's a situation where, you know, well, I don't look at it so much as they got nothing to lose. Is they can really win. They yeah. can really they can really salvage um, this season that's been so up and down with taking care of business and and beating the team that I know has had your number. But I feel like you're playing them at the right time, not only for how what's going on with them. But what's going on with you when you talk about the Sacramento Kings? I think mm -hmm. uh, Tuesday was a big moment for them. You know, to not only beat the Warriors, but be able to finish a game. They had a big lead. They almost lost it again, you know, but they answered the bell and they were able to overcome that and, and, and right the ship, so to speak. And I thought that was big for them and their psyche and their belief in being able to win without a Malik Monk and all this other stuff. And I think they're going to be going into New Orleans riding high. Yeah, especially with the injuries. Like, it feels like they have all the momentum where it's... I know that the Pelicans have the five games, but obviously with Zion being out and with Brandon Ingram coming back, it just feels like they've got way more to lose. And I love that for the Kings. I love how they're playing right now. They seem 
like they're ready for the moment. And especially against the Warriors, like they came out from the get go, like they knew what they had to do on both ends of the floor. And I thought it showed. So um, it'll be interesting to see how they defend the Pelicans without Zion. I think it's a much, obviously much easier matchup, but with Zion out, I don't think we're going to see as many double teams. Like we're not going to see Harrison Barnes on Valanciunas and that create double teams and let Trey Murphy and Herb Jones and everyone get those three point looks. Maybe they'll do the like Steph treatment to CJ and slow him down in case anyone forgot 70% shooting from three against the Kings this season. So I think slowing down CJ probably takes more precedence than slowing down Ingram to me, just because of kind of the rhythm and the flow. Uh, So it's, and again, that goes well with where the Kings have their defensive strengths, which is at the guard position. Yeah, we we talked about that a lot today. Is just, I think they should defend. They have the same game plan for CJ that they have for Steph Curry. That's that's how I think they should go into this game, and treat him like he's Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. Get the ball out of his hands when you can. Get multiple defenders around him, and keep him from getting comfortable and in a rhythm in this game. And I think if you're able to do that. That'll go a long way to you winning this game. And the key with that is the rotations. Like we saw, they were locked in on their defensive rotations against the Warriors. If you look at the wide open numbers, the Warriors only shot 13 wide open threes, 12 open, seven tightly contested. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, Compared to the Kings, they shot 27, which just for reference. But when you're on point with those rotations, after double teaming and blitzing off of screens, that's when they really become effective. If they're late on those rotations, that's when you get a big game from Trey Murphy, from Herb Jones, from Valanciunas on those little dump off passes. So I think that if they bring that same sort of everyone's locked in on every minute, which it looked like they had against the Warriors, I think that's when that game plan against CJ will really work. We've talked and rightfully so a lot about what the Kings will do defensively against the Pelicans, but what about what the Pelicans do defensively against Sacramento? Uh, I think the Pelicans were, that was the one for 10 game, right? For De'Aaron, yeah, the the one in the Mm -hmm. middle of the series where they lost by 30 with no Zion. That's that's where De'Aaron was uh, probably at his worst game as a pro. Yeah, and, and like how much of, how much of what they do against Sacramento defensively is is what's led us to this 0-5 point? I think it's not a coincidence at all. Like They have Herb Jones. He's the primary defender against uh, Darren Fox. And this season, when Fox has been guarded by Jones, 28 points, um, but on 40.7% from the field and 27.3% from three, he only has three assists. He has five turnovers. He's only drawn two shooting fouls. Like Herb Jones has the ability to single-handedly shut Fox down or at least slow him down enough where a lot of other teams don't have that one-on-one defender who can do that to Fox. Um, You see it a lot with like Lou Dort. He has that same type of ability. So them having that type of defender that they can put on him is just so one of the reasons one of the many reasons that i think that they're such a bad matchup for the kings and especially with monk out they don't have that other player who can really drive and get to the basket we saw davion do that really well against the warriors so if he can come in and do that same uh same type of driving and kicking or get to the rim that'd be great but that along with Valanciunas being able to guard Sabonis one-on-one, really makes them match up well defensively against the Kings. Yeah. Uh, and they've, they've got those they got those type of horses. One, one thing that I would try to do, and once again, it gets back to CJ. It really makes mm-hmm. CJ work. Uh, mm-hmm. Keon has shown the ability to run some, some pick-and-roll action with Domas Sabonis. I would exploit that a little mm-hmm. bit more, you know, this because I'm assuming CJ is going to be guarding – um, Keon Ellis in, in that case. If they try to put him on Keegan Murray, all right, we're going to do a bunch of DHOs with Sabonis and Keegan Murray. But I'm making CJ – I'm making him work his ass off the entire game. 
you mm-hmm. know, offensively and defensively. I'm trying to wear him down. And and he's still a great player. He could still play r- really well, but you you want to try and not let him be comfortable out there on both mm-hmm. sides of the floor. So yeah, that, that's, and that's something I would look at look at for the Kings offense. Yeah, and looking at just the last game, Keon was guarded by McCollum, and Keon, when guarded by him, only took one shot. He was it was a three, he missed it. Uh, so be a little more intentional, like you were saying, against that matchup and get away from Herb Jones, either that or get Fox in some pick and roll action, try and get Herb off of him and maybe put CJ in that action to try and get that switch. I don't remember if the Pelicans switch or not on screens. I'd have to go back and look, but definitely look for the better matchups when you have them. Were you able to uh, like I, I obviously do the have a very different process than you do. I was just looking at box scores and going through this like, man, CJ went nuts in a couple of games. Zion had his moments. Ingram had his moments. Trey Murphy had a moment uh, at the Golden One Center. It feels like there's there's a lot of guys in Pelicans uniforms who who play really well versus Sacramento. Mm-hmm. Is that is that a comfort level? Is that just a, you know, we can dominate this team. Any guy could cook. We saw Dyson Daniels have a nice game. Like, mm-hmm. I don't mean that as a shot. Jose Alvarado is not known as a big time scorer. He scored, you know, a ton of points. Is that a a, a product of the confidence of the Pelicans or, or, or is there something the Kings are missing defensively? I don't know. Maybe both. Um, I want to pull up their, what they're averaging in terms of wide open threes against the Kings. Oh boy. Kenny Caraway numbers. Here the, we go. The Kenny you know special. It. Here we go. <laughs> so Kenny Caraway numbers. You know, I like But that. yeah, I mean the last game when Alvarado had the the ball where he tracked down in the corner, he was like a one man fast break and he shot like a fadeaway in the yeah. corner. It was just a like heartbreaking shot. They hit twenty two threes in yeah, that, that was game. crazy. And and they hit twenty two, and they shot like fifty five percent from three. It, yes, fifty five percent. Yeah, they were twenty and forty. That's, that's all right. That's, they so, shot fifty four percent the game before uh, that. Mm-hmm. Man, that was the one in Sacramento that they won by thirty or so. I think uh, CJ had thirty in that game. Thirty three to be exact. But <laughs> whatever. All right. So against the Kings, nineteen point eight wide open threes. Per game, they make 9.2 of them. That's 46.5%. On the season, they take 18.6. So um, a little bit of a difference, not too much, 40%. So you see the number jump up just slightly and the percentage jump up. So maybe that's comfortability. Maybe it's the fact that, I don't know, the Kings were especially early on. I don't think as much anymore, but they were kind of forced into double teaming. Mm-hmm. that the Pelicans just get good looks because of the Kings defensive strategy guarding Zion and Ingram. Uh, so I don't know. That's my theory. I don't really have anything to prove it, but yeah. And I I got the, so. I got the game on right in front of me in the first play of the game, uh, this last one on Thursday or a couple Thursdays ago. Yeah. Was um, a, a dump down to Valanchunas mm-hmm. with Harrison Barnes guarding him. Keon yep. has to leave CJ for the double team. Now, Valanciunas end up shooting the ball uh, and didn't kick it out to CJ or whatever. But, like, that's that's why it it, it kind of changes things with Zion out because that's problematic. That When I say, like, let Valanciunas score or whatever, that's with the right matchup, right? That's with him going up against Sabonis. And if they want to go mm-hmm. one-on-one with that all day, cool. I can't have him going up against Harrison Barnes. And now with no Zion – you can match up more traditionally. Mm-hmm. You can put Sabonis on Valanciunas and let that be a one-on-one matchup and stay home on the shooters. Yep. And I'm, I'm all for that for for the at least at the very least the opening strategy. You know what I mean? You always have Plan B and C, and if they adjust, you make your adjustments. But um, with Zion not being there, because I, I say all that because Sabonis was guarding Zion to start the game last time. That's how Valanciunas got uh, Harrison on him. Now you can have just the traditional, all right, the big mans are going. I got a wing that'll go up against this wing and and, and everything else that you're trying to do. So it, it just it puts everything back into its proper spot, I think. 
I agree. Um, I think the other big thing will be the possession battle. Mike Brown's been talking about it like nonstop. So yeah. the two main things, the Kings getting steals and then on the other end, getting offensive rebounds. They did both of those so well against the Warriors. Mm -hmm. And I think 40 points came from either steals, either like points off turnovers or second chance points, which if you're winning that possession battle, you're not only getting more shot attempts, but you're going always play off tacos. Uh, you're getting looks against the Pelicans defense when they're not set. So in transition, the Pelicans aren't going to be set in defense. And on offensive rebounds, you have everyone scrambling a little. So you have a better chance, I think, of scoring against them because the Pelicans, it's not like Zion is their main defender. He's great in that help defense, but he's not the one kind of leading their defense. So they're still going to have that great defensive ability, even without Zion out there. So get that's, as many good, easy looks as possible. That's Herb Jones. Mm -hmm. I think he's, so. He's the guy. He's their he's their lead defender. He's the one who yeah. kind of is the hub on the defensive end. Yeah, and then Valanciunas in the middle does a great job. Again, kind of like Sabonis, just vertical contest, just big body in there. That he's not going to block a ton of shots, but he's going to make life difficult inside. I know we just said this. I need I need Domas to have a moment. Yep. Because Valanchunas is another is one of those guys who it's like, and it's not like the Caban Looney where you know Looney has a you know a, a series against him on a big stage or whatever. Valanchunas is a big physical nasty dude. Mm -hmm. Like in those like that that's a that's a tough matchup for Domas because he's one of less than a handful of guys in the entire league that can match physical strength with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we see how hard Domas has to work when they play each other. Yeah. I want Domas to have a moment. Yeah. I have a moment against yeah, Valentino. Let, let, let him and the whole world know you're here. Absolutely. What, what, another thing that um, that I want to see from this team and, and to be aware of, and, you know, it's maybe on Mike or, you know, it's on the players first, but maybe on Mike as well. The story of a lot of these games – not, not taking anything away from the Pelicans winning and dominating the way they do, but there's been some crazy runs, right? I think in the game, the most recently, it was a relatively close game, like a oh. four, five, six yeah. point game. And then the Pelicans go on a 17 0 run. Mm -hmm. Then the Kings battle back, get it closer, whatever. And then I think they start off the fourth quarter, the Pelicans do with like a 13 0 run or something like that. I remember the same thing happened in the, the game at the Golden One Center when they beat the brakes off them by 33, the playing or the in season tournament game. I think the Kings were winning that game in the first half. And then the Pelicans go on this run to separate themselves in the second quarter. You got to eliminate the runs one way or another, whether that's answering with the score, whether that's calling the timeouts, mm -hmm. whatever you have to do. You got to make sure we don't see any 10, 12, 13 0 runs in this game to keep yourself close. Yeah, was the Pelicans game the game where Mike Brown burned through like all of his timeouts? In I remember there he had like two timeouts left with like eight minutes to go or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the most to recent, try and stop uh, those uh, runs. I think so. Okay. Uh, to try and stop the runs. So I'll be interested to see how quick he is with those timeouts if the same type of situation like you were just saying comes up. Yeah, the Pelicans outscored the Kings in the first quarter, thirty-four to twenty-three. Will so that that checks out a little bit. Yeah, that, that could have been sense. that could have been that game. Um, I know it's a little it's a little early. Do we got a swing stat for tomorrow? Um, not one set in stone yet. I think it might be second chance points. Um, just I think that that's how the Kings are going to win this game. Again, I still get nervous about their ability to score. So I think they need as many shot opportunities as possible. And what Ooh. made me so happy about the game against the Warriors was that the Kings had, I forget the number, but a bunch of offensive rebounds, something like 16 or so. And Sabonis had two. So it was the entire team was getting on the offensive board. So you can tell that Mike Brown is putting emphasis on that and that the whole team is buying into that concept to try and go get those offensive rebounds. So 
a similar type of approach, I think would go a long way against the Pelicans. Kings lost the second chance points battles in every game, but the last mm-hmm. one. Yeah. And the last one, what was it with like 11 to seven? Yeah. The Kings won that battle 11 to seven. They yeah. got, they got ripped apart in a couple of them. And I don't think they've had a single game with 10 plus steals against the Pelicans. So the kind of duo of those two will be, will be key. So maybe it'll be a combo swing stat. And it feels like the Pelicans really capitalize off of turnovers too. Like if the if the if the Kings turn the ball over, the Clippers are going to score. Or the Clippers, excuse me, the Pelicans are going to score off of it. Yeah, and that's why you know you you go into this game and you go into that locker room if you're one of the players or if you're Mike Brown and you'd be like, it, you know, I don't know something symbolic like hold up the plate the the sheet, you rip it in half. Mm. Because that everything don't matter. Mm-hmm. Everything that we talk about, everything that it only matters in your down, film sessions. That's it. It don't that's matter it. when you, you take the, the floor. Yep. None of that comes comes with you. And um that's that's what this team has to be thinking about. Like you've got an opportunity tonight to to get to the playoffs. And that's all that matters. The five games before don't matter at all. So um and I think that's how they will come out to this game. I think that's how they will um approach this game as, a, as an opportunity against you know a good another good nba team not the scary, scary pelicans who've beaten us five times they don't look at them and like it's our time now yeah mm-hmm. yeah well great stuff we'll miss you tomorrow at sky river um and hopefully by the time we return we'll have a we'll have a whole series to break down i'd love nothing more i'll miss you guys tomorrow it'll be weird not being there but i'll be watching from here we appreciate oh, you. Thanks, Will. Appreciate you. Thanks, guys. That's our man, Will Z, joining us a day early for a nice little extended conversation about this uh, preview by the numbers as the Sacramento Kings uh, take on the New Orleans Pelicans uh, with the hopes of making the playoffs win and in yeah, man. Uh, tomorrow. Hey, um, there, was, there was two things that I, I thought was pretty funny. So we got a text message from our guy, Kyle Matson. And I don't know what Ryan Wasilla was on, maybe his own show, maybe on uh, Bill Simmons. I don't know. But he used the analogy. He said the Kings beating the Warriors and essentially ending their dynasty was like Kindred shooting Omar in the wire. Yeah, that's a little cap. It is a little cap, but. Kendrick came out of nowhere. Sort of. Well, sort of. He came Sort of. Nowhere. But I laugh at that because do you remember what I kept the analogy I kept using last year during the playoffs. Yeah, they're Omar. The, the Warriors were Omar. <laughs> and I kept saying, that's Omar? Mm-hmm. Remember, that was mm-hmm. Kendrick. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. They, they finally got him. That's Omar? <laughs> that's Omar? That's the big. That's the guy y'all scared of? Mm-hmm. That him? That's that, Omar? That's when we were up 2-0. Well, <laughs> it might even been 1-0. I think I it even, was. I, think I don't it even was. think game one was over, actually. I think it was 1-0. <laughs> I think it all no. Oh, uh, game one was over. That was a stressful situation. Um, game one was stressful. The, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, uh, we we won't get a chance to talk about this tomorrow. It'll be old news pretty much by the time I see you uh, on Monday, and hopefully we got some playoffs to talk about. We got a game one to recap, hopefully, on Man, Monday. Man, that's the craziest yeah. thing, too, is if the Kings win tomorrow, game one is Sunday. Yeah, so so hopefully that's the case. But did you see that uh, information on the Intuit Dome? That came out? No. So the Clippers have introduced their ultimate wall pass. Remember, like, they're talked about that. The wall. Yeah. And they're providing. to be a Clippers fan to sit there. Yeah. $1,300 for season tickets for that. For all 41 home games. It's get there when no assigned seating. So get there. Southwest. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. You get there and you can sit anywhere as close as row three fascinating it's about 31 bucks a game 32 about maybe around that there. is incredible crazy. that is crazy 13 that is incredible for all 41 home games and it's get there in, in open seating after the first have those things rows. become available yet i think they just i think that's kind of why this came out as they might have sent this out to you know the emails of the season i don't know but i was gonna say there's no yeah. way those last longer than like those things will be gone yeah that is that's and did crazy. we did we did we cover this? Like 
can you not like resell those like yeah, they're have, supposed to have some type of um they're supposed to have some type of of system where like an it's got to be another system or something yeah, it's got to be another verified uh user or something or something like that the other maybe they sell it for you yeah maybe okay yeah the other thing they have on here is uh and i don't know how this is going to work but they have a you can make a sit with a friend reservation so if me and you are going but you know we're just well, first come first everybody serve. knows you don't sit with me uh, well th that's not true when's the last time you sat next to damien at the king jam the last time we were there at the same time that might be true <laughs> When's the last time you sat next to Damien at a Kings game, like while he was leaving? Because you're on court side, like you do leave him. Like, do you stick with him or well, do you like ditch him early on? No, no, no. We just stay the whole time. When, when he's there, that's I'm where he's at. We watch the game, and then he leaves, and then I'm left to my, left to my own vices. Wow. Start wandering. Casey a put in the car. Yeah, yeah, Damien finally left. Where's it? See that? That's 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 what it is. I saw I saw IG <laughs> on Tuesday night, and I was like, man, there is no happier dude in the world that I didn't go to the game on Tuesday. My man was very, <laughs> very excited that I didn't is, go. That is not true. That is not true. I was just sitting up there, me and Sarah were watching the game mm -hmm. for the first quarter, and she had to go do some TV stuff, and I was just mm -hmm. I was just there watching the game by myself. And then at half, what happens is at halftime, that's when I take my lap and I start seeing people that I know. Okay. And then I'm like, well, what's up, big dog? How you doing, man? Saw the boss, saw both of the bosses, mm -hmm. saw Kim, saw a couple other people. Oh, what's up, man? What you doing? Where you at? Oh, I'm over here. Oh, hey, hey, come Come, come, chill with me. All right, let's let's have a, let's have a drink, man. And then the game just starts, and then I'm watching the game. You just happen to be right next to Mike Brown. <laughs> hey, imagine you're sitting at that Clippers wall though, and it's like, oh yeah, a friend made a seat reservation with you. It's Steve Ballmer. Legs cashed. <laughs> your thighs, your thighs will be in for it that game, buddy. Oh, well, uh, that's a shoot. That's a shoot. Oh man, that's pretty dope. But I, yeah, I, I saw that. I said I've like reread it like four times. Like thirteen hundred dollars for essentially season tickets. That's crazy. That's fire. Yeah, that's fire. And then the open seating on, on the on the the wall and all that other stuff. So yeah, shout shout out to Steve Ballmer. Not sure if it'll matter, but shout out to him. I think it'll create like a different atmosphere at NBA games too. Like um, if they if they get it right, because it's kind of like they're doing kind of doing like a soccer um mm -hmm. atmosphere type or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like if they get it right, I think it'll be dope. The 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 crazy thing about it though is, and the unfortunate thing is, and I, and I think I actually think there's more of a Clippers fan base than people kind of give them credit for. Like there there are like real Clipper Clipper fans out there, but it's still the Clippers. Right. Like you could you could see the absolute benefit for something like this. If, say, Vivek had done something like this, the wall in Sacramento mm. with those prices. Come on, man. It would be crazy. I don't know if we're going to see the the full benefit of it. Well, there's a lot of casuals. Like, Maybe you can get them over that way because it's like true. we pay this little, this little price or whatever. Well, we can sit as close as we want. Yeah, let's not discount net worth of the respective owners as well mm -hmm. like that's a factor if you're willing to you're willing to you know sell tickets for thirteen hundred dollars or something along those lines um, you're sacrificing like like especially do do we know the exact number of I, people you know what i don't but looking at that wall it's, i mean it's it's, a, it's a literally a number. whole wall yeah of the, the arena like you're sacrificing it looks like, like i just throw it out there maybe five thousand people you have to be comfortable losing that mm -hmm. that 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 revenue. Yeah, and not every owner can do that. Yeah, Bomber, Steve Bomber can. Mm -hmm. And it, and then and then you know maybe it's one of those things. Also, like Steve Bomber's not an idiot either. Right. They've also probably run projections like at these prices, these tickets are never ever 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 going to be available. Mm -hmm. So take this number and multiply it by thirty. If this team is terrible for 10 years, those tickets are always going to be sold. They probably yeah, have run yeah. some projections to say in 25 years, it makes up the difference yeah. or something like that. And I have no idea. For, for sure. And, you know, in in that situation, in that city, you know, it might be looking at like, man, I got to do something drastic to 
yeah to get people on here like yeah, yeah. you know i might have to and that's not exactly what he's doing but almost to a certain degree i might have to give these tickets away just to get people in the building get them get the clippers in their lives you know something to get us on get get us on people's you know radar or or to get them on our side and then and to get them out here where they might be scared of what's across the street yeah well they ain't scared no more not over there well they might not always know <laughs> that's that's the <laughs> That's looking like uh, that's looking like Rockland. Is, it the, new, is it the new Brooklyn? <laughs> yes, new it's Brooklyn. called Iwood. It's I not. Remember, it's not Inglewood. It's called I remember Iwood. the first when I first went to Brooklyn. I was like, "This is Brooklyn." <laughs> no, no, sweetheart. The Brooklyn you're thinking of is that way. <laughs> this is the new Brooklyn. Yeah. Got it. Now Got don't it. get it. Don't get it twisted. There's still some Inglewood and Iwood. <laughs> don't don't get it twisted. Wait, is that a shoot? They call it Iwood. I'd say that because that's what they did on um, Insecure one time. Oh, Issa was okay. down there and like they built this little coffee shop. She's oh, like, "Welcome yeah, to Highwood." Yeah, and she said, "Where? What? Where are we?" She said, "Highwood." Issa was just like flabbergasted after that. That's when the coffee shop on the corner of Oak Park was Starbucks. <laughs> this is Oak Park, <laughs> right? Uh, no. So, but there, there's definitely still some Inglewood mm. and Highwood if you make the wrong turn. But it ain't gonna be by that arena. I know that much. I don't know how much of the difference would make like money and stuff like that, and him making his money back. But they'll have like standing room for that little section for that um wall too. It's not just seats. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot. They're not it's a basically, lot. It's basically saying yeah, if you show up late like for that wall or whatever, you're just gonna have to stand. Yeah. So I'm not sure how many people would be letting him for that. Mm. It's fascinating. It really, I that blew my mind when I saw that, and just how he's orchestrating this arena is also fat fascinating to me as well. Is there a Bruno Mars wall? There will be probably. I'll go. I'll, I'll I'll sit up there for Bruno Bruno's concert. I would too. Yeah. Bruno goes. Yeah. When's that open? When's that show? I think it's August. That's what 15, I thought. 16, yeah, yeah, something like that. That's what I saw about Bruno Mars. He owed MGM or someone like thirty mil. One of those casinos. <laughs> I don't think that's real. No, <laughs> I don't no. think so either. No. I got Chatty House then. Yeah. No, I was like, oh, no, he's, he's was, in deep. No, it was out no, there. It was, oh. out there. Yeah, yeah. it was out there. It was it's just out. it wasn't from like a rep. I don't think it's real. Okay. I think I think people were just talking. They were know? saying he's gonna have to do shows to pay off his credits. I'm like, oh my uh, gosh, Bruno Mars. MGM was like, yeah, that's not true. That's not true. Yeah. So, so yeah, man. Um, that's that's that that caught my eye when I saw that. But that's dope. It it also just made me think of like, man, people are. I, I'm a, I'm a big, you know, I'm biased, but people out here searching for that. For that go to one feel, I'm not saying go to one is like the best fans in the world, but oh, you know we we I think it is. But man, that energy! They had people tweeting about it after the playing game. I think. Oh uh, yeah. You see, your, your boy Steve Levy was like, "I've never been to a game in Sacramento. Yeah. I might have to go." Yeah. Well, we read Julie's threads. Julie, yeah, well, Julie definitely let us know. It is ten times better than that sterile dental office. You know what we didn't talk about? We could talk more about this tomorrow. There's there's two things we should touch on. One, I don't think we'll elaborate on. This one we can. Did you, and there was no reason for you to, did you watch any of the Hawks yesterday? Yeah, I watched a little bit of it. Oh, yeah, I tweeted about it. Trey looked like he was done. Oh, he, he Trey threw. was finished. He looked, he looked like he was just trying to get that game over that with. Was, that was, I was bad. I was surprised to see that. Yeah, that Trey. was bad. That feels like the worst kept secret that he's leaving. It looked like, like Delonte West slept with his mom. <laughs> oh, man. It was one of them games where you're left trying to figure out what the hell just happened. Yeah. DeJounte got mad at him at the end of the first quarter. Or, or no, it was the half, maybe. Maybe it was the end of the half. Because, Trey, did, did you see that play when DeJounte got mad? So, I think it's the quarter of the half. I can't remember. But it's winding down. I, I did. They trapped Trey at the top of the key. And he's just kind of dribbling, and they trap him. And he throws a behind-the-back pass to an open DeJounte, but it's just a bad behind-the-back pass. Yeah. DeJounte has to, like, reach to control it. Yeah. The defense recovers. He's stuck, can't get a shot off. And he looks at Trey like, what the hell are you doing? Like, starts throwing uh, uh, Trey and boys in the hood, um, fist uh, pumps and all this stuff. Like, he was hot. He was hot. And – Trey Young is just walking back. Dum dee doo dee dum dee. Yeah, he's done with him. He's done with him. But I mean, that would be a good 
I, I still believe in his talent. I think that situation has just gone bad, which isn't a good look on him with how he's handled himself. But if he got to San Antonio, um, I think it, you know, that'd be an interesting pairing, him and him and Wimby. I'm <laughs> I'm watching a series of Trey Young low lights from last night. Oh, goodness gracious! How long is that video? About seven minutes. Well, no, there's just various <laughs> different clips. Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, he yeah, he was so disinterested in that game, and it's not like Atlanta was getting blown out in the first half. No, like, he just looked like he did not care. They it. they found a way to come back. Thanks really to Dejounte, they found a way to come back yeah. and make it close. And it was a game in the third quarter, and then they. Is the guy who was supposed to be their best player just made it clear, I don't want to be here. I want this to be over. Keisha Cole, I just want it to be over. Okay, so I did see this play. I didn't, I didn't, I get, I, yeah, I didn't realize, I didn't catch him like look at Trey because mm -hmm. DeJounte's walking away from him. I thought, like, the way you described, I thought they were like, facing each other like no, DeJounte yeah, is yeah. walking away from yeah, him he, 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 yeah. the initial thing yeah. is like Trey what the yeah. hell are you doing and yeah, then yeah, he yeah. walks straight yeah. to yeah. like compose himself a little bit yeah he's done with that he man. threw that pass there's there's three hawks on or uh three bulls on DeJounte Murray <laughs> that's crazy wow I don't know Trey Trey that doesn't feel like a San Antonio Spurs play yeah, I know I know, but I, it's so that's where he's been been linked a lot too. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know exactly how this works, but I kind of, kind of pushing for that to happen. It's one less place for Malik to go. Yeah, just like Orlando. We'll get yeah, Trey to uh, we'll get you Clay. We'll get Trey. Yeah, we'll get Trey to San Antonio. Clay to um. No, we'll get Clay to Detroit. You want to get paid? Go to Detroit. Clay, okay. get paid there. D'Angelo to Orlando. Then? Yes, there we go. Now they gotta sudden, LA's gonna blame someone when they fall um, flame out in the playoffs. <laughs> now Hilo, sudden, it's gonna be you, pal. Malik's getting five five million a year. <laughs> His agent stuff is easy, bro. <laughs> oh, get boy. that man Malik paid and get yeah. him in here. Do that. Do that. Real quick, we have yeah, like San Antonio was celebrating last night. I'm seeing some Spurs fans tweets. Oh, they they want them? Oh, yeah. I'd want them too. I'd, after watching that, I wouldn't. I know. I understand, but it, it, you gotta understand the situation. It's over. They probably told him we're Man. we're trading you. No, nah, they didn't tell him that. They didn't tell him that. He sure act like he knows. Well, he did. <laughs> well, cause cause it might not be up to them. <laughs> <laughs> might not be up to them. Yeah. Well, I, I say he told them, or they might have said something, because he, he seemed like I'm done with these guys. They don't want that's what it looked like. They don't want they don't want nothing to do with me. I'm done with these guys. Once again, not the way you're supposed to handle it, but I just don't like him as a ball player. We've been over the numbers, like yeah. I get it. I just don't like him as a ball player. Three coaches, right? Yeah. Does, does that stuff matter at all now? Like is it kind of it well, maybe maybe it was on Trey, but yeah, it should. It should. Yeah, I don't know. I think Bulls it's are beating the Heat, thing. by the way. Yeah, I think you might be right. You think you said who? Bulls beating the Heat tomorrow. I think you might be right. Mm. Jimmy's out for a few weeks. I don't even know if Terry was there playing tomorrow. Terry Rozier's out. He's out. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, Bulls are beating the Heat tomorrow. Yeah. Tyler Hero's shot selection wasn't the best at the end. They got lit up by Nicholas Batum. What you think DeMar and DeRozan and Kobe White going to do? Tyler Hero somewhere thinking, y'all need me now. <laughs> y'all need me now. Honestly, Nick Batum lighting it up yesterday was bad for both teams. Mm. That's pretty wild. Mm. Mm. Even for the six, it's like this is this is what, what <laughs> it comes what it to comes down to. This is what you need. Yeah, Nick's gonna get them. I'm thinking Nick's Boston in the final, conference finals. Mm. That's gonna be crazy. Why? Because the energy gonna be crazy. New York, Boston, always crazy. Yeah, fake rivalry. Well, don't do that. Yeah, because the Knicks in Boston have been toe to toe forever. It's, no, no it's the funny thing, no, it's it's as Damien said, that's this, that's cute. That's cute how they say that because he it, it says a fake rivalry, like Yankees Red Sox. As far as I'm concerned, bro, like Red Sox <laughs> have four World Series titles. Oh, Yankees have one and all. Look nine. at them. No, no. See, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, that's been one sided for the last however many years as well. So, <laughs> oh, just just forget the other ninety. Okay. Sorry, Grandpa, I wasn't around. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> that man called you 
Grandpa. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, I gotta listen to this clip from Anthony Slater. What, what is he talking about? Four minutes of Kerr on Draymond and why the Warriors continue to back him. I gotta hear every bit of that four minutes. Oh man! Uh, we hope to see you tomorrow <laughs> at Thirty Two Brew Street inside Sky River Casino. Uh, come through, uh, hang out with us, man. We are going to have a great time as we do it every single one of our live shows, beginning at twelve o'clock. Again, Thirty Two Brew Street inside Sky River Casino. Uh, beginning tomorrow here on Sacramento Sports Leader, ESPN 1320. Vamos gigantes. Aldrin, what's that got to do with Knicks Celtics? <laughs> All right, y'all, we're going to head over. do that uh yeah yeah he's always there we'll see you guys uh as many of you as possible uh we'll see you guys tomorrow at sky river casino appreciate y'all as always